Rafa really making history. Absolutely phenomenal. And Ace is the champion of the Intel Extreme Masters World Finals. Storm still not quite done. MC is going to take this fight, though. Three seconds left. Last two rounds of action has got to start it well for ESC. And this is a massive move for Zest, but he's not content with just a Nexus kill. He will get the up. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the IEM Dallas North American Close Qualifiers. I'm x I'm joined here by lovely Vincent, and uh, today we've got some really exciting action here for you. It is going to be a day full of electricity, day full of NA Counter-Strike as you love it. Uh, and we're starting it all off with an exciting matchup of Boss versus Wildcard. Vincent, it's good to be back with you. Uh, it's been a while since we last casted, but I'm really excited to be doing some NACS with you once again. Hey, you know me. I am an NACS enjoyer, and uh, four teams go in, only one leave with that spot. So, uh, hey, I'm ready to to see who we crown over the next couple of days and get things started. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, again, a lot of rosters here, a lot of uh, star-studded teams that we'll be really excited to take a look at uh, here. As we can uh, go ahead and kick things off with a bit of the bracket, uh, get introduced to those four teams, like you were mentioning here uh, as we start things off, uh, again, on our side of the stream, we'll be covering Boss versus Wildcard over there on the A stream. You got Team Liquid versus Nouns. Another matchup right there that, uh, you know, obviously everyone's going to be keeping a close eye on. Liquid, coming into this event, uh, had to play through the open qualifiers. Uh, obviously, a bit of a surprise when you talk about the name value, but the newness of the roster means that they still have to chew through some of those uh, world ranking points. And uh, uh, obviously, we're able to close it out, but... PA gave them a run for their money in that open qualifier. Yeah, they did. And I I mean, listen, Wildcard was in the same boat. They made it through the second open qualifier and able to get here. But I, I think whilst everybody is looking at Liquid, I actually think the upper side of this of this bracket with Boston Wildcard, there are some big question marks about, you know, that team Liquid team. We know what they should be doing. Have they been doing that all the way through? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. You never know what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, you're 100% right. When we talked just earlier about uh, IEM Chengdu qualifications there, massive shock. Didn't make it. Uh, and, and I think that was a big uh, deal for them. Obviously, it was uh, still kind of looking at a roster that's uh, trying to build in a little bit of newness there and, and adjustment period. But still, it was a, a shock for them. And who's to say that one of these three teams challenging them uh, isn't going to be able to put up a fight? But again, kind of zoning in a little bit more on our matchup here today. Because we got a bit of a, a heated matchup here out of the gates, right? Boss versus wild card. I mean, the first thing you mentioned was, uh, you know, in, in the HLTV pictures. Eight of the players <laughs> are wearing wildcard jer jerseys. And uh, obviously that means, you know, organizations have been swapped and, and uh, maybe that can lead to a, a bit of a heated matchup with some of these familiar uh, players playing up against each other. Yeah, everybody spent some time repping wildcard, or at least for the most part in this matchup. But I also think the uh, the interesting story coming into this as well, wildcard have, you know, making their way through the open qualifier. They played pretty darn well Um considering they beat G3, who is less relevant, but then PA and 2-0 over NRG to, to get in here. And the first of those maps was pretty uh, pretty darn solid, quite dominant. It was 13-6. And actually, uh, on Barrage, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. Uh, but with that being said, I, I think jumping into into the, the details here, right? Boss is a team that have been looking really good locally for quite a while at this point. Yeah, yeah, they've been doing excellent work. It's been a little while since they've last played out uh, an official here, but obviously it's been really exciting to see what these guys have done. Last season qualifying to Pro League without an organization. Again, they, they came back uh, from their campaign over there in Europe, and uh, when they made it back into NA, they were able to qualify for Pro League. I think that was a massive deal, uh, and, and maybe I've hit some some 
bumps and, and some other qualifiers in the past, but I, I still think that this roster has been building in uh, a really exciting prospects and, uh, you know, the consistency in which we've seen from some of these individuals, some of these rising players. You talk about uh, players like Darty heading into this matchup. Calling coming through from Cryptic has still been sharp and exciting. Uh, when you talk about a team that's heading in, uh, you know, in fact, all four of these teams heading into the R Mars and some really big periods in, in these players' careers, um, you, you know, building up some success prior to this uh, event is, is a big deal. And, and, you know, you can tell from some of these organizations what they're willing to invest. Wildcard, uh, as we were talking about in the, the green room a little bit beforehand, we're talking uh, or sending their team over there to Europe to get some reps in, to get some boot camp. So uh, we're going to be seeing them fresh off the back of that, which is really exciting. Yeah, I think it's pretty cool to see, and it's actually kind of funny as well, you know, spending some time in Europe, you and I were continuing in that conversation to talk a little bit about where Wildcard have been and what they've been looking like, looking kind of like an EU team, at least when with Stanislaus calling right now, it's kind of been interesting, and I do wonder how Boss is going to measure up to that, if it's going to be difficult for, for Crypto to deal with. This is actually a bit of a rematch. These two teams did meet each other um, back in the uh, Armour Close Squad qualifier for north america granted that was when boss had cynic not cryptic but similar enough we won't be seeing the inferno that they played as we jump into the map pool i think we're gonna see uh, something a little bit different and this brings us back to mirage that we saw wildcard pick up against nrg in the in the open qualifier that's going to be our first map picked out by wildcard it makes sense right they they found some momentum there they had some really good showings strong against nrg up against this boss team i think this could make sense yeah yeah i mean i 100 percent agree again it kind of hints at uh wildcard also being able to use that boot camp as a chance to more so expand their their vetoes expand their map pool and kind of lean into some other maps especially when you're playing up against boss and you know that that boss is never gonna ban out anubis so you have that luxury of leaving it out to a decider instead of like picking into it out of the gates you you get a bit of more options here for both of these squads to pick onto i guess more of your your extremity uh vetoes like uh leaning into more punish picks as opposed to playing to your own strong suit which i think both of these teams are incredibly strong on uh, Anubis, and so uh, seeing that come through as a decider is pretty exciting if it comes down to it. But like you said, big question marks here. For a roster that does like these long, drawn-out defaults, they've actually been able to build a surprising amount of success on Mirage. That's uh, pretty exciting in the NA scene as well, where uh, usually teams in NA are meeting in head-on collisions towards mid at the start of every round. It's it's how fast can you die middle, or how fast can you shut down the other team middle. Uh, this roster has been actually able to buck that trend in North America and play a more so slower style, a more, like I guess, like VP-esque uh, calling plan, uh, the game plan coming through from Stanislaw that I've really enjoyed. I, I don't enjoy it as much when I watch European teams do it, but when I see NA teams kind of run it, it, it makes me think, you know, they're doing something different. They're trying something new, and it's very exciting to see. And that begs the question for the in-game leadership side of Boss, where Cryptic is going to have to try and find a, a way to counteract that, what the right decisions are. And, well, if you take that early mid control like you tend to do, whether that be on the T or the CT side, um, where are Wildcard going to be and how can you deal with it? With that, we look towards Mirage. Vertigo, by the way, I don't know if we actually said it, but it was on screen, is Boss's pick um, as well, which should also be very interesting considering how good both of these teams have been playing on that map. But for now, it's Mirage. And we jump into it with Wildcard on the T side to begin with. I really think we got the holy trinity of, of maps here. At least three three of my favorite maps right now. Mirage, Vertigo, and Anubis. What a what an excellent map pool to kick off the day here. <laughs> Look at this fight from Stanislaw. He has so much around that corner, and he's not shying away from it. I tell you that much what here. The? He continues to fight forward, and the Glock is just deleting the HP here. Uh, boss, they just keep on eating lead. I can't believe that Stanislaw gets away with that many repeats, and he's, he's still fighting it at the moment. Oh my god. Somebody take him out. Finally. Cryptic's gonna rip his head off, and I was down with Wildcard's idea early, but that commitment just took forever. How does Pwn get away? This position's so vulnerable here to connect her these headshot angles, but he manages to walk away with two kills of his own. 
Finally, JBA is able to put an end to this A-side defense. And good news is here for Wildcard, even if they're down a couple players. The HP bars are very low here from Boss, so a chance to recover this one. Freshie going to be tucked in. Nice and safe. Flashbang perfectly placed here. That is going to disrupt the setup, but Cryptic with a good trade. He's going to keep it balanced here. Now JBA locking in. A bomb plan at the very least going to start to punch in those digits. Has full HP to try and pull this clutch off and plenty of time to play safely here back over and towards A main. He's going to have to do what Stan his law did and, and pluck some headshots off, but we'll see if he's capable. Yeah, I had some of the headshots that maybe Stan wasn't finding, but he's isolated the first. Not going to connect, though, onto Brett. Now, with everybody knowing where he's located, trying to take these tools are tougher than ever. Brett will eventually get there while Cryptic holds on the defuse. Had a kit, so honestly, it might not have even mattered if Brett fell. Boss picking up the win in the opening pistol round as Wildcard. Attempting for what was maybe initially a little bit of a uh, of a B fake. Ended up trying to be more of an A split, but the split part of that ran out. Stanislaw lost his life over at ramp. Yeah, I mean, tough challenge for him to fight forward over towards that A side over and over again versus USPs and some, you know, after the 10th or 11th peak right there, he does go down. <laughs> you can't keep pushing your luck like that. I can't believe he was still swinging. <laughs> like, at that point, you, you just know as the CTs, he's selling a fake, right? Yeah, he's just, he's just like, clapping his hands, saying, hey look guys, at me, and then... I'm here! Boss are just like... Swat that fly away. He was a, a pretty deadly fly. He did land a couple headshots. Just couldn't convert on those kills, unfortunately, for him. We do have, again, another kind of mid-centric approach here from Wildcard. That smoke. Ouch. That straight onto JBA. Might actually block some of this connector presence, but they're already in connector here. And there is nobody on the A-site proper right now. This is a wild setup to see coming through here from Boss. Playing off a timing that could be good, though. Freshie does so much damage in connector. It allows for Pwn to step out. And while they had nobody on A, the players in jungle are devastating. Finally, Sonic able to apply some relief there with a quick kill. And Stan catches Brett getting wild. And crazy. Another peek comes through from Freshie. Again, just able to pluck this play apart here, but... Finally, Cryptic able to put it into the favor. Two very low HP bars to save this round. We'll see what they no can EGs. do. So no freebies. But an AK as well in Stanislaw's hands. And Slate with a scout. Not an ideal position to be working from, per se, but... With how split up they are, it's going to be Boss having to take the time to clear out angle after angle. <laughs> oh, the jumping <laughs> shot from Cryptic! And now it stands AK all alone. Cryptic just holds the defuse while Dirty makes sure to find the final frag. Boss getting away with one there. That got a bit dicey, especially with how passive they were playing the A site. Love the crossfire though towards jungle. Yeah, it's a really interesting setup there. You don't expect that sort of passive nature on the second round. Almost like a, a bit of a gamble coming through from Boss saying, if you want to take this mid control, we'll, we'll let you walk up connector, but you better have the tools to break apart our setup thereafter. And that gamble pays off for Boss. Right now, though, Wildcard might be trying to switch things up and, and change the flow. A little bit more of an aggressive play here with the Tech Nines, but they get caught early by Darty on this B anchoring. Interesting, Molly. He uses that important bit of utility, that deterrence utility, early. And now he just has to rely on his catwalk player who does find an initial kill. And oh man, they're locking it down here. No trouble. Starting and Brett. This lovely dynamic duo covering all the bases right there and keeping that round flawless. Just that massive trust as well from Darty in Brett to continue to find that. Eyes forward, right? Eats the flashbangs as well and knows that Brett's going to be able to provide the support necessary. A, a slim margin for error as well. If Brett misses one of those shots, Darty's pretty much dead. The boss pick up their third, and we finally get wild card a gun round moving. And in those first few rounds, it's it's been like you said a little bit late for the mid control. About 30 seconds in is when they really start to put on the pressure wild card, but they're gonna have to deal with boss maybe a little earlier this time. Bones all the way up inside the smoke. Oh, all right. 
Good for maybe a flash play and just hide inside the smoke. See what you can get after here. Stan is in the lurk about. Pone. Oh, I think that smoke faded and he was in no man's land. Just trying for a, a little, cheeky pick. A little suspicious, that smoke. I think Stan was correctly on guard because of it. It was a little further forward than maybe you would expect. Right. And that, that again, you know, Stan... He's going to be one that, that can, is willing to wait out the smokes here. This angle is so perfect okay. from Infinite as well. And this 4v5, they just wait for more re-aggression. Another one. Great opportunity right there. Sonic keeping his distance up against this MP9. And this round kind of fizzles out. You, you find a quick 4v5. You find the punishment on that mid-aggression from Pone alone. And boss at nearly every exchange get aggressive. And guess who's just posted up waiting for them at every angle right there, at every punch, wild card. Getting those crispy re-peaks. That angle from Infinite especially is just disgusting. Because, like you say, you expect the, the re-aggression to find some information for boss. And they find wild card every which way. I would have maybe liked to see something more of a set plan, though, for that Aggression towards mid. Yeah, like a flash or something when the smoke Anything. fades. Like, as much as I have faith in Pone alone, really strong player, you know, just being alone right in front of three three enemies isn't ideal. He's going to, at best, get one usually, unless they just walk by him. Yeah, that is uh, not, not a... Uh... Typical way to start out a round, and I think sometimes here, if you're boss and you're going up against this pretty brutal style to play up against here in wildcard, this slow and suffocating sort of style that Stan has been calling out more recently, it uh, it can be important to also throw some some wildness, so throw some chaos into the mix. That fundamental CS can kind of break down. So maybe that was the intended goal. Just didn't quite work out in execution. But look at Stan here lurking up. And that's a tough little situation there. Backs turned cryptic. Able to catch that. It's interesting here. We're seeing a lot of contacty plays. This is uh, not what I was expecting here. But again, the question was posed. How well uh, wildcard we're going to be bringing Mirage into the mix here. And it seems like they are actually willing to get a bit more aggressive in the early stages here with some of these plays. Getting Stan as well involved in the rounds early yeah and setting the tone as well in the last round the boss that mid would be something that maybe is going to be pushed or a little bit more aggressively pushed early and boss is played more passively in that one and try to catch the timing it works out beautifully but three in connector it's time to roll as that smoke fades cryptic Delivering the first, a dink onto the second. JBA down low. And the crossfire, beautiful. Towards the A site and towards jungle. Boss have this locked down. Wild card, simply no chance. And you talked about the contact play. There was another one right there. Two in the same round, right? Just walking in, up catwalk initially for Stanislaw. And the same play that that smoke fades. Yeah, keeping that sort of uh, contact approach here pretty consistent. And again, I mean, cryptic handling business. Look at the amount of damage he was able to do right there. Finds the kill to start it off. Prepared Six for and one. Stan's uh, aggression and then yeah, finds uh, even extra. A kill and some change, so. Hopefully start here for boss out of the gates here on Mirage. Really setting the tone early. But they're ready to handle some of these more aggressive plays. They're ready to handle some of these more. Early maneuvers. I do like it though. I like that Stan is willing to throw in these uh, mixture of plays. And I'm really excited to see this team again fresh off the back of a boot camp because, like, obviously, when you talk about this organization, it's really exciting to have them uh, join in the NA space, right? And kind of get rewarded for it. Obviously, uh, making it to the, the RMRs is a big deal for this roster, uh, for both these yeah. rosters, in fact. But, uh, also, making it through this open qualifier is is an incredible result uh, versus some of the other teams, like like a giant organization. Uh, when you talk about like NRG and investing those uh, that roster to get here in a two zero fashion, it's a big deal for the squad. So it's uh it's cool to see that uh, 
This roster's still able to punch forward and, and deliver. You know, I'm also happy to see Wildcard taking an early time out there, right? They, they, it's clear that there was some lack of expectations or the expectations weren't met for what Wildcard expected to see from Boss in that last round. So just taking a moment to talk it over. We'll see a bit of a different look. Haven't gotten to see Slight get activated on this AWP yet. It's another factor to this Wildcard team that can be increasingly deadly, but it's infinite to open the proceedings out here towards the A-side. Darty's alone, and his head's ripped off. A-side is there. Oh, my Brett, God. How does he get away with it? Chaos right now. Brett looking to dive forward, though. Catching a lot of damage right now out in the open. But actually fading away. This, this is an instant save call here, and everyone is able to display enough discipline to get out of that position in some fashion. I'm impressed that they have that discipline to, to back out, especially with how deep they were. You know, Brett getting that kill at, at steps, like, that's huge for them. And they still back away. Yeah, I mean, smart right there. Brett is the one that, that needs to bail once the, the teammates call it. And he's able to get out of there. That's another thing I feel like not a lot of NA teams are willing to do, is call the saves when realistically rounds are kind of cut off you have no ct spawn control right there you have to even fight for that control it's kind of a, a tall tale sign that you got to get out and so smart decision making but also again wild card able to make another contact play this time it works out so much better as they walk their way out towards that a side and collapse in on them we're still seeing the same fast smokes thrown out here one of them is landing outside to lurk. It's it's right in the middle of the site. Look at that off spawn yeah, throw. That's a bit of a crazy one. I mean, it does indeed create the question marks in boss's mind. And I mean, notice where Cryptic is playing. Could be like a direct response to that smoke. But Cryptic, hang it out. They've been punished before. Not going to get punished this time. They'll be traded. And they're still freshy on the site itself. He gets double naded though, and it's actually slight find another in the meantime already making this doable though an HE of his own plus the frag that infinite has now taken away oh my god this is so explosive here the opponent alone is able to cut it off it puts slight into the clutch with his awp in hand up against the deadly duo here on pone and brett challenges ahead but pone is already making the quick rotation over towards this b side here not going to beat slight to the punch though Slight is going to be able to punch in those numbers. Start that post plant. We'll see where he plays out this post plant from. If you have an op, maybe you want to try and find a forward angle. Get a quick pick. Instead, he's going to go straight for that fan. Jump into the apartment side of things and play out from there. Smoking a flash and isn't going to use either of them. Hanging on for that maybe a little later. At least the flash, that is. Pone's got a molly as well right now. You can toss that in towards apartments and this round could just be toast from there. There it is. Already used Slight trying to cover the cross right now. Smoke onto the bomb can really secure it, but not if you can't get on the bomb here. And it's gonna be a stick coming through from Pwn, but oh! Slight lands a no-scope right through the smoke and is able to close out the 1v2. That's the explosive AWP that Slight is known for in wildcard, benefiting massively from it. Closing the distance. After boss made, I think, a great adjustment towards the A site with Cryptic playing close, and they were ultimately not trading well into that round with Freshy going down to the HEs. Darty really pulled them back. Only for that to all go for naught. I'm loving the, uh, I'm loving just the, the craziness that we're seeing in a wild card here. This isn't what I anticipated. Maybe this is kind of a, a addition to the game right here coming through. Stan calling these off-spawn executes, which is absolutely sick to see. These random, like, front stairs smokes that are being thrown out that I, I don't see from, like, any other team. I don't know that I've ever seen that smoke myself. Right, it's... it's... I mean, unless you're tossing it off the, off the wall of ramp as a lurk smoke, maybe. Right, yeah, they're throwing it from T-Spawn out of the gates here, just kind of adding a little addition to their rush. I might want to write that one down for my own 
folks there because sometimes I get sent out to the wolves on that A side. You know, it's not going to yeah. go well when I'm first. <laughs> it does provide coverage, and especially if you're tossing it with any regularity, it, it provides so many question marks for the A players. They never have any real idea about the A Stack here up to the catwalk crawl, but they really don't get anything. Nothing at all going for them. It is cut down piece by piece right there. The, the pistol's not enough to stand resist. Thought card and the, the diligence on the execute. Those are the rounds right there where I do like to see that, you know, slower style come out, right? Don't give them any fights. Don't walk into, you know, stacks without the proper protocols. You can see the discipline panning out. It's also the type of round and the type of time where... North American teams especially struggle. I think that's part of what makes it so so nice to see. Well, watching NA teams play up against, you know, any any other roster that they they could beat, just to lose to an eco there is it's like one of the most devastating factors here. And uh, and it, that NA has entirely so it is again this is going to be a key factor here. But what an angle! What are you supposed to do about that? Yeah. I'm, I tell you what, I'm not checking that angle. <laughs> not a chance, man. That is just ratty from Sonic, and I love it. I'll teach Boss to be pushing aggressive. They even had Pone alone there to provide coverage. Like, they get punished, but I don't think that was a bad push in essence from Boss. But up against this wildcard team, you already know they've been, they've been so passive at times. You got to get info, but is, it that, is that the cost you're willing to pay? Ooh, got a bit of an elevated angle. Ooh, I like this one from Cryptic as well. Oh, that flash can absolutely blast him. Oh my goodness. Damn. My god, you can't do anything. You can't do anything up against Sonic. The way he's playing things out, except if he peeks into an op. But guess who's right behind him? To trade it out, it's Pwn. Walking right into the scope there of Slight. And Brett and Darty, again, no space in this retake here. They're gonna give it a bit more of a poke and a prod. They don't have kits. They're not gonna go for this one. They were just faking us out. They were giving us a little bit of hope here. The wild card rip it right from them. This has been incredible to watch from wild card because as much as this is a tied scoreline, Cole, right? Think about the fact that Boss opened this 3 0 and then put that back into your mind and think, oh, well, what if wild card had gotten the pistol or it won that force by, for example? The seaside has been fantastic. It has. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying to see these. The kind of like uh, just high octane uh, counter strike that we can see out of wildcard, but also, uh, again, just right back to some of the slower game plans that are working out for the squad as well. They got a nice little mixture that I'm enjoying quite a bit. And I'd love to see a timeout for boss here. Yeah, they could definitely use it. They do got a new coach here. We didn't mention. Uh, much of the coaching aspects for both of these squads here, but uh, I believe Wildcard still working with uh, Corvi as their their main coach, and then they do also have uh, Ward working with this roster. Uh, actually, Warden is their main coach, and then Corvi uh, working as a roster. So vice versa, from what I said. Uh, then on the other end of things, new coach in Boss is, is Axed, which was a pretty exciting pickup for them. Yeah, picked him up a couple months ago. I know a lot of a lot of players that really respect that guy's certainly has been working out thus far. Pretty standard V exact. They found themselves an easy look under the site. Didn't lose Stanislaw in the process, but with three rifles, boss have a real serious chance at this one. That's not gonna help too much though. Slight plucks one off the top ropes right there, Brett. Takes a bit of a tumble, and he still has the line cover here, but it's still cutting things off even further. And it would be nice if you're able to escape here. There's a gun dropped into window for Freshy, and an A1S retrieved there for Cryptic. Nice little uh, exit okay. strategy for there for Boss. But like you said, I think right here, oh, as the gun rounds do come out, a dang bomb. It does quite a bit of damage there, but... Uh, this is the round where you'd like to get these timeouts rolling here. A little pause in the action. Keep the nerves nice and calm because, again, things started out well for you. You were handling some of the early pressure. But that slight clutch, I think, has really activated 
this wild card squad here. When when Slight's delivering in the clutches, that's where you know things are starting to go well uh, on that wild card camp. If you can set yourself up for that sort of situation. I think the concerning thing as well for Boss is it's not as if they're playing poorly. At the moment, they are getting outplayed and wild card delivering a pretty flawless T side thus far you know like i said you, you subtract out the the early rounds off the pistol and i wouldn't say there's been a real big mistake from wildcard elsewhere yeah they've been trying to switch things up get aggressive every once in a while you know throw some proactive plays into the mix had some good game plans but those have been all dealt with they got mid control with a minute left of the round. That's a great block smoke right there from Cryptic. Might not have been a fully intentional, but it'll do the trick. This catwalk play there. Stan just deletes Brett. Absolutely blasts him out of the server right there. That is one big swing right there. It's a win you really would have liked to have, isn't it, as well for Boss? They had that, that little gap in the smoke if Stan had gone a little bit further forward instead regroups back up it's the b hit coming through and all five wildcard members are here up against darty gonna have to do some of that incredible sight play that we were talking about before you have the first and the continuation on that spray gap the ransom a second with cryptic in well it was supposed to be help turns into the dead body about as quickly as he was seen she will get away, and the cost is Wildcard picking up a victory in this first half. They can't plant their feet just yet. Struggling to figure out a good, coherent defense right there. I mean, talk about the opening pick coming through from Stan out of the gates. That is a pretty tough swing to manage, but like you said... You do get more of that contacting approach coming through here from Wildcard that you were at the beginning. Stage is able to handle, but later on here, that's been a struggle. It's well worth a hunt if you can get away with it. Last round of the half is up next, but they don't really go too aggressive. I guess not too concerned with what boss are bringing to the table because so far they have been able to handle, for the most part, any sort of gun rounds. Anything of that nature here. Maybe try and get, they've tried it a couple of times, but it didn't really pan out. Maybe get Conalone into some sort of more aggressive angle or try to use him more dynamically in some way. He's gonna go out towards mid where there isn't gonna be anyone early. Uh, just the top mid smoke to try and sell that they're still maybe in the area. Instead, it's a wild card, ready to go. This is gonna be a fast exact as well. We're already out, cryptic, standing tall, cryptic. With the Famas in hand, gets two. Alive as well. The Palace, he'll finally go down. And Totolo is rotated through. That time allowed. And a three on two where bots have gotten an advantage. Stan trying to get a little bit more proactive. He got shut down. We got Slight and another big clutch opportunity. Elevated angle is just nasty. Collects onto Pone alone. Don't give him another one. Not two and one half here. Big post plant clutches that bomb plant. Does beta peak coming through another isolated till he's straight off to that B bomb site. Immediately diving through his own Molotov to get there. But he's gonna go up catwalk here instead. And Darty is holding for that play exactly. Spots oh. out the jump, but he can't quite collect. So all it is in it information. And Darty has to chase a ghost here of slight. Oh wait, he gets away with a 1v2 and then a 1v3. Not in the same half. I'm already ticking up against him here. Darty gonna move, but he's gonna get caught off guard. Slightest push through market right now, and a back is turned, and a kill is converted. It's gonna be wild card collecting eight rounds here on the T side.
We are back here once again, second half, and what a way to finish for the first straight there from Slight. Massive clutches in the half entirely, and that puts Wildcard in a beautiful spot here. Try and close out their map pick, but they still got a CT side to chew through here. And what on earth are we rocking on this pistol? Do we have a double catwalk, double ladder set up here out of the gates? Yeah, it kind of looks like it. Some of a bit crazy. B side under fire, though. Boss will make their way onto it. Getting a smoke up for window means that they should be able to get the bomb down pretty easily, and Cryptic will do so. The quick rotation in. There's already players here on Cat, and they're creeping up. Three players there. Not necessarily an issue until they get in your face, and that's what's going to happen. Or quick as you like. Cryptic will beat the first, and with Brett finding a double, it's immediately a run for Slate out of this round. Think down and gone. He might even get found. This is uh, obviously a big chase down pistol round save attempt from Slight, but oh boy. Oh, they're hunting. And that was a kill that he needed to find here. Another one. Get a crispy couple before exiting the round. Fortunately, this time, though, left into an unclutchable position here. Doesn't have the luxury of playing off that bomb this time as he's done so well in that first half. Just a couple of confidence building kills. Good for the economy as well if he wants to force up, and he sure will. Someone tossed over a scout his way. He'll be able to give Infinite a FAMAS, so still a pretty efficient force by, but this is so far. Both pistols won out by boss, and that's good news for them. <laughs> we got a little bit of indecision there from Pwn on the smoke, but he does toss it. Especially good news when outside of the pistol and the follow-up rounds, boss really didn't have much success at all. It'll help them try and cut this distance that Wildcard put together in their T side. But that said, like I said, the uh, actual buy isn't bad. You know, a lot of these second round forces for the CTs are, I don't know about you, but whenever I see them, it's like, eh. So if the Deagle gets three, it's it's a win. Otherwise, yeah. it's over. This feels a lot better. It does. You got more than just a Deagle here. You got a 5-7 as well. And then, of course, the MP9 and the Moss. But look at this. Route up catwalk right now into the stack. Oh, perfect. Popper. No vision for Sonic. But look who's around that corner. It's the whole squad. They learned that out the hard way, and now they have to reroute. Now they got to adjust here. 
come up with a little bit of a different plan here is infinite didn't hear the fall off catwalk drops the bomb on catwalk all of a sudden this becomes a whole lot more chaotic and cryptic looking to stabilize first squad that's off one of those rotates but again mission number one right now is recovering that bomb here jba knife out on the flank gets one and nearly a second so much damage coming through it puts it all on the back of freshy 7 HP, and there's not a chance here. Infinite with a 4k, that FAMAS that was dropped to him gets so much output. And that's what I mean. It feels so much better because he got something, a real weapon, as much crap as a FAMAS gets. He can sure deliver, and Infinite showing us that. Wild card right back in it, and it's Boss who are now the ones on a lackluster purchase. They've got tons of util, but pistol armor, no rifles. The Tech Nines, they are indeed terrifying, more so than pretty much anything else, especially on a fast play. And they're setting Keep up for, pace. I think, what was going to be just mid split instead. They're just straight up for the B exact. Look at this B setup. Oh, that's an HE right in your face. Ouch. Right in your face. To start this one off, they do get some good utility down to infinite. Trying to dance, but Sonic gets nothing out of his position. And Infinite's overrun. He's overwhelmed here. Headshots start to connect. The Tech Nines they collect. And now Stan trying to save this round. Gives it a peek and actually gets something in return there. Darty gets a wild swing in. So a little bit of life in this retake. Sonic really needed to get something. Stan is locked. Finding that opening allows the possibilities. So I think they're not be interested in this. Stan's going to continue forward. JBA looking for the swing, and he's not given a chance to take any shots whatsoever. This is done. There's no kit, or rather, JBA does actually have one, but the time is gone. And I think that round really comes down to Sonic needing to manage that position a bit better. Yeah, 100% agree right there. It felt like... A bit of an unnecessary swing as well. Just kind of getting eager for the Ecos. But you know what? I'm never going to be one to blame. Yeah, I was about to say. For getting hungry for the Ecos. <laughs> I do love myself a good Eek. You would be one to talk, but I appreciate that you're not. Myself, on the other hand. Come on, Sonic. Figure it out. <laughs> also quite a bit here. Then they get into another one of these... Still pretty solid four spies, right? Wild Cardinal walking into this one with nothing. They got a little something something for us. They got a little bit of a main aggression as well. I guess who's that bat here? Freshy's gotta force this back. They've got a ton of info off the back of that, that quick ramp push. Wild card it's stacked towards A, but now they can spread back out a bit more. Take some space. Ultimately, boss haven't made any decisions. They actually aren't sure where they're headed, at least not yet. About that same one minute mark that Wildcard really enjoyed will be taking late mid control. And now the possibilities are open. Wherever they please. An A site seems to be that place. And just barely saw him. The fact that Sand gets away with that though now allows JBA some space uh -oh. to work. He'll deny the plant and he'll get two out of it. The spray control. Oh. Eight bullets left and it's plenty for JBA. The young star able to deliver. The wild card. Brett had no chance with infinite. And the MP9. That's another round back and forth. Nobody can pick up two. Yeah, this is brutal here. Back and forth. You'd think it would, wouldn't favor the, the CT side, but Wildcard denying a bomb plate there is incredibly important. It is going to put this one in a, a even more tricky spot, right? You're going to have another round of Tech Nines, but the, the big question is, are you going to be able to catch players like Sonic and Infinite and off guard? Are they going to make that, that same massive mistake that they did in the last Eco? And the answer is likely no. They probably learned their lesson a little bit there. But, of course... 
see here. Stan just giving him a spam through the smoke looking for something. A little bit of chip damage. Right? Talk a little bit about a palace pop here, Bomb. Is positioned alongside Freshy. So they're ready to collapse here. Smoke goes in towards CT as well. Actually, I don't know what that smoke is. Huh. Miss smoke? But it, it blooms so weird, it makes me think there's no way that's not initial. We'll see what they get away with here. It might just fall apart as Slight goes on cleared here. They're able to scale out. They get maybe use that smoke as some sort of space creation, but it doesn't matter. It's shut down already. And Brett just left with his hands in his pockets in middle. A tech nine up against the world and a perfect splash to just ensure no more casualties for wildcard as they're looking to coast to the finish line here. And boss kind of starting to look a little bit razzled as well. That timing on the smoke and then the push itself. We saw the, the ramp side of that push just a little bit later than you would have liked to see. And so there was no chance at a trade. Not that uh, the stair player was really interested in allowing that to begin with, but all of those things together lead me to the feeling that boss have lost at least some of the consistency that we were seeing with them early into this game, despite the later half of the first being so difficult for them. And unfortunately, it's Glocks into this round. They're, they have to give up 12 if they want a, a single gun round, a single actual gun round in the second. It's brutal. Not having much opportunity. How does Brett work that magic? Oh my god, not like this. Not like this! Guys. Not another Glock kill. Oh my god, it's up to JBA and Darty. Look at them do even more damage here. I think they might have stabilized here. The Glock dinks were insane here. JBA cover CT spawn. Another headshot, but it's only 50 <laughs> damage. Oh my god. It settles. It's I not need pretty. A I JBA, need a Glock a dink deal. counter. <laughs> I'm dick, I guess, but my god, yeah, I mean, that kind of spirals out of control. And you know what? If Boss ever wanted to capitalize on that, that extra damage here, it's to win this round right now and, and break the economy. But uh, that is a big if, because far success has not been going their way. Yeah, I think Infinite's the only one with real big cash flow. Everyone else would be struggling a bit more. It's going to feel good to have an AK in your hand. Flashbang out for mid. Brett's going to get the better of the first engagement, but JB, JBA right behind Stanislaw to equalize things. And... Now Wildcard mostly giving up mid control, but boss don't have it either, and that's as good as done. Boss gotta take some time to try and re-engage here. Group up three. So head back top mid. Just slight reroute here. Sonic in a good position to surprise. Have some fun. But the, the walk up, the crawl that's coming through here. We'll see if he's bypassed because, again, A is kind of sacrificed right now. Just walk up connector silently. Finally getting loud about their approach and end time. Guess who's there again? It's JBA, the hero in this second half. He's been doing so much damage and some smoke spam. Puts Cryptic on notice. JBA still playing passive, so number's going to be punched in. And now the question of if you want to make this happen. I love that boss are playing this so together, though. Unfortunately, it doesn't matter. Slate, who's on a very difficult angle to trade out, will still find the frag with the AWP, and all three of boss's remaining members are chilling in jungle. They just got a spot off of one. They have some idea. The remaining few are here as well. Cryptic staying alive. The bomb down incredibly low, but they'll get on it, and there should be enough time with the kit included. There it is. JBA with the defuse and wild guard with their own map. Pretty easy despite a 13-6 scoreline. Maybe not seeming that dominant. It, it absolutely was. 
it, it definitely felt like it. Think about the uh, start of that game here. Boss were able to collect a, a quick, you know, four or so rounds out of the gates there. One, uh, the first gun round, were able to capitalize with uh, the pistols as well. That was both pistols in the mix, yeah. may I remind you. And all of that, those factors here leading up to a, a very dominant first map here for, for Wildcard and a great look for them out of the gates as the uh, one of the open qualifier rosters. Yeah, I think that when you put it like that, when you say boss got one gun round that whole game, that that really makes it so tough to to really give them any further credit beyond just, hey, great work on the pistols. But I, I think a lot of that is a well-deserved wildcard team that walked in, had a game plan, and executed it incredibly well. We both agreed when the T half came to fruition, Stan had a really strong call throughout this, and the CT side didn't really leave too much to be desired. Even when you talk about the trading rounds early back and forth, they were still in those rounds, but they made the right decisions to save guns, and that allowed their force buys to be so much more effective. Yeah, absolutely. Credit to uh, Wildcard. This is a, a great look out of the gates. Obviously, they still have more at hand here when it comes to playing up on their opponent's bad pick. That's going to be Vertigo, and that's going to be after this quick break. Guys, once we come back, Vertigo coming right up.
After a dominant first map coming through here, out of the gates from Wild Card, they get to start things off with a little bit of success, but can they finish just as strong up against now Boss's map pick? It's a bit of an exciting one as well. We get to see Vertigo come through from these guys, and uh, obviously looking they're looking to respond here for what uh, kind of Stan just called out with. Yeah, and I think that as a as a start, I mean, we asked the questions of what wildcard would look like on Barrage, and I think they've silenced those those questions pretty much entirely with this showing. But you talked about Vertigo and Boss; they have been really strong on this map. Now, if you look at the stats, you might not really understand why we're saying that, but that's because they've lost three times in a row, but that's all been to M80. Otherwise, they're undefeated in the last couple of months. And I think that that's why it's important to really put some respect on Boss's Vertigo. They've been showing that they are incredibly strong here. Absolutely. Uh, again, you know, coming through and, and calling some good rounds here from, from Cryptic, who... Obviously has struggled up against what I would say is like one of the, the best Vertigo teams, one of the best teams out of North America in general, obviously, in a M80, but definitely strong on Vertigo. Um, and, and then having to deal with that roster constantly, is that going to take a toll on, on the confidence here? You know, walking into this one, even if it's up against the same team, you still lost it three times in a row. You still came up against the same roster. You played the same game. Uh, on the same map and, and weren't able to really improve it. And I think that that might kind of take a hindrance on some of the confidence that bosses bring to the table. But I hope to see them respond because, again, uh, everything that we've seen out of this uh, this roster so far, their, their qualification uh, to the RMR, the, the, the way that they made Pro League here, all of these are really big deals for the squad. Yeah, and, you know, asking about whether or not it's going to be a confidence boost or rather a, a knock to the confidence, I think so. I think the bigger question mark for me, for bosses, you lose three times in a row. Uh, what did you change that 
didn't necessarily work for you and now you're not stuck with but it can be hard to delineate between okay what worked before what did we change and because you're, you're practicing the map the way that you intend to play it you're not practicing one version versus everyone else and one versus versus uh, one for m80 i think that that's where the the question marks start to come through that being said i also think it's awesome that boss get the chance to actually come and prove themselves again on this map and show people that yeah we may have lost m80 but everybody's losing to freaking m80 back the heck off yeah uh, let me paint you a picture here uh the, the the day or season is season 36 uh or no sorry season 38 uh we're playing vertigo cryptics in the server with me oh and with we're you. playing up against an, an open uh open semi-finals all right, and we absolutely blast this team on uh, on Vertigo. Right, we're we're dominating. We're showing up. The other two maps weren't as good, but uh, Cryptic, when I was playing with him, he was calling up a storm. He's got a really good individual impact on this map. So, uh, again, you know the the confidence is certainly there, and I feel like Cryptic can bring uh, a whole other element to this squad. The only thing is, I feel like individually here, between the, these two callers, between these two IGLs, I think Stan just has his Cryptic's number here. The, the style class that we've seen, especially with actually a little bit of a, uh, I would just say kind of an adaption here, a little bit of a change coming through. Like a lot more earlier contact he plays coming out of the gates from uh, from this uh, uh, wildcard squad that have looked so much better. And they've just been a lovely addition to their game that I think maybe they've been trialing over there in Europe. Um, and again, it's a big question of if not, uh, if Cryptic can kind of overcome his demons here. I think there's that. And also, when you think about how effective this calling has been, I think throwing in some adjustments is exactly what Wildcard needed in order to really make a splash against Boss specifically. Or, or I, I will say that against any traditional NA team, you know? It, it doesn't necessarily have to be Boss, but when... You're trying to counteract one thing, expecting something slow, and then you get some of these contact plays. It can really be difficult to try and actually get a read on the game and what's going on. Yeah, absolutely. No question about it. But so far, Dreshi, able to kick things off with a little bit of success. He had a quieter map last time. And so, if he's able to build up a confidence, I mean, another key piece here to wild card. We highlighted Darty, we highlighted some of the, the other elements here, but. It's good to see Freshy start off strong. Bomb finally going to be planted after a little while. Numbers punched in. That'll start the clock up against them here. Flash to get out of this position as well. Readjust the pose plants. Make sure that they maintain some strength here. And the damage continues to be done. But Brett gives a fight over here. Darty quickly traded out on the site as well. There's still very low HP bars. But it's going to be stuck. And it's going to be a kit as well. They've got to kill him here. they got to take him out the bomb. And they just about get it done here. JBA left to save the day. Can he find these quick kills? Not quite. The crossfire too strong. And boss will start off three for three on the pistol rounds. And it all starts with wild card. Just getting an, an unanswerable early death in the first, what, 15 seconds of the round. Just taking that early fight. And boss getting away with it. That's now three his surrounds that boss have won over the course of this series they've yet to drop one which is what's so incredible but they're down a map considering that point regardless no uh back and forth not this time at least when it comes to the force by it's all or at least all one of the wild card members making their way up and through mid into brett smack 10 that will gladly take 600 and 1200 dollars off of them more with the glock in as well the stand lonely with a Zeus, I, I charges. Have you have you seen more Zeus kills? Because I have. After the change, I've seen more Zeus attempts. No difference in the kills. Oh, okay. I've <laughs> seen a couple of differences. Maybe in the kills. I guess maybe because it's attempted more, there's more kills. Well, I watched uh, Ellis get one yesterday. That's fun. Yeah. The the one thing about uh, Valve sometimes about their like, their their like adjustments and their uh, changes is that they, the just the update of a mechanic can revive something in this game and it's so funny because like the recharged zeus actually ne you'll never have time in a round to recharge a zeus i i feel like is it's it a very rare occasion how long does it actually take i know it's quite a while i imagine it's 30 seconds or more yeah it feels like it is 
So, like, maybe in your matchmaking games it could be a little bit more viable. It actually could be a little bit fun to try that, but... But not uh, here. But no, not with the trades and, and the likes here on the CT side. It's a fun it's a fun concept, though. It's just funny that everyone is like, oh, now I'm hopping on this bandwagon, even though it's got the smallest buff known to man. You're saying that you've been on the Zeus trail forever and everybody else is just following? That's what I'm saying. I was on that bandwagon before. It's cool. The crypt? Got one more in the middle here to handle. The speed play also getting shut down by infinite. They, they really can't gather much space. Yeah, that, that walk through that smoke is kind of incredible. The timing for wildcard was perfect. They got away with it and the smoke as well to provide the spacing necessary to make it. I was a bit skeptical when I saw it coming through, but can't argue with the results, can you? Don't get on the site. At least they should. It's going to pull back away and, well, maybe try and take a couple of shots through the smoke, but the numbers get punched in, and here we go. There's a post plant, but lacking a lot. Come alone and Darty. Pone is low, but Darty's got the rifle. Galil, it may be, but effective in his hands, as we've just seen. Absolutely. It gives him a chance. It gives him a shot. Smoke on top of the site could allow for this MAC-10 to get some action. As long as he doesn't peek into slight AWP. But there's the initial tap. There's another drop as well. Sonic hits the deck. And look who's standing in the open as HE lands. They pull it back from a 4v2. All the way to closure there for Pone alone. And Darty. Montana. Beautiful recovery right there. That was not easy whatsoever. It felt like that nothing was going right in the early defaults, but they managed to pull it back and and take that A side approach and, and play the post plants perfectly. And the mid game sort of fell apart for them, but I don't know. I think that as dumb as it sounds, normally that smoke onto the site is is the right play for the CTs. It really screwed wildcard there. I don't think the Mac 10 can get into any reasonable range otherwise. But and this time. Makes life miserable. They've given over the AWP as well. It, that was not a round that Wildcard really could afford to lose. They'll have something to work with at least, though. Five sevens. Pretty much across the board. There's a Deagle and a P250 in there, too, but let's be real. The five sevens, kind of the goat. I do like a good five seven. Nice foul play. It's underrated skin right there. <laughs> I think uh, JBA has it. We also got the monkey business. I mean, the 5 7 has got to have some of the best skins. It actually does, yeah. Maybe outside, like, the AK? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, AK, obviously, is a top seller. Can't compete with that. Michael Jordan of weapon <laughs> skins here. But, uh, no <laughs> foul play. Perfect. For JBA, but at least Stan able to get away with a whole lot there. Finding himself a couple of big kills. And getting out of dodge. How is he still alive? With an AK in hand, he has completely disrupted this offense here, this attack. But he has to readjust his setup here. Maybe toss that AK over to someone with more health or collect another kill. He collects it right around the smoke. Pone wasn't safe, and now Chaos and just engulfing the site. They're running through the smoke as well. Darty left all on his own. Left wondering what on earth just happened to his squad. Stan's done enough here to maybe pull this round across the way. And he certainly has infinite hits the deck. And somehow that round goes south for boss. I told you, it's, it's a great gun. Stan, what an incredible moment to get away with a 3K. And I think that that is what put Stan above a lot of in-game leaders as well. His ability to have massive impact rounds whilst also being a strong in-game leader. A lot of a lot of teams tend to be missing that. He does it once again. It's like you're gathering the AWP, but boss will be rebuying into that. Cells is oh, I think we're about to get a duel as well. It's like the other side of this smoke. Offangle works perfectly and no trade available. But there you go. There's something to answer back. You know an op is close by around that corner. You don't want to give him a fight. 
So a little bit of relief there for Bosk. Courtesy of Pwn Alone's AWP. Elevated angle. Wow, slight is all watching. Eno's ball. You cannot catch him off guard. Still That's... committed to that angle as opposed to the lower one. That's wild. Sometimes you gotta take a bit of a risk and slight does so. Pays off big time. It's two frags for him and Freshy Pwn alone. The last two remaining members will be a molly for quad. But they're walking into the op again. That Walk doesn't even it. spread. They haven't technically cleared white box either. Well, just to get across the line, none of them. So it's just going to be able to walk into the AWP here, but Freshy might be able to save the day. They throw it flash ring on the site. They're chasing him down before he can get into a comfortable spot, but he delivers a quick kill. He's got to worry about the flank, but there's a smoke that shrouds it. JBA, though, will be able to recover in time there. And keep wildcard in safe situation, but still a little bit of a fight, a little bit of flair showing up by Freshy. And as much as I, I think you can talk a lot about Slight in the last game and how much impact of those 1v2, 1v3 clutches that he had. For the most part, otherwise, Wildcard put together a, a very much a team effort. Early into this one, though, we're seeing the, the individuals come to the forefront for both Boss and for Wildcard. You know, seeing that, that two-on-four clutch come through. Massive moment for Stan in the pistol round, and now it's Slight who stands tall, first in mid and then towards B. Got yeah, infinite now on the cannon. See him whip out the Kenny S right there okay. and still locks in another kill. Scare cryptic. Round two for Sonic. Oh boy. This bait and switch setup. Little flashbang action. Another flash there, and oh boy, look who's waiting with open arms. Darty does Find the kill in return, but it doesn't linger. Infinite. The old double zoom on the ramp here goes a long way. He's going to go for a little peek. What a flashy Whoa. flick right here from Infinite. Almost another. That's one more bullet left into the chamber before he's got to reload. So it's a must hit for Infinite here. He does miss. So now the whole squad has arrived here onto the scene. Everyone is ready to help out on this defense. Pwn, so uncomfortable here. Has an AK in hand, but he's sticking to the tech nine as he punches in the digits. Bomb plant, at the very least, is great. But what can Pwn do here with this AK? Quick headshot, another one here from Pwn. Nearly gets the lineup as well. JBA so low, but Stan as well again gets the crucial kill. There's very few players outside of Pwn alone that can make me believe like that. As soon as you see him start to get those first couple of kills, he's... He's done it before and he can do it again, but they're covering both AWPs or wild card. And you, you know, you sometimes forget. I think Infinite has been on the secondary op on quite a few teams that he's played on. And every time I kind of forget how good he can be with it until he pulls it out. You're like, man, this guy's just so talented. They can do it all, it feels like. That, that just sequence it looks like he is uh getting away as a primary the, the unbeatable strat the double op i love to see it pulled out on vertigo because double zooming on the b side is just so powerful it's really hard to bypass and, and especially if infinite's able to add a couple of different elements to that game here can do a whole lot more jba though he might have a kill in the silver platter here freshie has a long adjustment to handle JBA's position right now. JBA's given nothing. Yeah, just tucked away. Don't want to take that fight. Maybe waiting for a flashbang? There it is. Flash is perfect, but JBA finds nothing or doesn't swing. Stanislaw's about to walk into the crosshairs and surely the trade comes through, but JBA, Ooh. he holds the line. He's chilling. Not even going to take this and... Do, there's no way they check him after this. No, not a chance. Not even considering the possibility. Not pretty, though. Oh. Right there. Only walks away with one. So, again, a bit of a tough situation right there to justify that sort of bait. It had so much potential.
but only a one for one trade and a lot of extra damage here is your big hope. HE on top of the bomb site, Darty gonna take some damage there. Spam almost connects alongside it, but the numbers are punched in, the clock starts to tick. And the question now is how much do you want to commit with no kills given over? You know, one player's low. And there's a lot of retake oh. utility, so they'll give it a try. And there's a big kill to start it off. HE goes in as well. More damage onto Brett. This becomes an incredible challenge here. Cryptic, a committed angle. But no one's clearing him just yet here. And he walks right into the crosshair. Sonic is going to fall, but so is Cryptic off the 51st floor. And Slight is going to bail. It's tough that Infinite gets spammed as well through that smoke. They could have gotten out with both of the AWPs. I think that's a pretty much a full buy coming into that. And it, unfortunately, as much as you hate to hate to bring it up, it does come down to JBA not getting that second frag. He really needs to find it, considering the sacrifice stands life for it, really. But he just misses the mark and back on the poor purchase for wild card. That being said, with a AWP in the hand of Slight, and just the MP9 is the sole SMG for Sonic. It's not bad at all. They're, they're missing some util as well, but they'll be doing okay. In the meantime, Boss taking the time out. They're first of the series. Yeah, you're right. Surprised to see not that much influence here in that uh, first map with the timeouts. Maybe just trying to keep things flowing here. That first map had a lot of success with the pistols. So, uh, I mean, I imagine frustration was certainly there, but finally get Max involved. Again, an exciting pickup here for this uh, boss squad. I feel like it'll he'll fit this team nicely. There's... I was about to say, there's certainly a... Uh... Quite a few players that you would definitely want to have that conversation, but I just realized I am just talking about Darty when I talk about that. And can get can get hyped up. Yeah, yeah, Darty. Uh, I feel like everything I've heard from him is that he is a excellent, like emotional leader for this roster. Um, every time I've talked to to anyone really about what he brings to a team, because you know initially I wasn't so sure that he was. Uh, as impactful. Now he's definitely earned his, his spot both in the server and out. I, I Everyone just, just says he's a good vibes guy, and uh, that's that's great because he's already just so impactful. It's an ambitious angle from Stan, and wow. he can't even get out. I, I just remember watching Darty just scream at opponents at uh, Land in, here in Atlanta. Yeah. And he was absolutely the the heart of the team when it came to that land environment. That was a few years back now, though. Can't imagine too much has changed. There's your info. Catch the double up in middle. You now know what you need to do. Get this wall bang. Just light very close. The HE combo with the Molotov nearly collects a kill. But they'll be able to bail here, and I do think it's a, a pretty easy call for wild card. Own alone, able to crack two kills open. Wait a second. Hold on. I thought it was an easy call. They're still fighting forward here. Again, Cryptic with this off angle. He gets another crucial one for one. That very well could secure it here, but not totally just yet here. Sonic spamming the smoke. Oh, but Darty runs right through it. And again, it is just going to be Slight that limps in this round. I'll even take one down with him. The boss... Now finally collecting some gun rounds underneath their, their belt, which has to be so relieving. Yeah, particularly considering the first map, but I think where Wildcard were really strong and their decision making was swift with regard to those retakes in map one on Mirage, they've they've stuck around a bit too long a couple of times now. You know, you are very much expecting them to walk away, and they saw something that you didn't unfortunately ends up tossing them two lives and the same was true for infinite sticking around for an extra shot losing the secondary awp in, the, in one of those previous retakes towards a some of those decisions potentially going to come back and bite them all dependent though a slight it's the solo op 
but we know he can do it. Brett feels like he, he knows there's just a scope on his location. He's got a really crazy timing here, and he gets two, Brett. <laughs> wow. That, yeah, again, it's just a brutal play right there. Slight moving forward, trying to get an off aggressive, but you really don't expect a, a player in ladder room like that playing as careful as Brett was in that round. And he's going to go and dispose of that AWP as well. It's just an extra little bit of discipline. Making sure that that is not recoverable. Tosses it off the map and this time Slight not going to be able to save. This time it's boss as well, playing the more slow approach in an eco round. Just checking the boxes and ensuring that, hey, nothing goes crazy. Don't walk into the, the site that's stacked or maybe a five up mid. And this decision to toss that AWP out is the right one. All these wildcard members hoping to go find a free gun, instead, find nothing and also erect a triple boost. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. oh no. Unlucky. Now it's mission find the op. What did they do with it? Where did it go? They will never find it. Oh, Brett. Brett's placed it. He put it in the porta potty. And flushed it down the toilet, but they will walk away with it, AK, so. Not the it's end not of the, the world. op, but it's something better than nothing, that's for sure. Better than the USP. Take that was... any day of the week. So where do wild cards stand? A, uh, a couple of decisions that weren't quite up to snuff with regards to their retakes towards the A site. Mistake-wise, not a lot of them. We, you know, that, that big moment where we didn't quite see what JBA needed to deliver. But overall, this has been a game dominated by Boss. And the pace has been set by them as well. You remember last gun round where Stanislaw was just trying to play in a really aggressive angle to try and catch someone off guard. Kind of like that contact play that we were seeing on Mirage. Didn't work out. And so this timeout for wildcard, another chance for them to try a different adjustment. Yeah, I'm going to fight forward here, try and close out a little bit more of a comfortable score line. Still stuck only at three rounds. Again, the, the gun rounds have started to, to flow a little bit more for boss. They've had... Really good game plan. It looks like they got some good comfortability on this map. As we were leading a, into this uh, with uh, kind of mentioning. And Cryptic's calling can be very effective. Phone alone's opping looking pretty sharp as well, which is exciting. I'd like to see that out of him. Lost. Keeping it slow. Similar to that anti-eco that we just saw. Start to investigate mid. He got slight to contend with. This time on the rifle and he can't get away. Tardy finds the refrag and that's the time that boss start to poke and prod the A site instead. After finding their mid control. They do have JBA on a boost to contend with. But he's not going to find anybody just yet. Speaking of boost, there was another one put together over at mid for boss. Teammate just came from there, but it don't matter. They know where Infinite should be located. He's either late to the party saving or from the ramp, and looks like it was ramp, now saving. And I don't think that I don't think the boss are really ever gonna get away with a better timing. The presence made over towards A pulled all the rotates, but they heard what was going on and Cryptic wins both the fights towards mid. Terrorists win.
wild card feel that whatever they tried to do in the last round wasn't effective enough. They they got creative, you know, a couple of those boosts, and they netted kills for the most part. But boss catching the timing through mid. And it leads us into wild card taking that second time out. And we'll see if that uh that helps out in slowing down some of this momentum here. But uh AWP ready to fire away. And we'll see if Slight can put a stop to this A aggression here. Wow, committed angle. Ready to fight forward on the ramp. Did you have to wait back the smokes? The boss have continued to put together this this more methodical style. I mean, this is kind of what you have to do on Vertigo. Oh, it's like, jeez, he hits the shot and it's not enough. That's all the other chip damage fresh with a big entry right there. We'll see if that damage is enough to deter here. Getting big ground on the line. Another big investment. Oh, Pwn. Cryptic spotted the lineup was nearly there, but both players able to keep them back. More damage done, though. Again, it, it gives you a little bit of hope that these rifles can mop up on these low HP bars. Maybe that could be the difference maker here, but there's a quick kill from JBA. Just a tap right under the Pwn alone head. Right there. Another one. JBA looking sharp. Goes for three. And takes it all right there. Boss getting eager to jump the gun a little bit on that A side play, and finally something goes in the way of wild card. They shut it down at the hands of JBA. And I mean, talking of jumping the gun, they were waiting to come to the last minute for it, and JBA just sticking around. Wild card weren't really biting on the potential rotation. The boss were trying to sell. Infinite had position over B and. Was calling it all clear. JBA had a moment where we questioned him before, and he's delivered to put Wildcard up to four. As we head towards the final of the half, it's same situation. And I think getting slight reactivated. Potentially an important thing to do coming into this round. We'll see more aggression. This time, Wildcard, it's down towards the B site. Damage on the JBA early. He's taking a shot out of the gates. Oh man, that's off looking for Darty. He's got to run away. Gets flashed off the line. Look at this control being established by Sonic. They want to fight for B main. I love that, that fight. Are they got a resmoke. This is brutal. How did Boss get out of here? They really kind of had to wait it or need the smoke, which is what they're going to do. Sonic, here's the response. is going to fall back, and now it's the bait and switch again. Sonic will take the first contact if it comes in, but he's traded by Pwn alone, and that's a B site open for business. Running is slight. To get into position. Meanwhile, Freshie has uh, found the B site pretty much entirely free of enemies. And they're all looking B, but the bomb headed elsewhere. They're clear out. Brett, they do. Wow, systematically stand. I'm going to collect that quick kill. That's the alarm bells that they need to make it back over towards this A side here. One HE to slow down the bomb plant. Already tossed in, but a big kill straight through the smoke from JBA. It'll put the advantage in their favor, but it is a slim advantage just in the numbers. Definitely not the health here. So many low HP bars can be capitalized by Cryptic. I'm just been tapped. That puts them on notice. They spot that no one's on it. Yop needs to find some success. Looking for a shot. There's one player revealed. Now being stuck by Stan. Cryptic needs to spam. But no, both of them go down in unison. And Wildcard, they collect two rounds in a row. to send us to a break.
You got a massive second half here at play here. Boss fighting for their life, but they fight with the lead. Under their CT side here, Vertigo looking good in the first half. But again, wildcard give us two in a row to kind of shake things up, stir the pot a little bit. But Brett, he answers in the second half in kind with a nice little headshot, instantly dismissing JBA's antics in middle. JBA's antics, a topic of conversation throughout the first half of it, Vertigo. Some big moments, some massive moves, and maybe some letdowns too. All of that leading into the A side. As boss push through B, bomb plant forthcoming. There's none so, so none so much utility to work oh, with Stan. They're not the gonna check him. Oh, he gets away with one. That's at least the minimum done. And it spots out the second player as well. But look at this. It calls the whole roster down to watch this flag. Like, what on earth is going on? Everyone is just hunting Cryptic. Oh my god! What? Cryptic played it so well, hiding all the way back there, but you never expect them to push like that. It does put them way out of position. Sonic with a knife. No oh, way oh. this is how the round ends here. There's still a kit in play, but Sonic is so chaotic <laughs> here. He gets the knife kill. They're trying to find him, but they just can't seem he to fit another. Him another one. No way, Sonic. Sonic! He's gonna win the round like that. Absolute madness. Excuse me? Now that's the NACS that we're looking for here, Cole. Wild card. They get an absurd pistol victory. Sonic in a 1v3 gets a double knife off the bomb. I just, I can't believe it. A guy that I was just about to mention, a little missing in the first half. And he comes up huge and has literally a fat stack of cash. He's got How much all the bread? money. How much bread? All of it. It's all his. You got an AK, full armor, full utility, and guess who has 2K left over? <laughs> My god. Only thing better is if you just toss the op to Slate out of the gates. But then, uh, you know, you, you gotta risk giving over that op to your, your opponents on a second round ego. Especially and that's never fun. Giving it to, like, the CT side of Vertigo. Right. Yeah, you don't want to do that. So it makes a little bit of sense there when you're dealing with nothing in this round here. My god. They call a pause to let that one sink in. I can't believe... The, the double knife is crazy. The, the just actual full concession of sight to yeah. go clear cryptic out. I think it was almost crazier than the double knife. Like, what? where are they going? I mean, They're they, going they all left. the way across the bridge on A to kill cryptic. It's like... Poor cryptic. It's just a death slammer right there. You can't believe it. Yeah, and, and normally, you know, Cryptic can be like, well, I, I guess he lost the round to do that. But then they don't! Yeah, yeah, you're right. It, it should have, that, that play from Cryptic should have been a round winner. I 100% agree. And more money farmed. More cash. More bread. They are drowning in the dough on the side of Wildcard here to start things off. Because the Mac-10s kill just about everything. It's smelling like an Italian bakery in the server at the moment. Mm, that smells so good. Wild card stepping up, stepping through, and into a tied scoreline. Boss have had control of this map the whole way through. It's never been a question mark. And I, another thing I just wanted to add, that was the first pistol that Wildcard have won this series. And it was that. Oh my god, you're right. Yeah. Wow. Three for four, but I feel like that one is... It very well could haunt them if they don't stabilize here with it's the gun rounds. It's worth at least two. Yeah, the, the mental factor that that one took is it's got to be peeling back, boss. But they've got some hope. A, a bonus with the triple Mac tins. I like this game call as well. Just lost the mollies out. They got the close molly, the quad molly, and the side molly. But they're still not winning the fights. Titans can close the distance, and the rifles don't even get a chance to take a shot. No, they don't get much. The Mac is really not able to do much of anything until JBA does find himself at least a singular kill there. He'll take one down. That's just about it. 
And boss will reclaim the lead, but as we said earlier there, there's just so much money to go around here on this T side. And after losing that bonus, they strike back with a massive round here. AWP included. So like we'll have that in hand. So it felt like, you know, the, the B execute was really well placed and well called, but they didn't have the guns to get it done. Yeah, and, and also, you know, the CTs, it's really a, a matter of opting in or out of the fights. They knew they had the, the advantage and so positioned themselves well. I think boss deserve a lot of credit for that. We're fighting again for this B control our wild card. We met with flashbang and another smoke to the top of the ramp. But all of that is utility invested for boss. And one card should be pretty okay with that as the time ticks down just under 115. There's still plenty to play with. It's a lot of time here. They've got great positions, but they are starting to stack a little bit more resources towards this B side here. Cryptic taking a forward angle. High risk, high reward for it. One flashbang could completely do them in. And they've got that one flashbang tossed out. There it is. Oh, out in no man's land and blasted out of the server as Infinite will take two. They've got a mid lurk formulating here. They got a headshotted Brett. They got a dip. They've got a bail. That should cut it. Darty had the perfect position as well to get the trade, and Infinite just goes hero mode. Not just the first, gets the fully blind cryptic, but then adjusts on the darty as quickly as he appeared. He was gone. And one HP left to show. Infinite will be perfectly fine staying alive on that. Now, how many bodies do you throw at this? All of them is the answer, and Pone alone, he's not taking prisoners. This is death and death alone for the rest of wild card. Slight can't get out. This is an incredibly expensive round. Wow, what a turnaround right there. Infinite, the only one ever ever able to find any kills. They lose the op for it as well. That Wild hurts. Card, we, we've committed them a lot for their discipline. Give them a lot of credit. That one, anything but discipline right there. They, they get a little bit wild. I, I don't even hate that they're, they're hunting. I think that's the right call, given the circumstances, right? You could really break up boss's economy if they can't buy back in. You can't, you can't allow Pwn alone to just mow you down, one, two, three. Right. They yeah, need to be able to trade there, need to get that spacing done. Either way, smiles on the face for bosses. They know they put themselves in a much better position. Three guns still, keeping the pressure applied. You even drop the op, you don't have to worry about that much. You still gotta worry about infinite. His ability to crack things open though. They're, again, taking map control so effectively. On this CT or T side, rather consistently. And they haven't. It doesn't feel like they've had to work that hard for this ramp control. And we're gonna see boss reclear mid. We've got two players there. Infinite has a tentative hold on the back side of it, but Brett has support and cleared out the beginning stages of it. But what that does mean is Infinite might have a bit of alert timing. All dependent on when this A hit goes down. A side is getting pressed in upon. Oh my goodness. We got a Mac 10 in the smokes. We got Cryptic playing in a position where he's thrive, but they're pushing elevator. What is going on? Stan is in between them. He's in elevator. He's flanking even further here, but Ponalone has the better weaponry. Another flank comes through, but how is it a 1v1 here? Just infinite left again to save the day, and Brett might be mauling out of position. 1 HP there. He's going to be able to stay. He tucks in. Brett in the perfect spot to win this round. 15 seconds. Infinite has to get a little bit more aggressive. The time is ticking. He's got to make some noise here. And Brett, he doesn't want to get caught in the open, but the shadow should be seen here. He should be revealed. And he will be able to close out a massive clutch. Boss will be able to grab themselves nine rounds here. Take that lead back. And with all the economic damage that Pwn did, the money is shot. And it's four spies. Yeah, with... Yeah, they've just got nothing. They, they have to force by here, really. 
even though they had a bit of extra cash, like there was 2,600 on two or three players. You can see by the amount of utility that's been pulled out for wild card that that was there, but the whole, or with the lack of loss bonus, wasn't enough. Utter chaos, by the way, on that A site. I don't even know how the MAC-10 gets into that position without anybody knowing it, but then the fact that he's there makes it so that nobody's expecting Cryptic. Nobody whatsoever has any clue. Yeah, it's just wild positioning here so far. It has kind of quickly gone into a m much more NACS game than that first map here, but JPA with a good trade. The issue is there's still so much more presence here still on this B side here. You gotta figure out a way to punch in the numbers right now, getting kind of chased, hunted down. The flash is so oh, good, no. and a quick headshot rolls through. They're gonna chase down more kills. You don't expect Sonic with the bomb to run you down like that, but Cryptic cuts the side axis off. And he's gonna stabilize the round for now. He's gonna let it breathe for a little bit. The slight puts himself in another clutch. There's a kid on the ground right next to the site as well. Cryptic doesn't have one on him, but important to note. This bomb goes down here on B. Cryptic's asking lots of questions about where the heck Slight's gone. The answer is he's chilling. And in fact, Slight may really regret not picking up the M4 that was right next to this. The bait on the bomb. Nobody coming through. Slight just going to stick it. He'll fall back. Back to white box, into position. Cryptic's coming back. Now a smoke in hand for that bomb, potentially. As Vincent get into position, slight. You go peek and he gets the info, but at what cost? He'll flash over the top. And another shot at it. The cryptic tag lower. Kit about to be recollected, but he can't. He can get the tap once again. And the head, it's just a little too far away. He'll finally get there. And that should be the defuse. A close round that cryptic delivers. Oh, so close to being able to play off that clock right there, that timer. But he gets a little bit over aggressive, hoping maybe he could catch him with himself looking down. Instead, it will go down. Cryptic delivers a massive clutch. So that that could have gone out of control right there. The force by the all-in investment from Wildcard doesn't quite pan out for a round conversion. But I tell you what, it puts a real scare on this boss squad. It makes him use another timeout. That was by no means easy right there. You put a hurting on the money, and it's going to encourage them to keep the four spies rolling. They're going to go again. They're going to retry this one with even more utility, with even more firepower. And this is the right decision for wild card, but man, do I hate the position they're in. You know, the, the right call is to keep up the pressure, but now this game really falls out of your hands so quickly. You know, if, if you can't win this one, well, then you're obviously force buying again. Especially if you get a bomb plant and suddenly the game could be over. Wild card, a lot of pressure onto this round, Cole. Doesn't seem like it, but this one could turn the tide or seal the deal. Question, they're going to walk up B. No resistance here. Offered up by Darty, gets caught a little bit late to the party. That, that might be a save of courage here, depending on whether or not Brett can even get out. He can't even get to the first phase of this retake before he's taken down, struck out by JBA. And again, boss are just going to have to call it right there. What a insane call. This is right back to what we've seen on the T sides from wildcard. This ability to play these really long, drawn-out rounds, but also, every once in a while, just throw a crazy contact play. They just walk up ramp silently until the contact's taken. Vu. Remember, Infinite walked in. He had more support previously. This time, none whatsoever. And just wins the duel. I don't think Brett, or rather, Darty had any intention of taking an engagement at that moment. Terrorists win. Just finds Infinite there, and Wildcard win the round off the back of it. They go hunting and find Cryptic as well. It's brutal here. That uh, that clutch victory coming through from Cryptic. Success doesn't really linger too long. And right back to the drawing board. I mean, Brett's kind of in that force by territory. Cryptic doesn't have a lot in reserve, but with these two safe rifles, 
And not too interested in forcing behind it. Right? We get a little aggressive maneuver down the ladder. What has he got cooked up for us? What does he have in store? Problem is, he's just got a P2K. Got one. Funny. Pick but, up uh, slight. They're gonna take this uh, E bomb site in the meantime, though. So, a lot done. A lot established here. But we're talking a post plant again. But this time, it's much more doable. You got a man advantage. And look at the retake utility. Molly and a couple flashes to execute your way back into this round. Got a smoke to contend with. It's already gone down for wild card. That will start to stall things just a little bit. This bomb, pretty about halfway ticked. Molly goes in. The flashes to follow. The final one, a little bit unfortunate, but they're out of time. They have the single kit, and I don't know that there's going to be enough of it. Bam. Gotta get lucky. He's holding on the defuse, and it's enough as Hold Alone holds the line. Able to spring into action quick enough right there to get the chop done facilitated off of Brett's crazy play. He starts it off with some madness, just diving down the ladder, gets two kills for his troubles, and Bob's card don't know what hit him right there. That's a crazy play to make this late to a game but when you got nothing to lose when you only got a default pistol to start it off and you're able to get that much output a multi-kill that might just be enough to put boss across the finish line here this round again becomes the all-important one as darty i think now needs to prepare himself a lot more for what these early plays have been towards his direction right been caught off guard a couple of times now much more prepared for these aggressive maneuvers The lack of utility that Wildcard have. They've got three smokes and four flashes total left in their back pocket. So when you think about the, the style that they like to go with, like to play for, it's a lot harder when you're lacking the utility to work with. They're already just about to get caught. Fortunately, walks away with his life. The flashbang catching the tease. Adjustment to A for wild card. And in the meantime, boss are double clearing mid. Will wild card find this timing though? They have maybe a good way to get up towards the A site right now, but as soon as mid's cleared, that's going to start being a lot less the case, especially with this flank. Perfect's going to be able to activate pretty quickly here. There's just some flashes to get them into the site, but there's no smoke. Oh, there's a smoke. They haven't toasted it just yet. Dead. You're just going to be able to punch in the digits, but Cryptic's still so quick on this flank. He's upside hall. They've got to worry about elevator, but there's Cryptic activating. There's the noise being made and a quick trade for Freshie to get in on this retake. Enough distraction from Cryptic to find another kill and a 2v4 to save the day. But Cryptic, another one here doing all the work between this duo Cryptic and Freshie. Just keep on bouncing off each other. And one by one, piece by piece, they pull it back into... A map point, and they'll get three of them at least. Boss have set the win condition here. Wild card. Yeah, a, a bomb plant, but that doesn't matter. Not when you got 3k or less on every single player. I thought the T side had found the way in, but it was a massive mistake. Overzealous in the hunt that put wild card back down and now boss have taken back that position and more. Phone alone's NWP ready to roll. Seems like the pace is gonna stay quick, at least initially for Stanislaw. Gonna walk all the way through a Molotov, even catching a bunch of damage, but nobody close range. Everybody falls back for boss, ensuring that there's no deaths. Oh, that AG. That's gotta be a junkie. AG right there, but they immediately evacuate mid off the back of it. The timing. Oh, Brett. That's one way to clear out middle. <laughs> That'll do the trick right there. And he's gonna look to spray down a couple. He only gets one for his troubles. But it doesn't really help. The positioning's still a bit of a trial right now. Elevated angle here from Cryptic. Takes a lot of damage in the meantime. Finished off. All of a sudden, the kills start to flow. Stanislaw's position known and not enough health to get the job done. Nearly claims Darty Montana. 
Uh, boss bouts back on their map pick, and we are going the distance here in this first series. Yeah, 13-9 on, on the second map. That's bosses, and considering the fact that they really got rolled over in that second half pistol I, I think they did well to keep the mentality strong going back into it not to mention the fact that there was a, a couple of those really potentially devastating turnarounds think about cryptic in that 1v1 um i just mentioned the pistol but even beyond that the b site hits were so incredible off the back of some shots that infinite i mean i usually would say he shouldn't be able to get away with it but he's a guy that does get away with it way too often yeah, and it's good to see. I mean, this this game felt much more nacs -y than the, the last. There, we saw a lot of discipline come through. We still saw a lot of discipline come uh, coming out from the side of uh, boss. But again, in, in the chaos and the, the heat of the moment, there, uh, there there might still be some work that Wildcard needed to patch up on this map to get back to like their full form. But now again, this does deliver what was the most exciting part about this series, and that was the potential of this third map, this Anubis. Two incredibly exciting teams on this map here to have uh, the, the better roster that have been able to do some work in the NA scene. So really looking forward to seeing who's going to come out on top here in this series as Anubis is going to decide that, guys. We'll be back after this short break and seeing who's going to be keeping themselves in that upper bracket.
we got one more map here for our opening matchup between the likes of Wildcard and Boss. And it's been a pretty exciting series so far. It's been a fun series, back and forth. But now we get to finish on Anubis. And this is the map that I was waiting for. I really wanted to see it come through here. Both teams knew that neither were going to ban it. It was gonna, always going to be left to that decider. Now we get to see it in full fruition here to see who's going to be moving on. Yeah, and it kind of feels like we are walking into a, a map that eh, both teams have had some really strong showings on. The first uh, on the first side, you think of Boss, right? They've only lost this map to Liquid and to M80 over the last three months, but Wildcard on a seven-map win streak, and in that win streak, they have beat M80 here. In fact, they have done it twice if i'm not mistaken so it's a question of will boss be able to step up to where wildcard currently sit yeah this is right back where uh, we talk about like stands one of his favorite maps to call on it feels like again the slow and suffocating default style here of the these t-sides that we have uh, gotten out more recently and i will say you know stands ability to kind of adjust that and speed it up as well I feel like are crucial because now you're talking about a, a, a T side that is going to be able to punish any sort of uh, like proactive moves coming through from either one of these, uh, you know, rosters. When we're talking about like this map here, CT side aggression is one of the most important things you can bring to the table. Everyone loves a good wide swing. Everyone loves a good, uh, you know, taking of canals there on the, the CT side to try and establish the map control. It's one of the biggest win conditions. And, uh, well, I tell you what, Stan's going to break that down on his defaults, and, and that's what he does best. That's why M80 have even uh, been challenged by this roster. Yeah, it's kind of funny. You know, when Anubis first came out, everybody was um, kind of talking about it and how it has some similarities to Mirage. It's in that way that it does, which is particularly fitting based on this matchup and what we saw from wildcard on their mirage but i think there's another part of what we saw on mirage that we didn't get to see on vertigo that leading into anubis is a question mark and that is the clutch slight had those incredible 1v2s and 1v3s and then uh, it was jba i think who had like a massive triple kill um from ct spawn in the second half it was those types of rounds that actually we're going boss's way over towards vertigo i i wonder if that type of it factor on towards anubis is going to have any impact and if wild card can make the same sort of plays happen well you know if you win those types of rounds it's always going to be good for you but the consistency with which they were i don't know if that's repeatable yeah, that's an excellent point right because uh boss were winning a couple of those big clutches we talked about like the, the 2v4s that were coming through, uh, Pong Lone having a lot of impact here in some of the earlier rounds, being active with that op, and uh, yeah, 100% agree with you. Uh, even like when we talk about like Cryptic's 1v1 that he was able to get over Slight, that was a massive clutch that, that kept them in winning ways and kept them uh, in a decent spot there in that game, whereas maybe we could have talked about Wildcard taking over and, and closing out from that point. Uh, instead, we get to see this third map, we get to see who's going to come out on top, and I 100% agree with you. I think a large part of this is going to come down to whether or not we see uh, Boss kind of rise up to the level here of wildcard on this map. Uh, I think that, uh, again, you know, off the back of maybe some confidence built in that last, uh, you know, closing out Vertigo, we could see a little bit more confidence, a little bit more spazazz for coming through from uh, this, uh, this Boss side that they were able to deliver. Freshie was a lot more efficient, you know, woke up big time, and so I'm, I'm excited to see this. And and on the wild card side as well, I just want to want to say I want to see more of, of the wild card that we expected. You know, you mentioned it a couple of times, and I would tend to agree. We saw them get away from their their typical play style, and instead m more opt in to what Boss were interested in doing, and it clearly worked pretty well for Boss. Maybe they can change that back up and do more of what they're typically been able to move away with as Darty leads the charge out onto the A site. Got JBA to contend with over on the pillar. JBA is going to stay alive as well. Pone alone trying to train him out, but the cavalry has arrived. There's more in the tank for JBA, who's picked up the triple. Sonic out towards mid with the duelies, and it's a quick end to this first round. The pistol to wildcard. Getting another pistol here is... Uh... Exactly what they needed. They haven't had the best success getting that chaotic, crazy knife clutch from Sonic. And uh, outside of that, not much to hold on to, but closing out a little bit more confidently here. 
a little bit more stable coming through there with four players alive instead of having to win a big 1v3. Boss are going to start this one off with a little bit of a tough time here. So interesting is that we get to see wild cards start off on their defense. And their defensive play, again, can really lean on some coordinated CT side aggression. But I think that's obviously part can of be what, a bit of a challenge. What was so strong on Mirage, wasn't it? That was the, the bread butter, that is for sure. Make themselves a nice little press of the issue here, like we are seeing right now. Even on a full Glock Eco, don't really give them a lot of map control. Play a pretty careful game. You know, you, you have one player kind of checking for some early contact, but once they get that contact, once they get that information, that's where they press on the extremities and, and crunch in on boss. That was 16 total points of damage done in that, in that Eco for boss. And a single kill in the pistol. That's... How dominant these first two rounds have been for wild card. Much thanks to JBA, who's six and zero, but that potentially going to change here and now as we get down to the boss opening salvo. Their T side. That HE off a little bit. We I think going a little bit deeper into the into the steps. Put a chip damage. Good mid control so far. It's good to see. It's freshy again, trying to be aggressive. Right now, he's just left on a bit of an island. At the moment, though, fortunately for me, doesn't have a lot to worry about. Right now, what the main concern is is this B main aggression. Look at that. Triple up, triangulating the proactivity. As we said, it's going to be a big win condition here. It's all about timing this well, and I think they've really nailed the timing. As soon as Brett kind of falls oh, off and covers mid, they are going to be able to flank things out. They know exactly where this play is coming through here. It's either A or in towards middle. It could be a little bit of both right now as they charge on in. Freshy catches one with the utility out. JBA left with only an MP9 on the back of the site. Tries to hold the line, but traded quickly, and they're into the site at least. Well, site needed to come up with something more than nothing there. It's up to Sonic, who's now oh. made footstep. He has an idea, and two players at the same time making the swing. Boss are on the board. It's their first round, and in the gun round, they do the job up against a bonus. Wild card. I don't think they really have the cash to get all rifles, but they do have most of them, including, actually, they picked up two ops. That's insane. I, I do really love the double up here, Cole, but out in the first gun round? Yeah, I mean, I will say sometimes teams leave the double up a little bit too late into their CT side, where they've lost so many rounds already, and they're like, okay, the double up can save us. It can save us. And so they're like, why don't we skip the first step of losing a bunch of gun <laughs> rounds and bring it out early? And I like that. Not a lot of teams think that way. They're prepared for the worst. So Counterpoint. Just win with one up. It's not easy on Anubis, though. It's, a, it's <laughs> a tough, true. man. CT sides can be j tricky if you don't have the skill cannon. Sometimes you just need to zoom in a little bit, you know? That's true. I, I mean, again, it is like classic patchwork for a rough CT side, and I'm not saying Wildcard don't have a good CT side. I'm just saying they might be able to just nullify that potential issue early predict a problem and act accordingly problem solved infinite on the back of the site we saw the b site on vert what he could do inside of numis it's basically the same thing second smoke to start and cut off the back of the platform and oh my goodness how is brett alive what? stand what afk there for a moment Sonic dispatched through the smoke. His infinite swaps oh. over to an empty gun. Slides AWP falls and JBA will be able to deny plants and Hardy. Hardy swinging what? with a reload. What the heck just happened? <laughs> what is this round? 
Oh man, see patchwork right there does the trick. Double up, <laughs> successful, hundred percent success rate. I, I could only say you were correct, and I have nothing to say. <laughs> it worked out perfectly right there. Yeah, I mean, uh, really, so many just bizarre occurrences. Diving through smokes, constant like peeking while with utility out or reloading, and then Stan. I don't know, like Stan must have been gray screened because he was not reacting to the people on the screen at all. So I imagine he was gray screened. That's my best guess. Yeah, Either way, sense. they're gonna have to uh, win with only a single op here. You gotta do it. You gotta do it with the double up towards the middle. This could be a good little defensive setup, and it is really well placed here. Great one-two punch, although they punch back. Rushy and Cryptic able to crack it open here. There's not a lot ready in rotation. One little cutoff though. Freshy and not able to make the great escape. Brett still planting his feet here. Sonic. Oh my god. What? <laughs> Just diving on in. Doesn't have a care in the world. And then Slight catches a back turn. So the single op works out as well. That, that is, in essence, the... Like, what are you doing? <laughs> are we playing a pub? You know? That's exactly what it like had it. to have felt like for we got the we got the double op first gun round picked out. Like, that's a pug move. That's a textbook pug move. Yep. You got... Flying MP9s, wildcard. Again, embracing a little bit of that uh, an ACS more so than I'm honestly used to, but I like it. And sometimes you got you got to meet them where they are, you know. As much as we really enjoyed that Mirage game, Boss found themselves on the winning side, and now wildcard have really stumped them a bit. Go here, where the MP9s can chew things up. Infinite starting the uh, the op double op investment fund right now. <laughs> there you go, off. Ace with the MP9. That, that can certainly encourage it. Come on. Oh Come my on. goodness. You did good. You did good last time. You did get much shots off, but no, that's. I think you might stick round. to the uh, MP9. See if you can get it like a bonus round, like a, yeah. a little late bonus round, and then bam. And why not? They have, like, I mean, they have the money in the back pocket. So, as much as giving up a round's never ideal, sometimes it's worth the risk. And like, Wild Card feeling the consistency of those P nines as well at the back of the last two. Attack time out for Boss. Didn't pull him out when it came to Mirage, but Vertigo they had some good adjustments off of the back of it. I think this is exactly when you need to take that moment and think it through because we're halfway through the first of these two halves. Absolutely. Start landing those punches. I mean, on the T side as well, again. You want to have some foundation on your T side. You're on Anubis. That is, of course, what all teams are looking for. Not sure who won the knife round, but most teams these days they usually have been starting CT. Side. Really? I've seen quite a few teams start at CT. I just got back from South America and we were picking T side on Nuke, so Oh well. Okay, I then. might be out of the loop a little bit. <laughs> but either way, <laughs> Brett. Just able to crack it open on and punish some of that mid walk up right there. Again, you it with these MP9s you want to get as far forward as you can. Close that distance up against the AKs. angle how does he win that second duel right there infinite long range helped out by jba again the man advantage does not get maintained here no way you want to dive through the smoke that'd be just such insane plays and it works out what on earth again stan a little bit asleep at the wheel not expecting that sort of madness and an op can only chamber in one shot at a time here quick kill needs a second here pwn around the corner he's trying to find time for his teammate to help out the sidearm is whipped out there in slight <laughs> Whatever tool you give him, he's able to disrupt. It's just Brett left onto this flank. And 25 seconds just about hit right here. As he walks on in and trying to clearing out where exactly these players are. He's going to reveal himself. Bomb recovered, but he doesn't realize that Slide is already repositioned. He's flanking through Dimple. He's coming through exactly where Brett has just come through from. The I numbers are punched in. Slight might not end up in the best spot, though. Brett playing around the smoke and 
as it fades. That's when the problem will arise. He's got JBA on the other side, and that's another issue. They have the time. They'll take the freebie on his slight. The JBA, strong as ever, will hold for the defuse. And that really should have been an easier round for Wildcard, but like you said, it made us leave at the wheels. Janislaw didn't quite get what he had required. The timing wasn't on his side, but can we go talk about Infinite for a second? He's 10 and 3, and he just walks away. Like, that is a play that I used to watch Fur make, you know? Yeah. Uh, just getting away with so much. I mean, with an MP9, you, you think a one and done is good enough, right? So, yeah, you, you did the best you could. But then to walk away with two kills and get away with your life, it's so impressive. And, and you know, credit again to JBA who also helped out in that exchange. It was a nice little push and pull of contact, but it is hard to hold your nerve in positions like that when you know that you're at a steep disadvantage in the rifle uh, or the, the firepower department. And. And Infinite just shows no signs of struggle here. And instead of buying the double off, he spreads the wealth and, and tosses all that money he's been farming up into guns for his teammates. Kind man. Six to one. Wild card on the force buy. I mean, you call it a force is maybe a bit disrespectful. It's a pretty full purchase. It had the utility. I had to buy a couple of Galils and a Mac 10. We're gonna send it out B. Have the flashes. Sonic unaffected inside the box. And it's law. How's he doing it? They need to breach the smoke, and suddenly it's a four on three with slight in position. Slight that shot goes just whizzing by the head of the planter. Three on four. Holding so steady on the site proper right now. Getting forced out, but Sonic's low. He can't offer up much of a fight here. Cryptic buying time, but eventually wall banged. Out of the server. Smoke for the bomb. Tossed on. They have to get the defuse though. And there's two AKs that are gonna start firing down range. As soon as that bomb gets tapped, they get one kill. They get the second. And why not make it a third here? Sonic gonna go for the stick inside the smoke with the Glock will finish. It's Carnage in the server. But it's Boss getting their second round and finding their footing here with a big, quick play on that B site. That's a moment where Wildcard do all the right things. They check all the boxes, Cole. They make the decisions, but they didn't have the utility to start clearing out those Boss players from B main. And the reality was is that I think it was Sonic who was already really low. He didn't have the health to work with. That money starting to run out. Infinite back on the trusty MP9, and he's got Sonic and Stanislaw with him. A little flash of aggression there from JBA. Loves a good bit of activity on the A side. That smoke, oh boy. Gonna keep him just about away. Interesting cryptic. Just opted out of that. Ooh, slight. He's right around the corner, slight. Gotta get your gun out, my friend. There you go. But he's so fortunate that he didn't get taken down right there. So many different opportunities. But narrowly missed. The back and forth of utility, the Molotovs exchanged. Handshakes. They're so often the case here towards Evox. Cryptic. And met by another smoke as he tries to work the magic here on the map control. In the meantime, the op is covering. Slight has a great line of sight. If you want to try and take this camera control, you're going to have to do it by force. There's a whole stack on this A site that you have to crack through. Stan. Holding the line with the MP9 again, long range. But op shot's not connecting for Slight. Just damage is being done and... As they spam down through the smoke here, Infinite and Slight have to make a take happen. Down a man, smoked out of the round. For a moment, we are Slight making some big misses. 
He's been, a, he's been incredible, but 1v3 into two players at the same time with the MP9 just isn't going to happen very often. And wild card. A lot of pressure on Slate that round, and he couldn't deliver. Finally put down into an eco as boss. Starting the road to recovery. In fact, they've already started it. I'd say they're on the way there. Pone alone, an AWP of his own. A rare sight to behold. And into five USPs. Smoke and two flashes. That's it. The mid stack. Got ourselves a nice little mid stack. I like these sort of plays here. A little late flash aggressions, but Cryptic's uh, saying, hey guys, I want to check behind you. So, east with the. Mac tin, not really a feast, more like a kind of, kind of plucking the peas with your fork there as much as possible. Trying to get the, the leftover scraps and you just get taken down. Sonic's gonna love to hang on to this AK. He's headed towards the A site where the save will occur. And the Mac 10, on the other hand, Stanislaw might try and hang on to that too, but be more yeah, interested Molly. in grabbing something. Yeah, he does have a molly, right? It's an expensive it's, bit of utility. Sometimes it's like $600 sounds pretty good, too. That's a big F, you know, Stan. There's like a little bit of a careful play. He likes to err on the side of caution. They've already built up a, a pretty good CT side, I will say. You know, cutting it even at six wouldn't be the end of the world for wildcard. Just want to figure out a way to close out an extra round here or there. And uh, stop the momentum of boss heading into the second half. And I'd, if they can I'd call so. it a successful eco as well, considering they had USPs. To pick up two, save an AK, and pick up that extra bit of utility. Wild guard will take their first tactical. So, not going to have the money for the uh, double AWP by the look of things. Unless it's already dropped on the ground somewhere. No. So, plan A, not going to happen. That's why they're talking about plan B and C. And you talked to it as well early into this game about the, uh, the CT side aggression. We've seen quite a bit of it, but that's been felled for the most part by boss in these last few rounds. I'd love to see him try and go back to that B main take or something. Yeah, maybe speed it up a little bit here. Boss have found some formula for success. Might be prepared for a faster B approach. They've started their op covering for the most part this control taken here by Boss. And we might get an op head to head right now. One alone V slight. He comes through and slight. Oh, he's ready for that. So ready and gets a second as well. Brett tries to follow up, but no dice there. Oh my God, the cryptic has something for us. So again, doesn't linger for too long here. JBA playing it with an off angle. Timing works well on the darty. Deals with the lurk. Freshy just left scratching his head. Looking to kick the can down the road here towards middle. Give this one a try. I think he has money to buy in this last round coming up in the next. So it's going to be an effort on this clutch. He's spotted. That does complicate things. Though having the bomb in his back pocket does help out. If he can just isolate one or two duels, then we're talking a real chance. And JBA isn't even on the A site. So... While Stan will definitely see the cross, there's a real world to get a plant here. Not that they need that too hard. There's some players with lacking weaponry. Slight will shut it down his third of the round. Big credit where it's due. I, I think that Wildcard in this map in particular has sort of lived and died by some of these big plays, right? Talking Infinite, talking JBA, and then Slight as well. Pone alone hasn't had much of a chance to have impact. 
I've not been in positions to find success. It's mostly there for boss. Right back to the Mac 10, and they're all headed towards A. Boss have really not done any quick executes outside of that one B hit. And the final round of the half, they want to come back and try it once more. Speeding it up here. I haven't seen a fast A approach like this at all in this half. And finally getting it late through the round. Cryptic, he doesn't realize he's toast. Burns into the Maldi right there. It does go down, but it's still a 4v4. They've got the whole squad ready to retake, though. On the side of Wildcard. Another kill comes through JBA. Continuing to apply pressure. Another headshot out of JBA. He really puts this round to rest. And Wildcard close out the half with eight rounds and some excitement heading into the break. One more half here. Wild card, a dream scenario to try and finish the job on the T side of Anubis after looking so good in that first half. We'll see if they can complete the mission in a third map here, or if boss have a little bit more to fight for right now. Pwn alone. Dooley's long range is not something you'd expect. But if they get a little bit closer, you can maybe do a lot more work here. Freshy, meanwhile, he's got that close range angle. He can do a whole lot right now. be massive to see Freshy kind of step into the position that we were seeing him take on Vertigo. 
And he's gonna get the chance to do so, at least by the look of things. Off Sonic to continue with to begin. Flashes in. And he can just, just get the first, continuing to push that button. It's infinite. And JBA on the response. We cut it to three. An even scenario. JBA down a little bit lower as Wild Card get back into things. Cryptic on the quicker rotation to back up the B site where Wild Card looked to put the presence once again. Well, the timing. Cryptic nearly found a free shot. There's still 40 seconds remaining, but Wild Card are committed to this thing. Cryptic edging around the pillar. See the first misses the mark is infinite. It's now last clutch. See if you can bring home a big 1v2. Play behind the pillar, Brett. Oh, spotted, he thinks he's hidden, but the slow crawl out from Infinite comes through and a wide swing. Darty prepared for it. Is going to keep it at bay. And Boss, crucial pistol round for them to kind of get their heads back into this one. As they slow down the roll here from Wild Card. Winning pistol rounds is something that Boss is... Starting to improve on in the back half of this series, but look who has the hero rifle. It's JBA. And this is another thing that, honestly, you don't see that much of in, like, a lot of NA teams. I feel like it's far more rare than you see in literally everywhere else, because it happens in South America and in Europe. And if I'm being honest, I have no idea what happens in Asia. They like hero rifles too, but little I've seen. You got a. I've watched a couple devastating complexity rounds to the Mongols. It's true. With, uh, hero rifles, but the uh, rifle already sings, it cracks. And even another one recovered off the back of it. So Sonic, they snuck his way into a cheeky. The moss pick up there. But what they are going to walk into is a heavy stack. So even despite this being a 4v4, boss have the perfect read. You gotta be careful. Backs are turned darty. Big time here stepping up to the plate. JBA still able to strike. This is what you want. Three kills out of the hero rifle. And inspiring a little bit of hope right now in the squad. Can he find two more? To make this an ace clutch to complete the trust that Infinite has placed into him here. Bomb recovered and giving him a lot of space. Even if he plants the bomb here, that'll give them some big victories. He's going to just tap it. Hope to bait out a peek. Infinite pressure rather so just chasing him down. Hunting down that kill and he will find it. Freshy, just some outrageous confidence on that. Didn't even wait for his teammate to be swinging back in there either. He was on the way, but it'll be Stanislaw, the one down and out because of that hero rifle. But you want to give it to this big three. And I think that's the, the big story of the first half for wildcard is infinite JBA and slight and how impressive they were, particularly infinite and JBA. For the reasons we just watched as they get down to the first of their T side rounds. I'm excited to see how they approach the Steve Hall. And with that early smoke out mid from the CTs, but as that fades, we're gonna find that nobody's home. But that doesn't mean Wildcard aren't committing the utility to clear out angles towards Double Door. As they do so, same is true out towards the A site. Investments have been made in Wildcard up against. Mostly not a bonus, but a little bit. Perfect. Get the aggro here, but committed. And well, Infinite doesn't want to stick too, too long either. A handshake. So you know what? Let's keep this 5v5. Let's keep this civil. Right now. Uh, no one really too aggressive right now. Instead, we're going to lean in towards this B-side as the big game plan, the big finish. Finale here for Wild Card is what it seems. Everyone leaning in on this side of the map here. Brett going to have to do most of the heavy lifting. This back angle, especially when Pwn immediately gets leveled out, but the lineup is looking too good for Brett. 
as he takes care of two quick kills. Sonic running into the site, looking for a trade back here. Cryptic being elusive, making sure he can buy even more time right now. Brett, another kill out of his rifle, but overwhelmed eventually. HP is so low for JBA as Darty makes his way up through E-Box. Won't be able to deny the plant, looks for it, makes some footsteps in the meantime. His wild card an early warning system of his position. Got Freshy coming from long. He's already started to get an idea. He spotted JPA. And he'll go down. One more man in the back of the site. And Freshy cuts him both two ribbons. You know, Freshy talking about him a lot, you know, about the potential step up, looking back to Vertigo and where he was. That's a couple of massive frags from him in two rounds in a row. It is. Boss. One thing's back. I'll tell you what. Stakes have just gotten a whole lot bigger. Right now, Liquid have just been sent to the lower bracket. Wow. So, guess what you have to face if you lose this oh third boy. map. You get to face Liquid in the lower bracket in an elimination match. Don't get me wrong. Liquid, they clearly bleed as they have already in this event so far, but... Not who you want to play when your tournament qualification is on the line. Or your life is on the line. Not even the qualification. Either way. It's going to be through the flames, through the mollies, and infinite. Already extinguished here. It's cryptic. Just lining up some beautiful shots. Darty has a whole lot more as well, doing what he does best in locking down the bomb site. It's like, hello. We'll get away with one. Hey, there's an open A bomb site. Or B, rather. Go ahead and bring that bomb on over. See if you can't punch in the digits here. They're hot on your heels. And HG he will give them some distance. And start a plant. Get some extra cash flow going for your squad. It can't it's hurt. It. Yeah, it does go <laughs> the way we expected. Hunted for sport. And we'll tie things up. The bosses are back. Uh, well, not to undersell that, that bomb plan. I mean, that means plenty of extra cash. Slay has so much money for an op if he wants it. And even has the full kit of utility behind it as well. And, yeah, not that you want not that you want to uh, to face up against Nouns, you know? Strong team, no matter what. But I will say, if you're in the server with Liquid, that, that does feel like a different ring. You know? I mean, so far we saw the South American uh, close qualifiers, Furia, get upset. They're not making it to Dallas. And now Liquid are in the lower bracket. And there are question marks on their, you know, qualifications. What are they going to bring? It actually just gets a whole lot more intense. The potential of this matchup. Right now... Again, Wild Card looking for their grip on things here. Cryptic just sees a little glimmer of infinite. And that's all it takes. Expect a pixel. It's put down. Wild Card now need a response. And they're so spread out across the map at the moment that it's hard to put one together. Sonic is on a bit of an island here. He's creeped in, but Cryptic's going to re-clear. Has party in response. A second kill is required, and Sonic is delivering. We'll get the smoke off towards screens, but Freshy comes back and cuts it to three with Wildcard. Getting back into position. Sonic doing the damage. It's a bomb. We'll stick it together. For the most part, actually, Wildcard still split. There's JBA. Broken down. And now it's Slight and Stan. Slay has the rotations cut off. Look at that. One quick kill. And then he immediately repositions to be even further part of this retake. Although I think Stan has been spotted here getting into this cubby. Or maybe not. It doesn't matter. Pwn is quick enough. On the draw. A full stick on the defuse. Slight's going to have to peek into the op. And that's going to go just about as you'd expect. Boss pull five rounds back to back. To take the lead here on Anubis. Their defense has been near flawless. 
They haven't struggled whatsoever. Sonic finally gives them a little bit of hope right there. That double up, but still, it's not enough. And the the late round, the late and mid round calls at the moment for wild card, I think lacking the the surety that we saw back, like on Mirage, for example, there is just a, a second or two longer. And then in addition to that, thinking about Slight and how disconnected he was from that play. Needed to have him there. Needed to have someone there. Has been disrupted. They haven't been able to fully crack through here in some of these mid rounds. It's not been the same wild card. Suffocating style. It's being snuffed out. As we said, there needs to be a level up coming through here from... Here's like Cryptic. Try and complete the mission well. Stan's looking for a level up of his own. Nice entry coming through towards the E-Box. Perfect things open, but no one's checked for Cryptic! He's playing so sneaky! And collects two kills. It completely shuts down this Execute. They're, they're disrupted by this min Molotov, but finally Infinite able to imply some aggression there, but only good for one. And the bomb's been denied here. Cryptic still being able to be a thorn in the side and finishes the round with four kills, giving boss double digits. Cryptic's just chilling in the corner, and they have no idea because there's another player committed to the site through that smoke. And normally you'd you'd expect, I mean, the expectation from Wildcard was that Cryptic had fallen back. Why be so aggressive in a two-on-two? -two? Well. He was just chilling back sight, waiting for the smoke to clear, and as it does, the bomb planter denied wild card. Now they're in big trouble. Boss have used another tack timeout, their final one. Why the heck not? They found themselves a position to work from that's more that's really found its effectiveness. It's a half buy. Pistols, armor, wild card will get whatever they can to allow for one final gun round. Let's they can pull something off on the eco. Uh, make some sort of magic happen here. We're getting a bit more of an off spawn call. Maybe a B execute here, but they've thrown a little bit of their utility already and aren't in a position to strike just yet. Got another smoke down. That's going to land in the middle of E-Box here to take some space. And look at the flashes ready to rain on into this site. Sonic drawing in attention as the flashes will rain. But no one is pushing again. The utility just threatening. There's no real... There's no real bark to this just yet. Or actually, there's just bark. There's no bite there. They haven't pushed forward with anyone. And they've already lost their mid lurk. They're, the re -hit. They're, they're giving the sight over though, boss. Honestly, though, at this point, they're going to have guns regardless. I think it makes sense. Use the range that you have at your disposal and make it harder for the Tech 9s to close distance. Denial oh of the plant. And it comes through. Brett tapping away. Slight's going to try once again in the flash. But they still get the bomb down. It's JBA alone. And he's fallen as well. Wild card lucky to get a bomb plant out of that one and only losing one for boss Seemed a little bit questionable at first maybe to, to back out of that, but man did it work out Yeah, it did it looked beautiful. They clearly came through the game plan. They didn't give enough space to Make it too concerning, but honestly, I feel like sometimes when you watch these rounds It's like the, the only way you can lose in these man advantage situations is if you do play a little bit too cautious you want to obviously again keep your distance up against those tech nines but they did kind of inch their way back into that site and then again good game plan to close and his boss just gonna sweep the second half is this what we're seeing right now my spring is good darty let's pop some shots off but again these flashes are not met with aggression it's just a little threat of the possibility and that's a shock so you want to, uh, uh, every little advantage, you know, if you got those flashes, if you want to use two flashbangs, why don't you peek with them? Give a little bit of oomph I mean, to it, but they don't really go for these aggressive moves. 
mean, he's feeling the same with the, the utility in Molotov. Out towards B. Brett. Dan's tall, and he's got them both up through E-Box. His pawn alone. Pop one down. Blind he may be, but shots connect. It's slight alone. And wild card. Down, but not quite out, but close to it. Yeah, I mean, it just doesn't feel like they're going to get around on this T side. Another lockdown defense. Brett showing up in a big way here. Pone alone. Giving us what we know and love him for here. A slight. Going to walk away with a couple of cosmetic kills. I say cosmetic here because it's just good looking for the KD. But, uh, yeah, he's going to save. Reality is boss could afford to throw even more bodies at this if they really wanted to, but it's Not gonna be something they're interested in. They'll let the time expire We'll also ensure that It's like not gonna get any additional cash flow going not that he wants it that AWP well worth his while And with the bomb plant coming through on that uh Half by just two rounds ago, they'll uh, be able to still get a good gun round in. But this is now eight in a row here for the likes of boss. And, and what's to say that they aren't going to find nine? Who, who's to say? Maybe a little bit of pressure now that they're finally at that point. But uh, I don't know if anything is going to slow this squad down. They just continue to stampede their way forward. Wild card, they just might walk into that departing gift from Downs. Liquid waiting in that lower bracket for them. Terrifying prospect here, but we'll see if there's any resistance here coming through for the rest of Wildcard. What could be our last round. Need to see some intention behind some of this utility. Wildcard, they, they have all the they have all the needs set, but like you were talking about, often the follow-up is lackluster. There's time for boss to adjust back as they fade away. See mid become a more important point of contention in this round than it has been in the previous few. Wildcard needed to charge here initially, where they found some difficulties. Cryptic is hiding away, and nobody's oh looking his way. God. It's double for Cryptic, and he's come back with a vengeance. Yeah, we asked if he could level up his game. He has answered our question here. He certainly has. Now, Pone alone, easy op shots for him. And not giving Slight the repeat, actually will. Oh, the line! Oh my god, just a thread right there. And it is closed out confidently. Boss, dominate. And the second half with a sweep. And they do not struggle. They do not falter in these rounds at all. They show up every step of the way. And they're able to finish the job here. An exciting prospect for this team. And, and you know, there was so many individual players that we felt they needed to talk about for wildcard coming into the, like the first or from the first half into the second and the question was okay so now what if your boss going down eight to four on the half and everything like that and the answer is everyone everyone was the answer pone alone had the rounds cryptic especially we saw brett really shine there was so many moments and i think that when everyone is connecting just like they were at the end there for boss that's where you really are in stop yeah, yeah, no question about it there. Again, credit where it's due there. Boss in that second half, uh, a confidence being shown there. A lot of individuals showing up there. No struggles uh, to hold down the line there against what was, uh, again, Stan is a little, one of his best maps to call on them. That T side usually comes through with the most efficiency, the, the most power there, but instead uh, shut down. So, again, we're, we're going to see uh, a kind of a interesting exciting match between uh this the likes of nouns and, and boss which i really like to see that these two teams battle it out uh, obviously boss coming through um with a big victory but nouns closing out versus liquid the the biggest shock of the day there for sure wasn't sure if that was going to be a three map series um but but obviously again nouns are, are really stepping up to the plate here taking down uh the like the liquid who in that third map, the, the scoreline was dominant. I think it was like 13 to 4, 13 to 5. So, wow. I mean, that, that's terrifying. I mean, now it's giving themselves the best opportunity that they could to kind of run through this qualifier. But I think with regard to wildcard, now they have the worst possibilities of trying to make it through. They not only have to play up against Team Liquid, let's just say they come away with it. Then you got Boss to play again or Nouns in the lower finals if they somehow can win against Liquid. 
man, it's, you feel for them a little bit, especially with how good a game they played on on Mirage and what they looked like on Vertigo, how put together they were. It's crazy that Anubis fell away from them in such a way. Yeah, I know. Uh, I mean, again, kind of a shock for me. I expected with that foundation that they built in that first half that they would be able to deliver in the second, but uh, not meant to be here for the squad. And again, you know, watching uh, watching Boss close out makes me proud of, of, of Cryptic, who's been uh, doing really good work in this squad. I mean, uh, as I've said before, I'm really excited to see uh, this guy continue to rise. Again, played uh, played with me in, in Season 38 of Open. And uh, we dominated there, and then now he's uh, on to even bigger and better, better things. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's very exciting to, to see how much uh, work this guy does consistently uh, for a squad. And I feel like uh, people people are going to start talking to about him if he keeps this up. He's definitely got a tough challenge at hand here, taking on nouns. Uh, but I believe for us, we are going to be sticking on into that lower bracket. So we might actually have a pretty exciting matchup. That that lower bracket matchup will stick with uh, Wild Card and Liquid. So. Uh, if you guys want to catch that, make sure you stay tuned because we'll be tossing it to a quick break. And once we come back, that next best of three for you all.
six seven years ago we had as many people watching the streams as we have right now inside the stadium a dream for every gamer in the world to come here and play in front of you the atmosphere is electric one of those goosebump moments the nerd chills were definitely out in full force this is a moment that every player every caster every fan dreams of to make the recovery. What on earth is going on? He needs to make another building. Oh my God, Holt! He had the money to make another building. He absolutely played his heart out. You can see how drained he was. We know absolutely what he can do, but I think all of us had no idea that he could win that fourth match. Who's going home with nothing? And who's going home with $100,000? The champion of the Intel Extreme Masters World Championship is SOS! A gigantic stadium full of people just to watch League of Legends. They made history here last year, and they're back this year, and they want to win it all. Good timbers from Edwards. Diamond comes around the backside. Requiem going to come out there. Side boat only landing on Edwards. Little rotation coming out for Cloud9 with that inner turret going as well. In fact, he's going to dive in there on towards Dinter, and that is the kill. He picks up oh. that hook, but it's going to go down. Piercing arrow goes through two of them. I don't know if you guys can feel it at home, but I think you can. The crowd is absolutely amazing because today we have the finals of our League of Legends tournament. They didn't drop a single game the entire tournament. The KT Bullets for the Intel Extreme. Katowice, you are amazing. This on the final day promises to be nothing short of spectacular. Burst Pro, they had to qualify for this tournament and they make it here to the grand final against NIP, some Swedish legend. What's next? He's walking around and just walking in a stack to the land. He oh. gets it down Hey Future Pros, I have a really cool nade set you can throw to help you advance onto the A side on Vertigo. 
you will need a smoke, molly and a flash for this one. For the left sight smoke, get into this corner of the sandbags. Aim at this point on the scaffolding. Then jump to the smoke. For the short molly, look to the corner of the black rectangle. Crouch down and jump through the molly. Finally, a flash to help your teammates take short. Aim along this line just below this horizontal section. Run forward and jump through the flash. A very nifty nade set here, and a fairly simple one on top of that. Hoping that we live long enough to say we fly Crushing all the walls if the what is wrong behind Going God is it chosen Let's And now Tap is nipping at the heels, trying to get in behind the flash, the so good for Santara, three kills from Tapson, he goes back in for a 4k, and Tapson finds them all. But with the USP, 10 seconds, oh my god, they just have to kill him, they oh, oh, no, I truly don't believe it! Right now, as Sicko, he's been sick so far, and this oh. is once again. He's gone sicko mode with a double kill. Device could looking to come up clutch here. And Mac is the first, a second as well. Just the third is all on to Hachi now. Slow clear. Device isn't anticipating this oh. just in time. NIP given a gift. He's perfecto all on his shoulders. And just too many men. He's the first cleanly hard. Next is his next victim, and oh dear, perfecto. Stepping well above the expectations. Amanek loud about this. Stampeding in. And the spray is there. One versus three. And that's what he needs. That's what he needs from the players around him there. Perfecto stepping up in a big way.
one, two, and three counts up for us. Bubski partnered up nicely with Magisk, and the frags come easy again. Dastardly Dane in pit. Maybe there's some more to be said. Oh, and with the USP as their favorite weapon, it seems simple. I've seen this before. A 1p2 as he plants with low HP. I don't think Zipex is going to allow it. Bullets are in. He's found himself a weapon. He knows where they both are. He really yeah. knocks the head off of the shoulders of Zipex. Mantles up. Oh my That's god! Clutch. Simple. Simple is still alive, but the trades should just come in, right? It is simple. Oh, getting one. He doesn't know where the second player is. Vitality are doing a good job of wasting time. And yet still, Simple comes in. Both the kills found. Simple, 1v3 in the bomb ticking. This is his environment. This is his dream. Looking for another chance. He just doesn't miss. Amanek through the doors. Closing the gap is next up. Dancing with him, and it just looks so good. towards the B side. Obski's not going to get checked, and he's going to get two before Simple connects. Simple rock hard place. Great shot. Just magic. Just the tip of his head. He pre it out. Simple's doing it all. Some great shots to start him off. Oh, he's such a nerd. Simple with four, looking for an ace clutch. And Simple collects. Magnificent play from the world's best. Nice! nice. Simple to break the record. No one has found four aces at a tournament like this. And here it comes, a record breaker from Simple. He takes all five. Popsky, he's not going to recover that second kill. Rez will trade, but Grim still stands in oh, oh, the oh, 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 oh my god! He's willing to oh. risk it all on this deep angle and it's given that first kill over so now someone else has got to make up for this matches can do pre might just be those men as they come in with a few kills to please oh. twist takes matters into his own hands and suddenly face clan might be on their way to their first and only t-side round
SL1 Cologne. The trophy sits in the center of the Lanxess Arena. 15,000 esports fans gather to witness Counter Strike history being written. Than it's, more, it's not just a competition, it's, it's the competition. This right now in the Spodek Arena is a moment that not just me, every player, every caster waits for the entire season long. rooms, over 50 cameras installed, 15 kilometers of fiber to connect all different venues together. It was quite a challenge. Really focused on trying to create a platform so that gaming professionals can come and compete and drive that excitement, the enthusiasm, the energy, and just provide the best experience for the competitors and for the fans around the world. 
Katowice, for me, and not just me, but the StarCraft scene is a very special tournament for us. It's the Intellectual Masters World Championship. We always look forward to it. With six Korean names on the trophy, two European players set their sights on stopping number seven from happening as thousands of gaming fans looked on. A historic feat was not on the cards for hometown favorite Nurcio, as he could not get past Polt, the world's fourth highest earner in StarCraft. The Norwegian snoot would have to play out of his skin to overcome Hydra, one of the best players of 2015. Look at how many upgraded units here snoot has. He's going to push the issue now. And the Oculus are just not enough and number here from Hydra. Snoot is going to take game number three here. To the surprise of many, the Team Liquid player delivered the performance to put himself a step away from something historic. And in the way was Polt with plans of his own. In the end, it was not meant to be. Yeah, he's going to try to move forward. The Miles do hit the army, but the Broodlords are being taken down by the Liberators and the Vikings. Pressing forward, there are four Broodlords left, just three now, and the army continues to advance. Snoot's forces are crumbling. Polt was in a league of his own the whole week and with a 4-2 score in the final, rightfully earned his place in Intel Extreme Masters history. Let's meet some fans, yay! Katowice for me is a congregation of people that share exactly what I love and there's 11,000 of them and that's what makes this place so special for me. So apparently one of the caches is feeling a little sick so we're going to go up there and help him out, alright? Follow me. Having impressed on day one, a dominant SK Telecom T1 took to the stage. With grim determination, Team Solo Mid prepared for their toughest challenge yet. Away just about in time. Can he get another step? No, he can't. But the rest of the TSM nice are now kick. here. Wow, yeah. Spence going with a great kick, but the question is, have they got the damage follow-up? Double left arrives, tries to catch on towards flank. He manages to kite the damage beautifully, and Faker arrives. SK Telecom T1 were frighteningly efficient. The doubters had been silenced, and the North Americans had been sent home. Royal Never Give Up had breezed through the group stages earlier, but Fnatic, the final hope of Europe, stood in their way. But now from even coming forward, Marta Falls, Woosh might not be far behind as well. Giant growth was With the crowd behind them, Fnatic broke RNG in the third game to cement their place in the finals. Fnatic would come out swinging, but SKT seemed ready for anything. Anyway, round this one, can they get themselves a kill? There's going to be one. Reckless goes down, the second is for Vivid. And now Bang continues on three. Oh, Such a gentlemen. Turn. Well, there you wow. have it. The Intel Extreme Masters World Champions are going to be SK Telecom. T1, a dominant, dominant 3-0 performance. I mean, especially just the way when you first stand on the stairs, you kind of just get a glimpse and everything seems so far away. All the fans seem so far away. Uh, and then as soon as you walk down to the stairs, it just opens up, the lights are on. Uh, and it really gives you a new feeling about how big it really is. I mean, I'm sure like the fans feel it in a different way because they're sitting looking at the stage. But to stand in the middle of it all and to see everyone and all the lights and all the players, uh, it's, it's breathtaking really. It's a special event. It's really a special event. It doesn't matter what prize money it is. It matters that it's the audience, this atmosphere, this venue, this feeling, this rush that they have from playing. Years of tradition rekindled. It was the return of Counter-Strike to the Intel Extreme Masters stage, with double champions Navi facing Luminosity in the semi-final. Okay, tags up. One. He's going to get... Oh, fallen! Stop blowing my mind! 
After what was one of the best CSGO matches ever seen, the Brazilians came out on top. On the other side of the bracket, Fnatic fought to have their name carved into the trophy once again. Astralis, however, would not go out without a fight. Because oh, he can't commit too much. There oh, he goes. God. He gets the first one. Now he has to plant this bomb here. Actually, he pulls the fake. The mind gets oh. it. He wins it. A grueling three maps put the Swedes in the final against Luminosity. If the Brazilians wanted to prove themselves, they could not have found a better opponent in Fnatic. They put in a very strong performance, and somehow they were still outdone by the indomitable Swedes. Fnatic's in the pit. He's going to get the one kill in that bomb. He can't be blinded this time. And Fnatic has to stay alive. Oh, he gets the triple at Fnatic. Oh, my God. What a way to win that round. This miles away from this action. They don't have a smoke, so this orb is still... Oh! After a six-year wait, Fnatic reclaimed the Intel Extreme Masters Trophy. And I, t I tell you partly why I'm tired. Partly because you, when you do this job, you feed off the emotion that's in the room. Yeah. And that last match, there was a lot of emotion going on. I mean, fair enough. VP got schooled. I mean, it was, you could tell that they just didn't want to play at the end. And now there's that emotional lull with the audience. You sort of get dragged along with it. Hey Future Pros, mid control on Anubis can open many avenues. Let's look at a utility set you can throw to help take that space. You will need a smoke, molly, HE and a flash for this one. To throw the smoke, position yourself aligned with this wall. Aim at this point where the bricks intersect. Hold mouse 1 and mouse 2 then jump for the smoke. This will smoke off mid. For your molly, head over to the right side of these boxes. Just make sure you aren't exposed. Aim at this corner of the right window thing. Then throw the molly. This will land outside of the doors and flush a CT out or back depending on their motive. You can give mid a quick jiggle and get this HE out too, as there is a chance the molly doesn't spread fully, leaving a gap close to mid. Finally, you can throw a flash off the tower to blind anyone who might have snuck out in front of your util. Use it as a bit of a fake or play behind it. The choice is yours.
Hey future pros, I have a classic Mirage smoke for you today, and that is the mid-window smoke from T-Spawn. If you're feeling a bit too lazy to learn all the spawn smokes, or you want to smoke mid in the mid round, this should help you out. To throw the smoke, get into the corner of the bin. Aim at this point about 75% to the right of the door, then just below the middle point between the door and the roof. Then hold D to walk into the bin and jump throw. Just like that, mid should be smoked off. I see a lot of missed smokes for window, so don't be one of those people. Be one of the good ones. Hey future pros, rushing B is never the wrong move. Well, maybe it is sometimes. Anyway, here's a long smoke you can throw from spawn that would help with those B rushes. To throw the smoke, line yourself up with this brick. Aim at the top corner of this brick, then walk forward and jump throw the smoke. This smoke will land as your teammates would arrive, so it can be a great addition to a Hail Mary B rush. Rush on future pros. We are back! Three years since we're here in this, what I think is the beating heart of all esports. And man, what name is going to be scratched on this by the time we get to Sunday? Well, that journey, my friends, starts now. And James just looks for oh. in the quick scope into Hunter. A frag under the feet of Nico Modesty, close proximity, but it's ended. 2v5 between Alexi and Modesty. Alexi alleviates a little bit of pressure from G2. The two versus five turned into the 2v2. Yes. No way! It's the only flip left over. Oh, what? That is ridiculous! It's G2 just going to the fight. They're going to end it here and now. And G2 in Katowice defeat VP. Everyone has been waiting for today from quarantine to quarterfinals. It's FaZe Clan taking on Gambit. The shot, Robs has found two. This is a one on four. Oh no! And Robs might just knock them all down. A 1v4, the Robs is looking to get over the line to take this map away from Gambit. Axel up through the window. Robs has heard something. Robs knows. Oh, there's the closer! Robs, what a way to knock in those two! Robs ain't playing around! This is very slow. This is very labored. This is wasting a lot of time. And Brokey's on for the ace. Four out of five, eight, bad. But there's the fifth. And they go hunting. They look to send a message. Everybody falls. Gambit, their journey ends here. But this phase squad, oh, it's just beginning. It's been three years and we are back. Simple is synonymous with Spodek, but today he goes against a young talent that could shut him down. Here we go, Simple. Run boost. Oh, oh baby, he wants to get aggressive. He's got it. Absolutely what you'd expect to see from Simple on this stage. 
This is still dangerous. This is Navi again going toward a stack, and it's been completely removed. Absolutely obliterated. How much does Modesty want to dedicate his life to this bomb site? On Catwalk, finds the timing. Eight seconds. If he can drop the bomb, it'd be everything. But it travels into the site. One on two for Modesty now. It's sacrificial. Gives his position away. He wants Modesty's end goal. One versus two. Big man's got moves. Boomich has clutched one back already in this game. Starts it off well. He goes the one that killed Simple. Surely he has to be aware that he was up toward the oh. position, and he certainly is. Calm, composed, and Boomich will make it 12 12. Nico has to reload. Simple's got an AK pick. No! It's the headshot instead. And Navi removed, erased, and it's G2 0 as they'll find their way toward the final. Today, we'll be sending one of these teams to the Grand Finals. Whether you're a FaZe fan, a Heroic fan, we're all fans of the beautiful game that is Counter-Strike. He's already on the scene. This guy doesn't like to hang around. He wants to play into it here and now. And there's the first. Oh, swinging out. He's seen another. Brokey. This isn't even a clutch, but he's doing it all alone. Incredible. Brokey needs to capitalize. He needs them all. And they're collapsing upon him. They don't clear the corner. He lines up a double. Oh! Ben Five. This might be the end of the Danes on the big stage. Another clutch to close it. And this time, it sends them to the grand finals. We bring out two teams. Two teams that have never won here. Two players leading them who have never won here. They've tasted disappointment on this stage. Today, that changes. FaZe does just enough to stay alive. Seven more in a row for FaZe to force overtime. Fast pace towards Banana. The play has been called. Hunter's going to turn that corner. JKS has got him. Huddle behind. Another flashbang from Kerrigan. Utility starting to be impactful. JKS starting to be impactful. One round left. is in a huge amount of trouble. He's going to try and take matters into his own hands. But Jax, he drops in. Oh, talk about a custodian. Oh, talk about a superstar. Talk about the elite. Lops is on a rope. It's over. Has FaZe somehow turned this back? G2, they're going to find a way to reset, and it's going to be the hardest reset of their careers. Was trying to use the gap to see through spot them. Sees an easy find of the kill. Looks down the hunter. Not looking the right way. And twist has both. Monacy comes straight back into the picture. And it's Kerrigan that has to hold it. He can't. Monacy's got all the time. How are we doing this again? How are we going the distance once more? Hunter and Monacy. It's them against the world. Hunter flashes in his favor. He's got three. Oh my. He's absolutely hunting all the prey today. And it rocks. And it's shut out by Monacy in the end. JKS. Could the stand in win map two for them? Monacy back in the corner. And this is absolutely doable now. Quick tap falls off and he falls the wrong way. So as not to be spotted, Alexi B just waits it out. But JKS oh, has it. it. Does he have the time though? It's going to be so close. Phase in one map two. And they'll go up two to nothing in this series. That is unbelievable. The stand in. What can this man not do for Phase? Catwalk, there's no other options for G2. Oh, 
they lined up. That's gonna drop them down. It's all on Hunter. Phase! Finally! Kerrigan gets redemption. They've lost twice on this stage, 2017, 2018. The king of Counter-Strike, the man who led FaZe. Chances taken by so many players, so many gambles on this team, but it's finally paid off. The Intel Extreme Masters, kind of it's the champions, FaZe Clan in 2022.
can I fight it? How can I? Listen when there's no sound. Oh, the wolves are out. Yes, the wolves are out.
making history. Absolutely phenomenal. And Ace is the champion of the Intel Extreme Masters World Finals. Storm still not quite done. MC is going to take this fight, though. Three seconds left. Last two rounds of match has got to start it well for ESC. And this is a massive move for Zest, but he's not content with just a Nexus kill. He will get to win. Out. She did it. And it's all done. A strong win. And welcome back, everybody, to the Intel Extreme Masters Dallas North American Closed Qualifiers. That sure was a mouthful, but I'm excited. Uh, we're off of a break here. Um, I'm extra. I'm joined here by Vincent. Vincent, what did you uh, what did you get up to in that little hour that we had off? Hey, I had some food. Mm. Uh, I watched some YouTube videos, and uh, I looked back at what happened in that previous year. And how I couldn't believe that Liquid is here. And well, to be honest with you. I couldn't watch the whole game, but from what I could see, it's a pretty legit win. Like, Liquid got beat, and they got beat bad. Yeah, yeah, that, that, their map was a, a bit of a shock. It is not a, a, I mean, a big surprise, clearly, coming out of the gates. I did not expect for uh, Liquid to come through. And, and, you know, obviously, we've seen that this roster had a little bit of struggles. We watched them in the open qualifier, and uh, they lost the map to PA, uh, and, and honestly came through in a pretty close series. Um, when we talk about that, but to actually start off again talking about like uh you know the, the failures for a couple of these IEMs, same sort of uh, case here in, in Chengdu where Liquid showed that you know some of these contending NA teams are keeping up with this roster and we know the newness and nature of this team is uh, a bit of a concern and uh, we talked about the time that uh, this roster is kind of buying here and that we still place a lot of faith in some of these individuals but. You know, now let's put a clinic, especially in that third map. And wild card, obviously not fielding the most success. Took a tough loss to bots, so there's no question about it. Didn't really show up on Anubis T side. I think that was their biggest concern. But wild card are coming through looking, uh, you know, kind of revigorated and, and ready to play. They are. And I think that, you know what? This, as much as it's a huge uphill battle, don't get me wrong, not saying that wild card are favorites by any means, but. I don't think this is out of pocket. This is not out of the realm of reality. And it's kind of back to a storyline you just mentioned is that, you know, Team Liquid, maybe there's not enough time. I don't want to hear that. That's no longer a wor the world I live in because it's been two months. Excellent. It's been long enough that they shouldn't be dropping series to nouns. The, the star power, the, I mean, the pedigree, like it's all there for this Team Liquid. And the fact that they're here, I, I think, gives wildcard an opportunity and one that they certainly aren't just going to throw away that being said we we have seen wildcard up against this specific team liquid in those Chengdu qualifiers now granted wildcard didn't even get a map over the three that they played but they played them close once i think they could do it again yeah, and again, we, we talked a little bit about the uh, the boot camp that this roster came off of. They were able to spend some time, uh, I believe, in Serbia for a little while, kind of getting to work and, and getting that European experience, which I think could be a, a massive influence. So, uh, you know, obviously, I think if you're wildcard, you're coming into this one looking to uh, prove that, you know, that, that boot camp did offer up a lot of improvement. And uh, you're trying to capitalize on, on Liquid bleeding a little bit in that upper bracket. But we'll go ahead and take a look at the battleground. See, where we're going to be playing things out. Because that's going to be a key detail here. As we had mentioned, uh, just heading into this one, Mirage. Mirage, Mirage, Mirage from uh, the likes of Liquid was looking pretty today. And that is, of course, what Wildcard looked so good on. We, we talked about the dominant performance up against Boss. The calling was looking clean. This is where the T side was absolutely thriving. We got that classic Stanislaus style. Uh, that, that's a little bit slower, a little bit more difficult to deal with. But also, they had some good contact plays. And we're seeing that out of the gates here. I think that this is best case scenario for a couple of reasons. First of all, you just talked about how good wildcard looked in not just the previous series that we looked at, but 
I mean, they've played three maps of it this iteration, and they've won them all. This is clearly a comfortable place for Wildcard to be. But I think the the even bigger point of contention outside of that momentum is the fact that we just we just saw Liquid get shellacked by Nouns on this map. 13-3 was the scoreline, and it wasn't even particularly close. I think Junior had a really good game, um, and I think CJ had a really good game as well. But it wasn't even like, I look back at the stats, and extra, it wasn't even like Junior had, I don't know, 25 kills or something in a th you know it wasn't like one guy just played out of his mind and so liquid loss everybody was pulling their own way and i think that that is the biggest reason that mirage is going to be massive for wildcard's chances yeah and you know included in that mix there mirage uh obviously looked good but they had the individuals showing up here i'll go ahead and finish out the veto because i, I think you know, there are some other uh, interesting prospects. Liquid, instead of picking into Overpass, which is what they, uh, they, they believe they just did versus uh, Downs, they instead reroute into Nuke in this series. Or, no, my apologies. They picked into Ancient uh, in that last series. So, hold that yeah. thought. They, they do pick into Nuke, though, here. Uh, and then, of course, we'll be finishing off our third map coming through on Inferno. But out of the gates here, fast play coming through JBA, looking to entry on out, and no luck out of the gates here. Snapping a Kindar, put things to bed here quickly. Still some chances, but they don't quite trade as they were hoping for. Kadian will put down Stan, and Twist will end it off there with a nice little headshot. So the B-Rush is handled out of the gates here. And the the hard part for, for Wildcard is, you know, up, up in that game against Boss, they can walk in and have somebody like Infinite, you know, walk into a site and find a double entry multiple times. I don't know that that's going to be a, the case for Team Liquid. Um, it certainly shouldn't be, as Team Liquid showing exactly that right off the bat. That, what am I seeing? Stan? No. Excuse me? Come on. <laughs> what? You know you can sell, like, whenever you miss buy. Yeah, yeah. You can, you can sell. Stan needs a reminder, baby. But imagine, okay, real talk though, Cole. Imagine the BM if he gets a kill with this against, mm, you know, some that's a mental, previous teammates. Mental victory. You know, you win the mental battle. There. Which is uh, underrated, that's for sure. It will be. I, uh, I'm cheering for Stan. The Glock will do it. The R8, not so much, unfortunately. You know, it also just kind of adds to the question, what is he subbing out the the uh, pistols for? Is, I imagine he, he got rid of the P250. I feel yeah, like that's the gotta move. Yeah, it's got to be. Although some people, moves. like, no, because dualies are too good. You, you want dualies for the CT side. But maybe he only has the RE on the T side as well. Yeah. So you can also, T side dualies are pretty useless. Yeah, they're not nearly as strong. I think, uh, I think you You've convinced me. The duels yeah. are gone. So maybe as long as it's just the T side that he's rocking that little uh, little trick up his sleeve. Oh, I can't believe you brought it out. That's it's still an expensive gun. He uses a lot of money. I know. It's You're crazy. Right. Could have had an eagle, man. You're right. He's back up with these mid-aggressive maneuvers here. Stan. He's been trying to work out towards middle. He's been doing a really good job again versus boss, but right now being shut down by Yakindar. Oh, the gates. That Molly and the Chase Gadian. Okay, I think right now, surprisingly, Liquid are coming through, looking for a little disrespect on this opposition right now. And that, after a tough loss, is not what you'd expect from uh, a favored team. But it's looking good when they when they do it. They're, they're getting away with it. To be fair, that is exactly what you'd expect from Cadian, though. That is true, yeah. So you, so. I mean, uh, that's what I want to see him. Like, this roster, you show up and you say, hey, we're still Liquid. And this is still wild card, so let, let's give him a dose of reality here. Kendar, here's the footsteps of the last. It's a nice trade for Infinite, making it actually a winnable position. Still pretty healthy here. And another MP9 fight, but wow, Skulls. Put that one yeah. down. If Infinite maybe had full health, I would have looked at him a little bit more favorably, but instead, wild card find themselves on the back foot. Sort of as expected, but in fairness... The way that Wildcard tried to uh, approach the mid area in that last round is pretty similar, but a lot earlier than what they did against Boss. And they got punished big time for it. I want to see them go back to that that 
mid control that they were starting to gather after they got underpass and maybe at like the 115 mark is when they were really getting mid control as opposed to the 130. Yeah, but it feels like every round they're just not giving them anything to work with here. Kadian is pushed again towards the top of middle, looking to try and fight forward. Oh, I like this angle from Naf. He's playing on the bumper right now. About to bump some heads. That MP9 long range and he gets back up there. What? Great movement coming through from Nav. For some nice little MP9 kills and the rest of the squad doesn't quite trade things out. So a 4K only taking three damage on Nav. And again, this this is going really well for Liquid and Wildcard don't have much to resist this so far. I can't believe that Nav gets away with going back up for more after the first how, two kills. Did you see how quick he got back up there on that angle? Yeah. Like it, it felt I, instant. It, lo it looked like... Honestly, it looked like he didn't even get down. That's how seamless it was. I thought he was going to hit the Exner van jump for a second. Try and get on balcony, but... That's presumptuous of you to call that your jump. <laughs> <laughs> Truly presumptuous. But I like it. You know, you, you said you wanted to see Team Liquid come out and smack some heads and... You know, that's, that's kind of the same vibe. It's Ooh. Ooh, had something to say. Twist goes down, but Kadian on the quick refrag. He's for lots of damage done to both him and Naf, but this is a wild card that are not quite in a good position, but much better than they had been. That is still a, a bit tricky right now with these low HP bars to comfortably close this out, but I like what they're doing here. They just kind of post Kadian up with the op right now. He's going to have the, uh, the old double zoom. Meanwhile... You kind of stack over more heavy presence towards this A side. And you pretty much got all your bases covered. Skulls. An angle that you think would be sure to be cleared right now. But also the distraction from top connector here. You got just one jiggle from Yakindar and it could do a man here. Or a peak that will line him up. Just nicely there. Yakindar shutting down the connector presence right there. And Sonic without the bomb. And with too many targets, although Naf just kind of walks out right there and gives up his life. 25 seconds in a workable clutch now. Yeah, we got to get the bomb. That's the, the biggest issue for Sonic. And, I mean, Yakendar, I can't, I can't believe how far away he's run, but it's not going to matter. At least it doesn't seem that way. Katie has the look and has the shot, given the opportunity. A couple of rounds now that Yakendar has found that double spray down as well. The A1S, now with an AK in hand, Team Liquid power their way up to five. And there really hasn't been much of a question mark. Wildcard, as as brutal as it is to say out loud, Colt, they haven't really gotten out of the first phase of the round more than once. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're talking about maybe holding on to a couple different, like, nice trades and the likes, maybe some hopeful clutch attempts, but I 100% agree with you. It feels like... This is the liquid that we wanted to see coming into this event. At least just uh, in the lower bracket. Maybe a bit of a wake up call as they're playing with a lot more confidence right now. Although, Skulls getting a little bit chaotic right now. Yakindar again with a double spray down. And a blur again. You just watch as Stan tries to figure out the pieces there, but no luck in liquid. And scary form right now for Wildcard. Yeah, it's kind of mind-boggling that Liquid go from, you know, a pretty bad loss to this form. And I think that that is actually what really separates, you know, a professional team. You know, a team that is has a bunch of professionals sitting there and playing the game every single day. You know, that mental stability. That's no disrespect to Wildcard, who have been putting together some really impressive showings as of late. But... Right now, Liquid are unmatched. You also got a, a ideal coaching staff behind this squad as well. So I think the mental part of coming back into this qualifier and realizing who you are is key. And so far in this map, I think they've realized who they are in this NA scene and are playing with, you know, 10x the confidence that they were. Also, nouns, you know, again, mechanically can maybe keep up a little bit better. And some of these, like, younger players, the more up-and-coming individuals like Slight JBA. 
who might be a little bit shocked to see who they're playing on the server right now. Cadian, again, just showing no respect here. Diving through his connector smoke. He's got 133 ADR with the AWP, so... Single you can see bad. the amount of work. Yakindar, up there in the 125, but... Stands no stranger playing up against top competition. He's been there, he's done that. And he's keeping things level. Mm, nah, couldn't quite adjust for the second of that spray down. And this will give wild card maybe their second real chance at a round. They've got the B site not fully open. It's Cadian who's hanging out ready for the cross. Wow. But Slight bests him. As he went into this round with zero frags, Slight now with two incredibly important ones. As Skulls makes some noise, JV will, JV will doesn't have a kit. It. Yeah, he can't afford to be walking this through. Maybe just looking for an exit? I, I don't know, but... Gotta save. And won't be given that opportunity. Yeah, I think you're right about that uh, sound cue being given up because Slight was so ready. And Wildcard finally on the board. As I said, you know, I, I, you would think maybe Slight coming into this matchup, feeling a little bit of heat, feeling some pressure. You know, already took a tough loss here to what it was your f former team and boss, right? Key aspect there, you know, obviously a lot of changes uh, coming through into this wildcard roster. But wildcard, uh, the first team, the only surviving member was Slight. So... He's looking good. He's looking better here. Sonic diving out into the fray right there. Immediately dispatching of skulls. Panic sets in for twist just a little bit. The spam is on the money, but it's just more damage. It's no kills in return. So a 4v5 established. And now you can start to talk about Stan cooking it up a little bit here. And the Cohen department. Yeah, we were talking about, you know, just getting into the late round or <laughs> finding a position to uh to get into the mid-round where that impact can be felt and finally Stanislaw with that opportunity. Sure got a few of those nades though. Kinder, I mean, you'd like him to get a little flash re-aggression towards uh, ramp, but he's the one with the flashbang right there. His teammate, playing more passive, does not have that utility. What on earth is going on in this map right now? You take a look. Ooh. There's players passing each other in apartments right now. You got a big flank formulating from NAF. But also, you know, you could get the call over. Stan, if he, he takes this B-bomb slate saying, come on back. I don't know what they're going to do, though. It's all big ifs here. And Yakindar is going to throw a wrench in the system, as is Kadian. And now they got to rethink. Maybe they want to dive back in towards B. But at this point, there's not a lot of time here. You haven't made that quick move. I think it's going to be a save. But that's if Snaf lets you. He flanks things out and... Infinite should be able to land a trade here, potentially. No, not quite. Oh my god, Naf just pre-firing around that corner. And Stan's Lurk never activates. I don't know how the hell Naf and Stan pass each other there. Shouldn't have been allowed to occur, but it does. And Team Liquid pick up their seventh. Stan is law. Stan's any additional money. We'll still have the AK and a bit of a weird amount of cash for both JBA and Slight. Coming into this one. With that being said, with all of the the plaudits that we were given there to wildcard and getting into the into the four on four and etc., man, they, they really flubbed it. Yeah, I mean, it felt like they were a little bit too nervous to move out of towards that A side here. Wow, that nearly connects. They're trying to assemble a little bit of a boost, find themselves some sort of opening pick, but KD and Lucky to walk away with his life, avoiding spam from Stan. And Stan is desperate to fight for this mid control here. He really wants to assert his dominance. He's been there a couple of times, making making the way, but ultimately losing his life more often than not. This time, that's not the case, though. A little damage, but that's it. Wild card. They made some presence over towards B. Stan towards mid as well, and we'll get another window smoke coming through. All to set up this A attack. There's just the one smoke available. That's on slight. Single AK and the pistols to boot. Good setup here. Hard cleared on Yakindar though. Absolutely leveled by Stan. 
The rifle does hit the deck, but uh, we got something to work with here. Another one. Another big peek from JBA. Do you want more? JBA's looking for some dinner, but Twist, uh, he flips the table over. And he's not going to be able to get much. Tries to recover the bomb. That's step number one. There you go. He's going to grab it. Ooh, what an adjustment there. Quickness on to Twist. At least a bomb plant. Maybe a little bit extra here. JBA and a big clutch. He's going to sneak his way to a sandwich. Kadian, though, has him covered. Has the read. Liquid out of the round. Team Liquid are an incredibly scary team when Kadian is playing this well. You know, I, and that was true, I feel, for Kadian and Heroic as well. But in some impressive form right now. At least throughout this first half. But a bomb plant will be a welcome addition to the dollar amounts that Wildcard are working with. They can get Slight back onto the AWP if they want to. And I think that that was such a critical part of their sustained victory on Mirage versus Boss. As much as that may or may not be the, the key to unlocking victory here against Liquid, that's certainly a part of this team that we've yet to see, yet to come to fruition. And they're running out of time to do so with the tactical timeout. We'll see what they can get cooked up. We talked about as well the you know, the coaching staff is strong for wild card. So yeah, they got a lot standing behind them. I saw uh, you know Horvy tweet out after the loss. I also saw you know, a little bit of frustration in the the, the play there. And uh, obviously, again, you got kind of another legend behind this wild card team in in Warden. So yeah, you got some serious force standing behind this roster. But I think right now, Liquid are showing very little respect. And that, that has to be a little bit frustrating for Stan to call it out at the moment. You can see more aggression, though punished. Finn deals with it here. He's got more around that corner. Katie and wow, run down by Sonic and Palace. Looking for even more damage, but he's kept at bay. Molly is going to dissuade the bomb plant as it is to spam. So the better looking round here off the back of a couple of sharp entries from Infinite and Sonic. I think this is actually the first real post plan as well. It isn't, you know, a more desperate situation. And it doesn't look like Team Liquid are actually going to go for this. They're not in position to, and they're just looking for any sort of exit prize twists. We'll evacuate Kendar watching his back. They recovered AWP, or actually they had a secondary one. It was over towards... The B side of the map. And so, wild card. How many rounds? I mean, if they get three rounds here, all that winnable? Um, Like three in total or like three in a row here to head into to the next so half? Because I, I, I meant three in total. If they get if they get all three, I mean, they're <laughs> cooking with gas. Yeah, yeah. I mean, four... 8-4 and you get the pistol, you're quickly back into a game. You can really realize that fast. But, uh, 3 is tough. 3 is not easy. And again, it feels like right now Liquid are coming through with a little bit more confidence that... I'll say is, uh... Where would have liked to see them, but where they couldn't really achieve it versus Nouns. You know, Nouns have so much firepower on that team. You got Marky punching yeah, back do. big time. You got... So exciting offers like regionally and and junior as well who obviously has potential to do some good damage depending on on what sort of opposition he's up against and uh i, I feel like right now liquid are getting away with a whole lot more but last round we finally saw some of that overextension punished so Let's see if that's a trend backup for Canadian wasn't there this time he's got some support and actually it's Kendar, who falls after the single frag. Stanislaw's in a good spot to cut off potential rotates as well. Another one. Stan just being so effective in middle. Absolutely lovely. And it's going to be another save call. It has to be here. Wildcard could walk away with that scoreline that you were mentioning here. Get a nice little three guaranteed. But honestly going to put themselves in a position to gather even more. 
the very least going to walk away with a couple of extra kills. But at this point, wild card, yeah, the money, you want to keep that strong. We're heading into the final round of the half. It it simply doesn't matter. These, these guns that Skulls and Hadian have are worth their weight in gold. And looking for it, but he's going to find it himself on the bad end of a M4 A1S. All right. So off the back of the timeout, Wild Card are right back in this thing to a certain extent. They pick up two rounds and are looking for a fourth where it should be relatively easy in comparison to what they've been up against. As Team Liquid, I just want it to be no... I want it to be known. I don't think they've ecoed this whole half. I haven't been in a position where they had to. This one, the closest thing to it. The boost. Oh, man. Gadian. He gets caught. I've been oh. looking for that. Wildcard have erected that boost like three or four times. They haven't caught anyone. Nobody's been seen. Gadian finally succumbs. A cheeky peek here or there. Trying to get sneaky in the bottom of connector. I do really like that boost. I think I think it's almost become meta. Throw that out a couple times in the half. It's given so many offers chances here. That's twist on the big green, and that's a nice angle again. Using that bumper, using your resources right there. Full effect, cracking things open. Twist will gather a quick kill. You know, it's immediately so cool. repositions. It's so cool to see that as much as we all have seen Mirage forever, <laughs> that there's still adjustments to the meta and to like how to approach different angles on this map. You know, it like you can call it stale, but the reality is there's there's still a lot of cool stuff getting discovered and utilized. Absolutely. Skulls put on notice right now. That is brutal. He can't get anything going. Right there, getting mollies tossed his way, getting HEs thrown out, getting spammed. But now it's up to Twist to pull it back. A le nice leg shot. They're looking for more. Going for the okay. wall bangs here. Anything to pull this round back. He needs to help from Naf here, coming through in jungle. But look at this brilliant reposition here. Infinite still able to land the adjustment, and it could be three in a row. Twist inching his way forward. Giving it a shot here, looking for some wall bangs, but it will be slight to cap off the half and cap twist quick here as they gather themselves four rounds in total. We'll see if that's enough after a break.
Ooh, we're into the second half quickly here. Sonic is knocking them all down. Time for a wake up call here as Slight what? has this round in the bag and he will oh. take the last two kills. Wow. <laughs> what a great way to introduce yourself back into the second half as Wildcard will handle that A play. And, I, you know, I think, listen, Wildcard picking up three rounds in a row towards the back end of that one, especially leading the charge. But big shout out. I think Slight as well had a pretty significant step up and it wasn't necessarily the the volume of kills but the impact of the few that he was able to pick up you know thinking that an opening pick towards connector especially as he pulls the trigger on two quick frags there to close it out for the pistol Team liquid a very fast approach to this a exact all the smokes go out flash and follow it's jba close range and he'll stay alive, but only for a moment. The twist in Yekindar putting on the pressure. Yekindar oh. through the smoke and Stanislaw missing some shots. Allow Slyke to fall. Three on two as Team Liquid get into the pose plant. But they're not really set up in great positions just yet. They're all right in front of these smokes. So easiest of spots to handle, but it's still lacking weaponry for both of these players on the retake here. So Stan... Left into a 1v3 as the A site was overwhelmed, and now he's spotted out. He's getting double swung and taken down. Liquid, they run the same playback, just another A execute. Pistol, it didn't work out, but we'll get him the second time around. Boy, did they ever get him. As well. I'll do a, the trick. That's a painful loss for Wildcard as well, when you consider that that pistol... That was their their breath of fresh air, their life right back into the series. It suddenly cut to ribbons once again. It's another really smoke out towards the A site. This one on the stairs and the rest of them not necessarily there. Got a massive amount of flanking players right now, but they've cleared out apartments. Stan. Stan. What do you got for us here? I think Twist is uh we gathered a bit of info here. You can start. That is infuriating right there for poor JBA and Infinite. Got the shrapnel as well. Finally, someone able to put Yakindar down, but it's not going to help out much. It's slight. There might not be any safety here in this round for you. Let's see if he gets clear. Adian. Oh, gonna catch him with a molly. You won't be able to run away. Skulls. With that bit of utility right there, we'll put it to bed and. Yeah, I mean, I feel like you you win the pistol, but the life gets sucked right out of you so quickly in that second round. And if it wasn't the second round, the third wouldn't add too much to it either. Poor Slight got hit with the nade, followed by the molly, followed by getting run down, and there was two more mollies just in case from Team Liquid's back pocket. This one, really, a round for decoration if you look at the USPs across the board for wildcard. Canadians are already all the way up mid, up catwalk. Kendar. That's a little bombardment right there. That was not a double with the nade, but two separate. Two separate, yeah. Yeah. They are doing an impressive amount of damage for a USP round. You get three kills, it's mission accomplished, but at this point, I don't know how much economic damage is really going to play a factor here. Some more about the rounds converted. It's more about closing that distance. Especially with 2k plus on every Team Liquid player and another bomb plant, it's a little less. But, you know, Stanislaw would do well for that extra $600 if he could pull something off of the Smack 10. Terrorists win. Not to be. <laughs> no, Skulls just jumps around. Stay mobile. It's the. Big rule of the SMGs right there, and he sure does. Very quick. Again, it is getting to the closing stages. Liquid have just called nothing but fast A plays round and round again. Might see a change up here now that we head into this first big gun round. Including Slight with an AWP. Talked about the little turn up of performance that he was able to bring to the table. It was good to see him show up there. JBA as well. 
But they got to keep that rolling right now. Now would certainly be the time. A little bit of a passive approach to wild cards mid hold at the moment. They've got Stanislaw up in window, but he's on an off angle playing towards ladder. And I think he'll have heard something there. Question of whether he'll get a chance to take a shot, though. That's entirely for a different moment. Team Liquid putting together a very similar mid-take, by the way, is what we saw Wildcard do against Boss. Huge change of play here on this attempt at an A-take here. I mean, this split is so deadly. They're already moving in, and JBA is overwhelmed. Double swung. Slight is looking to bail. Utility is already established. The only thing that's not yet checked off the list is that bomb plant. But finally... The numbers start to be punched in before Infinite is able to equalize. A big kill there. Cadian's still striking in the feed, but all of a sudden, it's a 3v3 here. As the pinstripe continues, Skulls is finally going to put him in the lead. Might look for another peek as well as that smoke is just bloom. Naf gets caught off guard by it here. Infinite still offering up opportunities right now, but they haven't even cleared Skulls. He's still under the balcony right now. And finally, Sonic realizes this is the hard way where he's been playing about. Infinite jumping up there with a little bit of a fake. Nice idea, but he's running out of time. He doesn't have a kit to play off of, so he's got to call it. And Liquid are going to claim themselves map point. And he was so far removed from that entirety of that retake. And I thought maybe it would be Liquid's undoing, but instead it's what saves him. No chance for Infinite, who... Valiant effort, man. He picked up three on the approach to that retake, winning basically every duel and then catching Nap off guard. It's a what more can I do type of moment from him, but at 12 to 5, there's much more to be done and not a lot of weaponry to do it with. Sonic has last moment gotten an M4, had a Hag 7. Found some cash out of nowhere, you know, that old David account you forgot about. Investments have paid off. Like Red here, the MP9 is looking good, that spray transfer. Nice attempt, but overwhelmed by the double up on the MP9s. It doesn't help, though. Mid aggression gets shut down. This B hold is a nice attempt, but the quickness on these trades here. Gadian giving them no relief. Well, Sonic is so quick on this rotation that. Katie, oh my god, there's no way to expect this. He's going to wrap around here. Oh, but Katie doesn't know. Okay, he's got an idea though, Sonic. He's got an idea now that he's clearing out the site. He's got to know, but it might not even matter if he can't make it in time to stop the bomb from crossing in towards this A side. And oh, oh. my god. Oh, katie has got to hit the jets. He's going to get flanked. It doesn't matter. Oh, 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 he almost had it. He almost had a chance at least. A position in which I, yeah, I didn't think he had one, but bomb drops in, in this round be just becomes so difficult for Twist. I think what's so difficult for Twist is that, I mean, why is Light so removed? Why, why is he palace here? That's the, the question that Twist is really starting to ask themselves is, he gets shot, but no, Ooh. none of those bullets connect. Light with a miss of massive proportions and the bomb can be recollected. He knows where Sonic was last located, and that Molotov will give him some confirmation. But there's 10 seconds left. Flight won't miss another shot. Not like he had before inside the smoke. And Slight gives the audio, can track him down. Sonar inside this wild card survived. Just wanted to make it a little interesting for us. <laughs> sure did. Give us some intensity right there. It's never fun to watch a player get shot in the back of the head. No. It's a whole lot more fun when you get to see the bomb potentially planted. You glad slight miss? Yeah, yeah, no, it made for a right. fun moment. For a fun moment. Slight, I would he's, never a, he's an entertainer. Slight's downfall. That's crazy of you. He's an entertainer. You know? <laughs> he is indeed. Sometimes he likes to put on a show. His, uh, his raging is some of the loudest, but also like... I feel like funniest. It he's got is... that, uh, he's got that steel rage where it's like, <laughs> yeah, uh, it can be 
it can be pretty direct, you know, but uh, it's always like very point. Yeah, I, I'll say I've heard some name calling from the slate yeah. camp <laughs> at land, but it is indeed always funny. No need to rage in that round. Just a little bit of a hiccup is all. They still close out again. They're going to be able to tread some water for now. That has to be just the start. Got a whole lot more work to do to break down this liquid squad. Man, they're miles out. Ooh, wow. This is going to go back and clear this, though, for poor infinite. That's not fun. Good lurking about there from Twist in the apartments. And your info play... Has quickly gone blind. Unfortunately, for Team Liquid, able to just kind of handle that with ease. Now, slight dispatch with one. That's to work from. JBA needs to stay alive. Let Stanislaw take this. And though JBA, JBA can't stay alive long enough, Stanislaw does. He doubles down for a second kill. Gideon. Numbers punched in, swinging to Sonic. He's so swift to that fight. And now Twist, he's coming from a distance and he walks through the smoke into Stanislaw's crosshair. Stanislaw has been keeping Wildcard alive in a lot of these moments and he does it again. I mean, definitely keeping themselves afloat right there. That's just a wild call from Team Liquid as well. The double up contact through smoke from Palace, hoping that they could catch Wildcard to sleep at the wheel. But I tell you what, Wildcard are not sleeping. And they might have been uh, hitting the snooze button a couple times in the early stages of this game. Struggling to take map control. You, you said it early. The, the first phase of map control, it felt like they were just getting shut out. Liquid was dominating. But later stages of that uh, the half, they figured it out. But are we still talking about wildcard making things close? Can we talk about a comeback at some point here? It's, again, more work to be done. This half buy is still threatening here. As JBA takes a forward angle. Flashman cooks them good, and Yakindar double entries. And the light shot's not what they need. It's light there. A valiant flick, but does it connect? Ooh. Opposite default plan. Light shot through smoke, not gonna connect either. And for what feels like the first time Team Liquid at the A side have a really defendable post plant scenario, Cadians on the late Cadian. rotate. Very well, could be around Ender here. Sonic diving into the fray, he tries to clear out Naf, but he gets covered by his teammates. And again, this bomb is taking away. It's getting out of control. Infinite, what was that shot? You gotta be kidding me. A little bit of flair for the, the exit there for Wildcard, but again, it's all cosmetic as Liquid still look dominant here on Wildcard's map pick and on the map that they struggled on so much just an hour or two ago. Yeah, and I think actually it makes a lot of sense that, that we saw them struggle there simply because towards the back end of that, once Wildcard kind of got over the just getting dumpstered like in the early round, once it got over that, it was a not that amazing start to the T half for, for Liquid. They just brought it over the line and after such a strong first half, it didn't really matter. That being said, I think Wildcard, it's unfortunate that they start with their map pick because it was only at the end did they really start to find their footing. Yeah, and uh, I mean, again, you talk about the, the T side efficiency out of Liquid right there. They got away with two just straight A execute kind of uh, half by situations. One was a force by that, that second one was a half by, but uh, I mean, the Tech Nines were able to do that much work in that second half. And with a slow start, it's really tough to, to bounce back. So for Wildcard, uh, their, their path to IEM Dallas, not so straightforward. But we'll see if they're able to punch back here on their opponent's map pick. It's going to be Nuke coming up after a break.
Shoot!
We are back here once again after a pretty quick first map. It looked strong for Liquid. It looks like they're back into some more confident stance here. And you know what? To, to even further that confidence, they've got Nuke to try and finish this off on. Yeah, Nuke's a map that they just haven't been losing this entire year thus far. Their only loss is to face, and that was a really close 13-11 loss. Uh, otherwise, it, both whether here or out in the world in eu it's been dominant they've been able to take victories um and so that leaves wild card in a really tough spot uh, it's a map they don't particularly play a lot of as well as going into it as sh the, probably the biggest underdogs in the tournament yeah yeah i mean after uh the, the loss to boss here I, I felt like that that could be like just kind of a 50 50 matchup uh, i think both teams have had their successes uh and boss obviously have had a little bit of time uh, but you, you've been putting a lot of emphasis on the squad again, uh, as we keep on mentioning, like the boot camping over in Europe, getting yourself prepared for the RMR. Uh, all of these are big deals, and you want to be able to put up a fight against a, a team that you know you might have to, uh, you know, take down here in the RMRs. You might play in the RMRs here in Liquid, and if you're not able to show much of that right now uh, on this map, it, it could be a little bit worrisome here. But uh, of course, uh, again, you know, wild card. Uh, they're a roster that I, I have a lot of faith that can prepare well for, for these sort of things. And so uh, we'll, we'll see how well prepped they are for, for Nuke here. Yeah, and, and there was a couple of individuals, I think, that were missing early on that really found their footing towards the end. I think Slight in particular was uh, was missing a bit early on in Mirage and then really started to step up towards the end of that game. If that continues, especially Sonic and Stanislaw, who both played really well. Sonic, I think, who was struggling a little bit in the in the series earlier. Like, if that continues, I think Wildcard could have their chances. But I think the reality is starting to set in for them at the moment, considering that Mirage game and where they expected themselves to be, where we saw them um, lose out, uh, served up their first loss on Mirage, at least when it comes to the HLTV side of things. So, I mean, as much as I I want to be here for Wildcard, I want to I want to be cheering for them. I think that you and I both know the reality is that Liquid came into this as huge favorites and with the first map out of the way and their map pickup coming it only gets even more of an uphill battle yeah and it just looked so good it looked like this roster was back to like okay we're, we're gonna come out of this I, I said it in this uh uh the break but we're, we're gonna come into this matchup playing uh like we are are the best team in NA and that this is a roster that uh you know it, it has players that you know you might not even know on the side of Liquid right and I feel like that's uh, a good sign for Liquid. That's kind of how I want them to play out uh, this this qualifier, is to show a little bit of that confidence, assert a little bit of dom uh, dominance and disrespect your opposition. And we're seeing a lot of that, especially in those like first eight rounds when Liquid were up eight to one. We were seeing that confidence showed up so much. It was tough to stop. It was tough to call around for Stan. He couldn't get much going uh, on that tease side until late into the half. And so we'll see if that continues here on the T side of Nuke for Liquid. It makes it so hard as a as an in-game leader to make those correct calls when you are getting disrespected like that. And I think that's actually another way that Team Liquid can just stamp their ticket in and through this little bracket. Naf will long range with the Akendar's help dispatch Infinite 
on the swing. That's a crazy position to just get insta dead. Up against Glocks, especially. Skulls with a lurk out door. JBA is chilling on the back of the site. And there's going to be a relatively quick flank with Slight coming back up through Secret. And in the meantime, Team Liquid is five strong on the A site. Yeah, but a late claim, and they've got a good idea as to where their opposition is as well. These shots are just connecting. The Glocks, it doesn't matter the distance, it doesn't matter the fight that they're taking. They are landing it. Landing that plane on the A side here quite nicely. Just one more to take down. Slight, just going to look to save. I saw a pretty cool Glock skin. I think it was the, uh, like, I don't know if it's actually called the Lego Glock yeah, or something. But I don't know what it's called. I don't know who had it. I think it was Twist who has it. But, uh, Slight, able to collect one nice kill. That's Naf. all. It's Nap. Nap has it. That, that skin's sweet. I really like that Glock skin. So, was that in the most recent case, or has that been out? Uh, I don't know. I'm What's not it sure. Kilowatt? Kilowatt case, yeah. Yeah. I haven't looked at the skins out of the Kilowatt, but I have gotten one. And I sold it for a cheeky five. Not bad. You haven't looked at the skins, but you got one? You opened a, I got case, a case and didn't even look at it? Well, I just got it from my, like, weekly rewards. I'm so freaking jealous. I've gotten, like, three weekly rewards, <laughs> no. and I haven't gotten a single one. I also um, got a glove case. That was another cheeky five dollars. Oh uh, why are goodness. glove cases five dollars? Because people like gloves. I'm getting paid to play the game right now. Hot take, Colt. Gloves aren't that cool, actually. I agree. I never, I never really jumped on the glove bandwagon. Give, give me a nicer knife over gloves every Amen. single time. Amen. You're, you're yeah. preaching to the choir here. Well, let's go. You're preaching to the choir right now. I, I I'm. A big fan of like a nice knife skin. I really don't even look at gloves. Although n nice gloves are pretty clean. Like I'm yeah. looking at your Kindars right now. They're not got, bad. Got the drip, you know. It's just tough because uh, I think those glove skins are just insanely expensive yeah. compared to like a <laughs> like three an insanely expensive but a little bit more reasonably knife skin. Speaking of skins, I know you said you haven't looked, but the AK in the new case, mm, I'm down bad for that thing. I don't know. Is that the, it's like the porcelain one. one? Like it's white and blue. Oh, okay. it's so good. That sounds like a pretty good color scheme. I've seen it. I think I've seen it in uh, like a game or two. Okay, Cadian, farming up those <laughs> sweet eeks. Man after my own heart. And then he's just walking away too, saying, "Come and get me, guys." And he's baited. No, he's Kendar saying, "Yeah, Kindar, <laughs> come collect some checks." A Mac Happy 10 or USB? So. <laughs> USB, of course. Oh, Stan, lucky to get away with that single frag. And well, Team Liquid are fine. They lost a Mac 10. So who the hell cares? All good. Yeah, that's easy. Easy upgrade right there. No sweat. And now you got a. Who needs a bonus round? Just gun round in. Wild card have the AWP. And I, as much as. This is a very tired talking point. I do think the op here is going to be important for Wildcard. Just getting Slight activated is obviously a big part of it, but making Liquid respect them a little bit more by utilizing that op both outside and in ramp, I think is important. Yeah, no question. I mean, Slight's going to really have to build up some fight here and Stan. He's a little late to the party on this secret control, so Yakindar is able to get away with a lot of space. Forcing that on back. It's always good to have a player down the secret side of things, pressuring and keeping attention drawn his way. It allows for the rest of your roster to do so much more than you can see. They are doing a lot more right now. Looking to walk their way up hell. Yeah, full command of outside. And it's not even particularly close. Swiss will make his way up. What are those garbage cans? Something like Either that. Like, like toxic waste barrels, kind of. Oh, those just sitting around? Yeah. Okay. It's a nuclear facility, so. That makes it assume, okay. I assume they've got some like good security before they let you in, but. <laughs> I mean, they not didn't good secure enough. the site. Yeah. Twist, he's able to walk away with a whole lot, although Stan again working these angles. Okay. I said he had a tough job at hand here. He, he started off this round chunked down. A nice shot from Yakindar, but he holds his. I think trying to 
trying to take advantage of the space given up team liquid i think walked in too far it didn't seem like they actually had a plan of action they just kept on walking until they were stopped and wildcard realizing that they they got a free couple of shots at them would take i'll take that every time because why not sets them up for the first gun round victory and tactical timeout utilized by team liquid i think that's the biggest case of like we, we got so much map control, what are we going to do with it? And then all yeah. of a sudden you find yourself like inching your way forward, but there's no one to trade you because someone's working heaven while someone's working lower and someone's walking through decon. And uh, it's all about getting on the same page. Yeah, obviously, that, that does come with time, but uh, again, like you said, this roster's had a little bit of time to cook with, so I imagine just trying to find their footing. Figure out what the right moves are in some of these uh, advantage situations when you do have that space, when you do have that control. Well, they just had some input from Zeus, which one of my favorite iterations of uh, of this team liquid lineup was with Zeus at the helm. So, hey, Kendar, that's disgusting. No respect. Right back to it. Want some more flash? A little bit delayed there, and again, Stan holds his own. He holds his own. And he gets out of dodge here. He's still kicking. Still looking for more success here. Twist, elevated angle. Little dove. It's not going to flush him out or anything like that, but at least maintaining a 4v4. We'll see if Liquid can get on that same page. Well, have Molly's just get the heck out of dodge. Santa's Law doesn't want to be on the bad end of one of these AK 47s or the dig that Skulls currently has in hand. So sticking on the same page, that's what you mentioned. Looks like we're gonna be there. First shot connects, it's JBA on the trade. It'll be twists and skulls left in the 2v2. The Molotov falls away and it's infinite on the flank. It's got the MP9 in hand. Twist, <gasps> ends up alone. He's got the 1v1 and infinite Ooh. delivers. Oh my god, I thought Infinite might have just barely fumbled that one, right? He doesn't quite finish his dinner on that first fight. Starts picking around, but eventually able to convert, and maybe I should have had more faith in him. We've seen a lot of good work from his MP9 today. He's able I to immediately commit. I have faith when he's got an MP9 in his hand. Yeah, no question. He was able to deliver as well. Twist on able. Shut things down. Right there, but they go for a force buy. It comes down to the clutch situation, and immediately it's answered back with a force buy here. Liquid on these force buys, tech nine rounds. They've had so much success here. Slight double dipping. Not very sanitary there, Slight. Does still walk away with his life at least. It's MP9, so up against head armor on all of the opponents. It's difficult though i guess if you just hit the headshot it's no biggie katie it taking my advice to heart goes for the deagle and sends infinite to an early grave it's wild card still with the man advantage but lacking any real control of the ramp and the b-side itself fully given up at this junction well maybe not so fully but slight at range with an mp9 isn't in the best position to play defense so he's not being asked to just yet pressuring him at the moment here there's still a smoke but they're gonna contact again still a contact approach right now silent crawls in the game of timing that works out in slight's favor beautiful Two from sight on that peak looking for more keeps himself mobile with that mp9 and adds another one dropping the ak calling in for the rest of the cavalry to arrive onto the scene here Kadian wants a bomb plant or maybe a little bit more maybe a clutch is what he's eager for here. He chases Sonic down. The sidearm is out. He finds the kill finally. But it buys time here. He has to still stick with the Deagle. JBA inside the vents is not going to let him leave. And in the chaos, Wildcard going to claim the lead. An ambitious force buy from Team Liquid. Able to close the distance towards the ramp itself. But the B side, a different story. And it's once again Slight making the step up. Right, Stanislaw has been 
utterly consistent over the entirety of tonight. The the question marks have, have usually been the younger players. Slight stepping in and JBA doing the same. This is a good look for the moment. Wild card walking into a team liquid with lackluster weaponry armor. Not going to be there. And though these deagles can be a threat, I, I doubt we're going to see too much more if they just decide not to take the engagements outside. But what if Slight wants to get some eco kills? He wants it. He's pushing it to despawn. Again, he's an entertainer. He wants to deliver. There's a the checks. line in the sand right there at the uh, at the opening to see spawn. Can't Not cross. Not allowed to cross. <laughs> yep. That was that was the rule instilled by Ward saying you can hunt for eeks, but you can't hunt for eeks that hard. Yep. At some point you gotta you gotta know when to fold them. Hey, I may not have led many teams, but that was a rule in my team. Spread the wealth, spread the ecos. Yeah. Everyone gets their one. Exactly. You gotta boost what, the uh, confidence. What, what record did that lead your uh, team to? I simply don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't want to talk about it. Fair enough. Fair enough. Hey, I, won't, I won't ask any more questions. All I know <laughs> is that you had a well-drilled roster. Maybe not the most winning roster, but a well-drilled one. That's, That's it. that. Hey, that adds some value here. Yeah, Kindar. You can get that one at old clear. Sonic. MP9, close angle. Jump, he is, but he's caught in between two angles. Torn between two positions, and Sonic will chew through that head armor. Look what they've got set up here. You want to push ramp? Well, you got yourself a gnarly setup right now to deal with. Right now, running forward, still cracks it open. He t takes one. JBA put on notice, but he's got Slight now to back him up. There's always two here. You can never get away with too much here on the side of Liquid. The shot misses, but there's no space created. This is hanging around. He wants that re-swing from Slight. He's feeling the confidence, but... Slight won't be so easily baited into that response. He's going to be here... I like this regression from Hut. Not to mention the fact that he's got backup in the form of Stanislaw right behind him. But it doesn't matter when you're getting cut off by Sonic here. Diving is not an option. Sedgel just hit the ground. Kadian. She's going to try and end this round where it started for Slight not too long ago. Hooked in to a nice, comfortable position. Nice and cozy. Stan. Are you going to clear it? He will. Certainly will. My okay. God. Cadian. Deleted and liquid. They can't cower from wild card here. They can't get much going on this T side here. Got the pistol. They got the following, but nothing else working. way that wildcard just dynamically adjusted as well to that ramp pressure and the control that they were bringing i think really shows that they're in a good mind space at the moment we got double op actually for slight and infinite up against the pistols once again and this is okay i thought another force by but katie and i forgot went down after time which makes that even worse than I believed it was at the time. I didn't realize he died after time. That is brutal. So not only catch. are we seeing a Glock out from him, but he won't really have enough money next round, regardless of the fact that they're on the eco. Look at the smokes down, though. A chance to cross over towards Secret, where Slight is currently located. One is lonesome. Slight needs to hit the shot. Oh, what about two shots here? Make it a third, give him a repeat, and the sidearm is out here. He's doing it all. He's got everything for you here. He's going to need it as well as Infinite actually comes through with the secondary off. We already got the 
Double up coming out here, but six rounds. Confidence building for Slight. You mentioned the op is going to need to have some impact here. You got rifles. Riflers doing excellent work here in Stan. Sonic in some of these big rounds. And a second timeout is used right now for Liquid to figure out why on earth they can't really sort out some of these T rounds here. And they get shut out by Wild Card. I'm trying to put my finger on it whilst they're doing the same. You know, what's been going wrong for Team Liquid? Uh, I mean, for these last couple of rounds, just get a buy together. That's been the biggest struggle for them. And part of that's their own doing with the four spies. But at the same time, they really, I think, faltered initially in one of those first gun rounds when it came to they had a ton of space and didn't really quite know what to do with it. Wildcard gave them that space and... They just kept walking in and eventually into the wildcard crosshairs. That really isn't something that's continued. But it's a different issue of arising every round. But I'm going to read on things here. Uh-oh, infinite, infinite, that's hot. Holy, not fun here. They're still trying to figure it out. I like the idea of... I guess a boost over that uh, smoke right there to try and find some space in towards deep lobby. Unfortunately, the, the molly makes the execution of that play a little bit tricky. But hey, it doesn't scare Infinite off at all. He goes right in towards hut. Gets right back to the aggression. That's why we saw slide in, but he never took a shot from there, so... No need to leave it open. It was a dumb amount of smokes outside at the outset of this round. There is plenty of space for Team Liquid to work with over there, but if you notice, they're out of smokes, and Twist is out of HP. Courtesy of Slight. A couple Molotovs for the rest of the squad as Naf will cut this back to even. One op finding success, the other failing to find the victory. Sonic oh first. my oh, god! He's got two! He found it through the smoke. This time it's through the flames. It's Stanislaw out doing the same. Team Liquid, pack your bags. Or maybe don't pack them. <laughs> Damn, Dallas is currently not guaranteed, and it's looking like Wildcard are not out of this thing. Boy, you Kindar. Just play in the back of the site. JBA has this one. Oh, but over. Bomb. Oh, no, he got it. He somehow got it. All right. Sure. A little bit of extra bread. Never hurt nobody. Oh, my God. It is a shutout round after shutout round. You see one pullback right there. You see one big kill in reply. As I delete the opera at the very least, uh, the secondary opera, that is. But you still got more to worry about. So much more to worry about. Another big round from Sonic. Who completely turns the tides on whatever hope that you had if you're liquid. With another multi-kill. Am I am I correct? I can't recall. Is this just seven in a row for Wild Card? It is. Yep. This is seven back to back here. They got the pistol, they got the conversion. They got nothing else from this point forward. Keeping the double op in position. Our wild card. And slice the one to take the outside. He spotted the first, but that's a cheeky spot for Naf to work from. Now there's still another defender here. And Stanislaw. Sort of check, but he'll get a second. Again, failing wild card out of these moments. And Slate Felters. It's Stan who's stepping up and now JBA has a chance to do the same, but his chance is ripped away. Now. Ah! <laughs> oh my god, he gets it. All right. Again, just wanted to make it a little bit more entertaining for us, but Skulls can't make it down the fence. It's falling apart in the 2v2. Naf, left to pick up the pieces here, but he doesn't have the bomb in hand. Has to reroute to go ahead and grab that one. It's been dropped on the site, and Infinite has a line of sight here to claim another kill. More rounds wild card stampeding their way through the CT side without a reply from Liquid. Their timeouts haven't been saving them. The opening kills haven't been saving them. Nothing is working right now. 
I, I cannot believe that we're looking at an 8-2 scoreline, and that's not because I didn't have faith that Wildcard could make it back. I'm just so surprised at how missing Team Liquid currently are. I uh, think that genuine fear I heard in your voice when Impotent didn't take the shot is what Team Liquid are feeling at the moment. <laughs> A little bit of uh, quick A play here to switch things up. Sonic is immediately dealt with this time. No multi-kill, but JBA has something for us. Another one out of JBA before he's finally done. A little bit of hope goes towards Liquid once they find Sonic. Dead in the vents, but JBA completely flips it on its head. And it's still another difficult situation here for Liquid. Oh. I mean, on the plus side, this is an eco round that Liquid are doing a lot of damage in. The money's oh. already built. It's all about rounds win one at this point. Next is the last of the half here. That's a good point. You gotta win it if you're KD. That's all that matters right now. Wouldn't put it past him. We know Kadian's good for these clutches. Especially late into games, he can find it in the Deagle. Not necessarily his best friend, but, you know, an acquaintance of sorts. It's like the, uh... Little cousin of the op. Yeah, something like that. It can get loud every once in a while. <laughs> I mean, he's got the bomb, and, and he's found a position down to the B site. He'll get the plant for free. And should have time to get into a post plant. So, all things considered, Wildcard are giving Team Liquid a chance at this. Kadian, not out of this yet. And he's got so much time to work with. He's just backing right up. But he's going to back right up into Slight's hands. Patience paying off for Slight. JVA 4K doesn't go unanswered, but Team Liquid does. 9 to 2. This is terrifying here. Wildcard's just stomping on the CT side. Look at the individuals coming through here. So much impact out of Sonic and some of these are on stand. Like you said, it's had a really consistent day for himself here. He's always looked like he's had some really big rounds. Slight solid with the op infinite on the secondary. It's been fun. Really isn't any missing pieces here. Deep angle. What do you got for a slight? Door's gonna swing open here potentially. Right down the vents instead. This nade stack towards back silo. On <laughs> JBA's not there anymore. Around late. Slight's getting up secret. He might take a swing out and find some really solid positioning. Twist is up on Marshmallow and Kindar is just taking a massive AG. That's near max damage. Down to 53. Oh, he couldn't get out of that position. Slight trying to move with some magic right there, but a one and done It's not exactly what he was hoping for. Luckily, Infinite is just a lockdown on this ramp room. Not an option. A 3v4 as they lose that pick. They're going to try and make their move on in towards this A side. But JBA, again, he's not back silo anymore. Instead, he's on the top ropes, striking down from the heavens. It's just Kadian again in another clutch. That feels unwinnable. And he's spotted. He's revealed without the bomb in his hand. He's got a flank to worry about. He's got everything to worry about right now. It's only 25 seconds. He's going to try and dive back. Go and claim that bomb. He's got to move a little bit quicker. Sonic not blinded up by that flash and taking a crazy off angle here. There's a spot coming through there from Katie and trying to find the kill, but Sonic, who better to put it to rest right there as confidence is shown from wildcard 10 in a row, as you can see from the sea of blue as we hop into the break.
You know what? Everyone says on new get me on CT side and liquid are finally there But they got it with two rounds and only the pistol and the following full ego conversion is what they've been able to manufacture so far So this wild card have a little bit more life here in this Dallas qualifier We'll see because twist getting aggro here gives them a little warning shot to distract Still Katie not able to get much done off the back of it here slight no armor. He's getting chewed through as well but they will concede eventually. They'll give over that lobby crunch with a lot of damage done in a 4v4. Twist taking a little more damage to a Molotov in the exit as well. Wild card. Keeping it quiet, though. After making that retreat, they'll toss a Lurk Smoke out in front of door in order to try and make their way through. Twist dropping down the vent. Looking for the potential vent and dive that... It doesn't appear is coming, and with the HP the way it is, I don't think that's the most intelligent decision. But as the smoke fades, we may be seeing it anyway. Regardless, the push out towards A. Contact not yet made. Kendar broken to pieces. It's Skull to the flow for half. Picks up two before traded by Stanislaw. It's Twist, who started out this round with a kill. Now in the 2v2 with Nath and Co. Oh. Denied the bomb plant right there. Slight so low on HP. Nath comes through just in time. They tried to take a risk on the bomb plant. And I think it was worth it. Because imagine you catch someone flying up the vents right there. If there was no one in heaven. There was such a great chance. There was such a great opportunity. It was a decent idea there from Wildcard. But Nath too wise on the rotates. A good pistol out of skulls. He, he couldn't get any lurks going on that T side. It felt like every time he was getting shot in the side of the head on every single lurk he had attempted. But he starts off the pistol with a nice little multi. And it's both pistols converted here for Liquid. Hey, uh, we have indeed seen rounds or games tonight where you win both pistols and you lose the game. Wild, wild card's already done it, and they did it dominantly versus uh, boss on Mirage. Exactly. And it's Skulls grabbing a couple more to add on to that Yindar in tow, and that's another guy that was particularly quiet for Team Liquid in the first half of this game. And Yindar, not a guy you typically say that about. So, a step up from him could mean the world of difference for a Team Liquid who we're beat down towards the back end of that. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. That's the frag count on Wild Guard. I just want to point that out. Be fun. Yeah. I like battles. Him up. Also a bit of a bit of a poker player, you know, it feels like a straight. Mm. Like a winning hand. All in. All in. That's what Wild Guard are against elimination from the qualifier no this Dallas trip for them this is a crazy risk right now because we're seeing a full bonus round from liquid they don't have rounds to work with here they're they're betting it all on well just a pair of uh mp9s and it's well, not coming fair, up they had two pair two pair yeah you're right <laughs> <laughs> two pair of mp9s Either but way, though, not such the a hand massive I'd be risk. going all in. And Wildcard has so much map control. It's it's absurd, actually. They're all the way down B. And Slight's hanging on to some position up top. But as soon as they walk out towards ramp, this B side is particularly open. Just got to deal with Naf. And though he does well to get one, that's just a single frag. Wildcard keep their man advantage and... Walk into this open B area. Ooh, well spotted. Like to stand and eliminated. A little bit of relief here on this retake, but you got kids to work with. You got to move. Good pose plant situation here for Wildcard. They're in excellent spots here. Can they land the kills to back it up? JBA might be first on the contact, but there you go. Catching one off guard big time and instantly repositioning. Trying to play off of his teammates now. You are pushing and pulling attention. Another big kill comes through. It's just Katie and looking to save this round from the brink. And JBA is not going to allow that. 
So they go all in on those MP9 buys. It'll give them another gun round here, but they lose another round. And there isn't a lot left to work with here. Wild card just too off of closing this thing out. I tell you, Team Liquid, they gotta get to Vegas more. Straight beats two pair every single time. <laughs> that it does. Wild card, they are on the cusp, bringing this to an inferno that, by the way, was the three times Team Liquid played wild card. Oh my He's god. Post this game. How is he stand out already? He's running through fire, running through smoke, and running him down. Damn, it's so close, but they needed it. To deny the bomb plant right there. They've lost so much HP on this retake in another situation where you're dealing with good post plants. And you've also got no kits on the CT side. Are they going to tuck tail? Are they going to give it a try here? Then you guess who's just tossed another molly for another five seconds to burn off this clock when you already have a 10 second defuse. Another smoke gets tossed in towards it's mini. Over. And it's never an option. You might have asked the question, can I retake? But wild cards say no, and have grabbed themselves map point on Duke here, which is Liquid's pick. And beyond that, to underscore the the fact that wild cards won so unlikely. They played this twice this year on HLTV. Twice have wild card. And this has been a map that Team Liquid are near undefeated on. Two more of those MP9s. Alongside a couple of M4s and the AK saved by Kendar. They've got the one kit in play. And Kadian with the pre-fire spamming through the smoke. And it'll actually be Skulls that will get it with the Molotov. But... Oh, Kadian's come back. He ain't done yet, and Sonic gonna taste of his own medicine. He owned that space back on the CT side, but now it's Kadian's domain. Again, it might be a little bit of a wake-up call. It might be late into the half for it, but reality setting in that this map could spiral quickly. It's already spiraled out of control here, but looking to break the nosedive here. <laughs> That's a crazy kill. A little bit of mobility there from Infinite gets the job done. That's just Counter Strike 2, baby. Don't feed him. Don't feed him. Avian's getting the heck out of there, man. So fast. He's never, never gone qu more quick from confidence to cowardice. Don't feed him. There you go. Trade at least someone available for it. There's. Gideon actually just spams through the smoke to collect, but I think Twist would have had him as well. The collapse comes through. Liquid finally able to reply. But I mean, again, need I remind you that this is both pistols being converted. And it's five rounds. That was, was that the first gun round that we've seen out of them? I think that might have been. And it was dominant. It was good. But it's got to be the start of something great if they want any saving grace here in slight. Look who's catching you off guard. No recognition. And he's already made it back. Red Infinite just plucks one out through the smoke as well. And while you might have gotten one gun round, two is a whole nother story. As they find themselves into a 5v3. An angle from Twist. He's looking for more damage done and an HE to follow. That AWP won't get a chance for a refrag. Oh, never mind. I speak too soon. Slate with an adjustment. Down below. Trade towards the site. A skulls falls. Snap. Gonna need some heroics. We have yet to see. And JBA has nothing to do with that. Wild card. 13 to 5 on Team Liquid's map pick. They're not out of this yet. Not by a long shot. Yeah, not at all. That's an incredible result here. Did not expect for this sort of stability to be found here on Nuke for Wildcard, but they get off to a CT side start that they don't really slow down from. 
And again, this isn't the first time that we've watched this team dominate, losing both pistols, but still having so much success in their gun rounds. And if, if Wildcard just did that here on Nuke, which is one of Liquid's more stable maps in, in this year so far since their iteration, I tell you what, I feel like anything's possible here. And Liquid could be in for a real shock. Not only, uh, you know, is there life on the line coming up in this map, but it could be just last place here in the North American Close Qualifiers. That's an incredible idea. I would have, once again, told you you were crazy if you let me know that Liquid could be on the cusp of going out in last place, given the four teams that we have at our disposal. But, I mean, let's talk about that T side, though, for just a second. What was happening to Team Liquid? They they didn't get anything going. They took outside so often. And what did they get for it? usually nothing they typically were dealing with somebody down secret or playing really passive on the ct side uh towards ct or into the decontamination room like whatever it was they just weren't getting enough out of it and then once they got that map control the plan what plan they didn't really have any cohesiveness towards the end towards the site take i, I mean as crazy as it sounds i don't even think we ever saw like a proper upper hit from team liquid in that entire t half yeah, it got disrupted a lot there, and again, it felt like individuals were able to shut down a lot of uh, Liquid's game plans that were kind of a choose-your-own-adventure-esque uh, CS right there, where everyone was going on these uh, isolated hunts, but doesn't work out for Liquid on Nuke there. That was what I felt like very well should have been the, uh, the kind of closing of the book here for Wildcard's campaign, but they show us another game plan here, and they show us a third map that's going to be finishing things off on Inferno, and we'll see who's going to come out on top and make it through that lower bracket after a break.
Coast and might just be able to do it again here. Pulled off some massive upsets in the uh, IEM close qualifiers for Sydney not too long ago underneath the Forsaken banner. Now he has a chance to eliminate Liquid here in this lower bracket. He's one map away. And uh, I mean, I, I don't know what to say. Obviously, Liquid coming through and, and looking a little bit lost on their map pick. Now they have a decider here that they've had historical success on versus this wildcard squad. But again, after that map, who's to say what's going to happen? Yeah, I mean, Nuke was a map they had historical success on against everybody, and it didn't seem to matter. They found themselves entirely rolled on their T side, and I think a lot of credit is there for Wildcard. I, I mean, I talked about it before. You just mentioned Stanislaw. He's had some incredible consistency all throughout today, but particularly in this, when some of the other pieces of this squad haven't been there, He's been available to make sure that they're in some of these rounds, but it wasn't just him on Nuke. It was a team effort across the board. We saw everybody stepping up, and I, I actually just think that in general, this wildcard team, when they're all on, I said at the beginning of the series, they have chances. It's just they aren't always on. On Nuke, they were, and Inferno, I have to say, I would be excited to see if that was the same, because if so... As much as I would love to see Liquid continue forward, I think that it would be a huge wake-up call to a team that that should be making through these qualifiers. Yeah, absolutely. And and you're talking about a, a big moment right now, kind of a defining moment in uh, every team, especially in North America's career, right? When you have the RMRs right around the corner, and we know how much impact just making it, making it to the major can have for these rosters. Uh, obviously, you know, Wildcard proven that they can contend up against the, the you know one of the top the, the top organization in our region right now is uh, a real statement but we'll see if they can finish the job here it's a whole other task finishing the best of three then plucking off a map i gotta do it on inferno here again a little bit more stable success last time i think they played a best of one in those rmrs it was on this map and it, I think it was in Chengdu qualifiers yes Chengdu. that's right and uh they did close it out it was an overtime affair, though, so it doesn't offer you much security at all. All the double nade. Joel's dodges it effectively, stays alive, and gets a kill. It's JBA from the top ropes. Finds not one, but a second frag evacuating the area is the final member of the wild card, but Team Liquid getting themselves into a bit of a rough spot. The post plant, three on four. Never envy an A-side retake. So they're so difficult to get back into here. We're talking no kit. We've got a Zeus on twist. What is going on? He's taking down. The Zeus hits the deck. There's no chance to retake here unless Naf can save it. And he, he can't. It's just one kill. That's all that's offered. Right there. <laughs> if it doesn't even want the Zeus. <laughs> he's tossing away. Now that's a disrespect. A pistol around Zeus is a wild. What, what was... I wanted to see what he was doing on that pistol. I almost going to go back in the demo and see if he was doing something crazy, but a Zeus on pistol? Yeah. I, I mean, that's... Uh, <laughs> I'd say it's a misfire, but know. you can sell. Yeah, there's just no... I was about to say the exact same thing. You can and sell. Then I realized... Even if you have to go back to case. spawn, you can sell. <laughs> you could have had like a P250. <laughs> it's basically the same price. Or armor. I think he only had Literally a Zeus. Anything. Literally anything. Oh, man. Just left scratching oh. my head. But either way, we, I mean, we didn't get the vision on what he, he was doing, so maybe he had something cooked up still. Bit, bit interesting. I hope so. Yeah, right. I can't imagine. It's almost better left to the imagination, to be honest. <laughs> Into a force by here. Liquid looking to apply some pressure off the back of that. They are diligent. Double mollies here. Making sure that they flush out everything on banana right there. Answered back by excellent HE and a smoke and a Molotov to boot here. This is great utility coming through, but even better on the side of the CTG. Kindar blind spray ends up with a kill, but he's low and he's got no teammates to help him here. More damage done from Kindar, even more. But oh my god, infinite. 
Another one straight through the smoke. Twist never got a chance to turn that corner before he was devastated. And Liquid off to a save. Infinite's come to play. And he was he was one of those guys that was a little bit slow to begin with. When it came to the Mirage game, for example, but you and I both saw what he can do earlier today. Skills and Cadian, the ones with the 5-7 armor that they're going to get to save over. Continuing our conversation about skins, though. Um, did you see that 5-7 that, that Cadian has? I don't... What is that? It's so clean. Can we switch over? I don't know. It's like a, like a metallic blue and red. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh, I, I forget what that one's called. I think I've never but, seen uh, it. But I know what you're talking about with Cadian specific, because he has like... A sick, uh, a sick pattern. Oh, is it just a cool pattern? Okay. But yeah, I mean, five sevens, they got some, some of the best skins. We'll see if he brings it out. I think it's like berries and something. Oh, yeah, yeah. Berries and cherries, right. maybe. I think that's right. Yep. But, uh, yeah. This guy's a skin extraordinaire. No, you your stuff. I do have just distinct memories of seeing uh, Cadian's 5-7 for some reason. But... I'm gonna get a chance to use it again. Get much use out of it. I like the flash up. I like the idea. Giving Skulls a chance to try and influence the round. Not given much. Flash play doesn't net any info even. They're shifting the setup all over the map here. It's constantly moving. It's a living, breathing setup here from Liquid on this pistol round. And they just want to have this stack on the right side, and they're going to have it. They're going to have this B-side stack. Pretty good. All it comes down to is the shots, though. Gaining it on an off angle there towards Ubox. It's going to be ripped away from him. And Stanislaw lines up two on the MAC-10. Picking up an extra 12 hundo for the trouble. I just wanted to be known. Slate is 0 and 0 right now. He's like just been in the server. <laughs> He's not had to do a darn thing. Hey, you'll take it. When you're up 3 0, it's always nice to. It's nice to have some kills, but it's also nice to win some rounds knowing that your teammates can do a whole lot. But I mean, talking about like Slate kind of becoming a, a bit more of a passive player than I was used to watching him. I think he's had to become much more of a systems op underneath this banner. With Stan calling. It's good to see him adjust. Okay, Ian. Missed opportunity to open things up right there. But yeah, I mean, I agree. I think he's he's transitioned into a nice little supportive element for the squad. He can, he can turn back on that, that aggressiveness that you and I are more used to seeing from him. You know, we, we saw it, seen it at times. Even throughout today. But I think it also also that that aggressive streak made him really hard to play against, but also made him potentially a little readable as he got better yeah, and, and up against better players. I think it's really helped him find more consistency. Little job here for Skulls at hand, mollied out. They're taking such effective map control, really poking and prodding on this A side here. Enough to sell a four-man lean. But the setup start to shift back. Getting over towards this B-side once Yakindar is forced off of the deep angle and has to concede control. Molotov for Twist flushes him out into the open. Again, very systematic here. This is the wild card. This is the sort of stand calling here that I think is some of the best work he can do here. Flashbang to entry on into this site. Kadian blinded up, but doesn't matter. Still delivering as well as Twist and the shutdown on the site comes through. But they will be able to crack through at least enough for maybe a bomb plan. Oh. <laughs> oh my goodness. Now nah, just tossing bullets down range of the smoke. Leaves JBA and a 1v4 that doesn't even get started. That's AKs for pretty much anyone who wants one. Can it be found on the site? And now I've given time for everybody to make those collections. Wildcard 
three rounds in a row to start this game out, and finally they are shut down. Their slow, methodical style that you were just talking about, netting them a ton of control, and, and run that back five or six times, I, I think wild card come away the better. Yeah, I 100% agree. It was like blind spray that initially found the first picks. And yeah, the, and the execution looked... was blind as well on the site. Right, yeah. I mean, the execution looked really pretty. Not a wild card. They just couldn't quite crack it open as they had hoped. And, uh, I mean, again, had Mac tins to boot. But the map manipulation coming through, I think, was the, the real seller. Able to force some rotates back over towards that B site late into the half there. Sonic. Like the movement. Silent. Boost up in towards apartments to maintain a little bit of control. Looking to give Slate an opportunity to work some picks. Yeah, they've got up, up mid for the most part, but without putting more at risk, they're not going to find too much with this. Infinite playing close range and with a pretty solid setup. Here in bracket, I don't, I don't know that wildcard are going to have too much success unless they invest some more utility. You got that high low angle twist, play contact and twist delivers. He'll get two before Skulls chimes in. Slight with the AWP will be the final man to trade it out. Sonic all the way through. He's going to beat the rotation. Zikendar opts out of the library move and instead goes back out towards. Oh, marches. oh my God. Kinder, take it easy. No way Sonic is going to make a move past this smoke. He's going to just sit inside of it instead. Post plant on the A side once again. Op in the hands of Slight, adjusting, avoiding the flash for now. As they back into a corner right now. Time is ticking again. Pressure applied and just enough shoulders shown from Naf. Yeah, Kinder's got 21 HP to recover. A bloodbath in brackets, but it ends up winding up in favor of Wildcard. As they land the trades, they get it just enough in time. And it's a 2v2 that closes out comfortably for them. And another round that Team Liquid, they have a good setup. They were in the right spots. And I feel like everybody kind of got theirs. Wildcard trading towards the end. They get into this 2v2 and deliver. An example of... The early round going exactly as planned, mid-round trading as expected, and the delivery in the post plan. It's kind of some uh, quick CS by the book. We're putting together X plus Y equals Z. Z, you went all on American on me. What's that about? Uh, sorry, I've been I've been hanging out with Seymour too much. Oh man, does the the Z? It's okay. You're safe with me. <laughs> Others though, <laughs> you know they they come at my throat. Yeesh. <laughs> Don't you worry. I'm not gonna judge. You Don't like tell a good... anybody. A little bit of aggression here coming through. Let be slowed down. Again, Liquid are saying, hey, we need a little bit of support here. We need a little bit of extra help on this A side. Flashbang. Lines up his teammates here. The Kendar has that lined up on a silver platter, but the spacing is just fine. Instant trade coming through from Stan. Sonic with that lurk smoke. It's 30 seconds left, and there's still bottom banana control. For wild card, so they know there's not a fast flank coming. They can take their time about this. Yeah, not a lot when it comes to the amount of seconds, but the timing has made Team Liquid question whether this is an A hit. They rotated a second player over to B. It's a free hit over Twist alone, but he'll fall. That MP9 not good enough to provide for a multi frag. Cadian, Naf, they're just. Sticking on B, they have no chance of retaking 2v3. And it's another brilliant call from Wildcard. That late round pause, right after Yakendar gets traded. It's right then that Wildcard just take a moment, sort of stutter step. 
and create the question marks in Team Liquid's head that caused that rotation. Yeah, I mean, that's... I, I mean, this has been some of the best calling I, I've seen out of Stan here already in these, like, first couple of gun rounds where it's just perfect. A little map manipulation. The, the composure that they have. This is that VPS style. I'm talking about uh, where it's like it's executions that default out until the last 10 or so seconds and then bam they make their move but they're able to spring it into action and when it works it looks great when it when it doesn't it looks a little bit silly but right now I tell you what it's working right now you know you'd be forgiven for forgetting that that's what we started this entire day with that conversation about wildcard because to be honest we haven't seen a ton of that from them despite watching them play for now six maps yeah anubis it, it looked like they they were completely fumbling the uh the sort of style that they bring to the table and the uniqueness with a lot of individualistic uh, moves a lot of more early contacting right now this is much more like it. this coordinated execution power you know, selling a couple of rotates over towards that B site before BAM, they're wrapping you. And you don't even realize it because there's 10 seconds left and you're thinking it's a B play. It's a great, great bit of calling displayed here from Stan. In this third map when it matters the most here. And now we're seeing a little bit of aggression, a little bit of confidence built up by a slight missed shot though. He doesn't get punished. He's still standing. Gray screen by the smoke and eager to turn the corner. Missed shot again, but Stan's not missing. He's hitting. We'll crack things open. Brute force mentality towards Banana. Whether Slight's hitting that shot or playing the distraction, it doesn't matter. The outcome the same. Team Liquid down a man, and it's Yekindar. Once again, a little bit missing from these first six rounds. You know, a, a guy who opened up Mirage at, I want to say, like 13 and 2. It's really dominant. It's just been. Flat out gone in some of these big moments. Full 50 seconds remain and Team Liquid have got a single smoke. To be fair, Molotov as well on Kadian's back. He's the sole defender of the A site. Now Naf dispatched. B still well defended, but not nearly as much. execute at least there's two players here at least they have multiple members on this speed bomb site and an instant dismissal they're coming through from twists and skulls they're shutting this down and equalizing the numbers another one out of twist a little bit of a hiccup here as they walk into a heavy setup much more than they bargained for sonic now left into a 1v3 and a little bit of a collapse gets thrown in the way of wildcard disruption by twist and skulls after a long last Pick it up to a piece. That was the only way that Team Liquid could get out of that round with a victory. And that's something that Team Liquid, they need a little bit more of right now. Some of their individuals just kind of stepping up and, and showing why they are some of the best players in the world. Because we didn't see too much of that from them in, in the nuke game. And wildcard. Put to bed as we jump into a bit of a tech pause, it looks like. Do a little bit of a breather. It's been... So far, pretty one-sided out of the gates. There's still plenty of time. But Liquid to get their heads back into it. Get their heads straight. I think that's what they need for the most part. I can only imagine that the frustration... Because this is like, uh, I mean, obviously NA's organization looking to qualify for an event in NA. I mean, and to add more to that, right? Kind of the only event in NA. You know, pretty much the only one of this caliber. Yeah, I mean, if you're talking about an event where the best teams are going to be playing it out in North America, it's going to be Dallas. Yeah, I mean, we had, we had Blast last year, but... I don't think there's a I don't think there's a late stop in North America like there was then. This becomes all the more important right now for Liquid to uh, start to sort things out. And again, 
Maybe a little bit of a breather here can can help them finally uh, around and, and some good performances coming through from Twist and Skulls. A lot more like it. We got the double lock coming through as well. And again, you know, as I said earlier, it can just be a patchwork for your CT side. Double ops that can help out in that sense, but maybe that's all that they need just to hold on. It does feel like a little bit more of that. Not desperation, but. Ooh. No. Hope. Okay. Kendar, Nah, Skulls everywhere across this map have just found opening engagements, and Kadian might get another one here. The chance given, an infinite taken. Slight. He's blinked his eyes, and his whole team's gone. Speaking from the grave and saying, Good luck, my friend. It's a good sign. That's a dominant round right there. They're hunted for even more. Slight. Let's one cross right under the bridge. He might even be just chased down. Liquid starting to find their own, giving us a little bit of uh, spice to some of these rounds as well. I like the aggression that we're seeing out of the gates. It's good to see some CT side proactivity rolling through there. Confidence to take banana and win those duels as well. I don't think we, we've really seen Liquid actually fight banana really this this map. Thus well, the far. thing is, I, I think more so than anything, it's it's they've had banana control in a couple of these rounds. It's that, been that wild card have not been there to meet them at all. It's been a lot of A defaulting. But Slight will go down. I mean, maybe that's wild card's cue to, to stop as much so testing this B side here. Maybe more so heading over towards the A side. Keep rolling with what has been working for you. That sort of a story of this, this iteration of Inferno, isn't it? You know, the A side... So approachable. The B side, not so much. Yeah. This is a tough map. It's not been making an own to my rotation all the half. My god. Oh, Sonic. Sends him to the back of his chair right there, man. What is that? I think I would have jumped out of my seat. Oh my god, he's down banana. Yakindar. This is a classic Yekindar move, but they're still weary of it. They're yeah, falling all the way back away is Yekindar, and they'll leave Kadian's AWP at the half wall, so it's no big deal. Team Liquid would have that control should it be necessary, but dropping Nas AWP early does trigger a couple of smokes chained together at the top of mid. Hold back wild card for the moment. Now Kadian asked to connect, and he's missed the mark. All the top to allow for him to get back there, and they're going to keep it moving. The HG oh does God. massive damage. Is, oh, my goodness. They just signed their own death warrants. Yeah, trying to rush it on in. And while it started off with a little bit of flare from Sonic, it does fizzle out. Ability coming through there from Liquid. They get themselves a quick three rounds. Kind of fight the way back into this one. Much better fashion. And sometimes all you need is a little bit of a, a breather. Get a couple seconds to compose yourself and realize the weight of the situation. And they are playing with a lot more confidence now, it looks like, in the server. Taking then a control again. Triple up on this direction. The utility down. It's a good malt off there. It's gonna flush him out, isolate them. Still Stanislaw walking right up in and Yekindar starting to thrive in his domain of banana. This is the Yekindar I've been missing for a little bit. Starting to really enjoy himself over there and find the success that was so far away and not so long ago back on Mirage. The rest of the wildcard squad on their way up mid. They've got some, some semblance of bracket control that will give them away slightly. Are 
only on rifles at the moment. No AWP for Slight, but... They've crept their way in. Now, nah, ready and waiting. Gets the dink off. Damage done to Infinite. As much as that trade feels good, like a good point for Wildcard, they're in deep trouble. The crossfire set here on the A site. And you're into spawn, but... I don't know how much that's going to help them out if they can't win this duel with Katie and aware. Time to hit the go button. Twist. Delivers on the first. He's got a Molotov. That's 18 seconds left. This is almost done off the back of that, and it is. With Skulls finding another frag. Slight is gone, running for the hills. Have to. Smart crossfire right there. It offers up a lot of security. And I like the idea. I like the idea of Infinite taking that first contact and, and giving him a, a shot towards that B side, hoping that maybe it would get a player out of position, but Liquid hold their own. They plant their feet and they never move a muscle. Starting to look so much better here in these late round situations. Starting to realize what's going against them. As again, like you said, Yakindar, it's so good to see him playing well on Banana here. A position that he has been able to find himself on. You know, long ago, but playing very well right now. And the double up on the eight G's just completely devastates. Likes of infinite, although just sitting in the molly, Yakindar. He's gonna go down with the ship. I mean, I think that just goes to show the confidence that he's feeling. He'd rather sit in that Molotov, farm up some frags, and potentially pick up like a double, triple spray down than get out of there and tie with his back turned. Cadian hasn't had to have two crazy individual impact in this game, but when required, has stepped up thinking, you know, that round where he was pressured to miss the first shot, but ultimately delivered a double. Sonic's Deagle. Down to the AWP. Bigger brother. Dominating. Six to five. Team Liquid, it's been a clean run for them up and into the lead. But they are. Take that one nicely. Grab themselves a lead. Looking to build on it. They can close out this half of the lead. And a lot of momentum heading into this second. I mean, again, caught a little bit of a pause there. As they were down, I think, one to five. And from that point forward, they have been able to win every round. And some of those have been dominant. Just a much better look at a liquid here. They've got a four man setup on this A side. And it's looking like Wildcard want to change the pace into the stack. But it is going to be leveled out there. Shut down for the last round of the half here. His Sonic left just shrugging his shoulders now and headshot quickly. It is Liquid recovering big time here in map number three. We'll see if they can keep it up after a break.
our liquid back as they've gone and shown us in these last couple of rounds or will wild card be able to close out this one despite the odds see what we have in store for the second half we were talking and, and yakindo are really taking control has saved them a lot of worry big rounds coming through from him See if that keeps up here in the second half as Liquid. They need some of that entry power to crack things open on Inferno. It's not just his impact, though. You look at Twist, 10 and 5 at the moment, and Skulls, who was a bit missing in some of those moments on Nuke, having them in more here on Inferno. But that said, Wildcard prepped for the B hit. They've someone return. It's Stanislaw coming back to provide support. Infinite. Goes down. It's Sonic all on his lonesome out of bullets. Gotta keep that going and with double swing. Oh my that god. Phenomenal. Stanislaw through the smoke. How has he done that? How has he done this? Putting twist in 1v3. Oh boy. Stan just heat seeking them on the radar, but twist. Don't give him an isolated duel. He'll take that one all the way home. Double up and coffins. And plenty. Not plenty. A little bit of time to cook this one with. And they're regressing. They're pushing forward as Twist is fading away. Timing. Is, who's it going to work out for here as Twist gets around the corner? He's shot in the side of the head. Doesn't know where these shots are coming from. But not enough time and no space to get towards that A side. He's got to fight for B control. And he's just given over. And it's just been reclaimed. It will be a pistol for wild card. And... <laughs> that was their... That was their second pistol. They picked it up in the first half as well. And I think that comes a good time to remind everybody, this was a wild card that was up 5-0. Up and then they lost out every single round in a row at the end of the first half. Do you think they have that same CT side depth, though, that they had on Nuke? Obviously, much different map. Much different battleground here. Defensive measures that we saw on Nuke were crazy dominant here. Alongside Liquid struggling to find themselves on the same page. That combination deal led to 10 rounds in a row for Wildcard on the defense. They started it off with a pistol, but what's interesting here, we got a 4 Spy versus 5 MP9s. The weaponry advantage isn't so straightforward. <laughs> I'm the... getting flashbacks, man. I mean, this, this was what hurt them so much on Mirage, is losing these sort of rounds. That it did. And, but Team Liquid, it's like, they're so good at them. The, the individuals. You, you, you see them coming at you with a Tech 9, and I'm just as terrified as when they have an AK. So to be fair, if I was the one put in that position, I'm terrified no matter what. You think for some of these younger individuals here on Wildcard, newer to the uh, top levels of the NA scene, that they would be scared as well, but that's not what we've seen so far. No, and I think that's what's been impressive to me. I always love to see, you know, get the chance to, to really come in and show and prove it and then deliver. And that's what Wildcard has the chance to do right here and now. Remember, if Team Liquid loses, this, they're just out of the Dallas qualifier. There's 20 seconds on this execute right now. What on earth did the timers run in so low as the execution rolls on in here? If one thing goes wrong, like Sonic on the site, there's going to be no time to recover here. Skulls and Yakindar give us something to work off of, but spam through the smoke and the bomb dropped once again. Skulls on the other side of the map. And it's important, crucial that he doesn't go out down after time. He's hiding, he's fighting, he's staying alive. But we're grasping at skull, Skulls for, for something to go right in these rounds. And nothing is quite working out. Side score line. They execute with... 10 seconds, 15 seconds left on the clock right there. And it's something you mentioned earlier in regard to wildcard. When you wait that long, sometimes it goes beautifully, and other times it just leaves you wanting. And it's this moment where Sonic, that triple kill, just chilling. First oranges, he's ready for him as they run in. Has the support, has the flashbangs. It all goes right. Sonic, I mean, has done that a couple of times on Nuke as well. He's a big influence. That, that Molly will separate 
One from the squad, from the pack. Kindar runs up into the flames. Saying, where, where is my team? They couldn't peek with him. Skulls is still trying to sell this B-side. That maybe there's some positioning, something there for Team Liquid, but... Instead, the rest of the team and now Skulls joining them out towards bracket two. Up to harsh side, that nade is going to split him a little bit, but he can't get the gun out fast enough, and so Stanislaw falls. Now Slight, in a little bit of oh a my troublesome God. situation. He's over swinging. He's got JBA and many fit to provide support, but no, JBA falls. Impotence come back in, and Slight providing the support necessary. Skulls go down now, punch the numbers in so they get the Dollary dues, but they lose their lives in the meantime. Wildcard, it's their lead. Lost it. The first half fell away from them, but it's regained in the beginning of the second. This is Wildcard able to reclaim it with the quickness, although that's looking like a, a bit more of the uh, panicky round right there. A little bit more scary on the side. Wildcard, they are able to crack through with a a little bit of influence on that one. Some moments as well where Wildcard just kind of caught with their pants down. Didn't quite have a gun now. They were tossing a nade, etc. Happened, I think, twice. Team Liquid catching some timings and maybe getting a better idea of when and where Wildcard are vulnerable. Let's see if they are able to identify that quickly. Adapt on the fly for now. It's just heat seeking vision for infinite. <laughs> yeah, Kindar. Trying to control Banana. As he was doing so well in that first half. It was the key to the recovery for the most part. Was him finding those opening duels. And him having so much influence over the rounds. But now he's sidelined. A kid just. An early exit. And more frustration. And by who? It's infinite. The guy who played the same exact role for wild card. Whenever they're finding their success. It's often infinite. To start to provide that, thinking back to the boss series and remembering Vertigo and some of the incredible impact he had there. Got a close line there. Sonic ensuring even more success as well. And while he eventually goes down, he, he goes down swinging. F put on notice here. Did you save it? Is this just a full disengage? Yeah. 30 seconds left, and NAF on 16 HP. You can understand why the decision's been made, Cole, but it it really does set the tone for how beat Team Liquid are in this round. This was this is where they needed to find some footing. And as you mentioned, Yekendar falling early with really no trade in sight, despite the late hit back to Banana. You see all the X's on the map, and... They're all located in one spot. Just losing some straight duels here. Out to Infinite and Sonic. Infinite able to just surgically remove Yakindar out of the gates. But also stand his ground, find more successes. They try and just walk to take car control. Just to take car control, they're losing so many numbers. And Right, it's just dead on arrival. Can't even turn the corner into that B-bomb site. Let alone try and think of a bomb plant here for that gun round. Two guns saved. They'll, they'll try and keep up the pressure with more investments. More purchasing. Well, I'm running into a, a very high loss bonus at this point. That's a little easier. Particularly with those saves. Here we go again. Sonic further forward. He's got infinite in tow. Spam damage doesn't really net anything, nor does the HEs or Molotovs. Team Liquid get out somewhat unscathed, but now they've got the AWP. Flight on the other side. They'll take the first shot. Flash goes in. They're blinded up, but ooh, Sonic sticks around and maybe a little bit too long. It's twists. In a lot of rotations. Oh, I didn't realize Skulls had lurked himself into CT spawn. That's a round winder right there. Are they going to go 
B or are they gonna dive back towards A? It looks like the ladder here and another kill comes through. Kadian gonna lead the charge and trying to kill them all, JBA. A little premature on the spray transfer. They're waiting to plant the bomb so that they can kill Slight, I think. They're, they're going for elimination. Win. With blood. Their hands. That's exactly what they'll do. You can to claim the last op. Drops to the ground and... That's a big recovery round for Liquid. Yeah, and, and it's all off the back of Skulls. He's found that timing in the CT spawn. Nobody had a freaking clue. You and I missed it. And we can see him. Team Liquid. Taking Skulls into position and having him deliver. And it's an immediate wild card reset. All the nades, they go down mid. They will do some damage, Ooh. but Yekendar stays alive. <laughs> Infinite almost fighting a spam through the smoke, though, to finish him off. Some better damage to start this one off. You do hear a lot of grenades, you think. Okay, that's stacked towards the A side, at least at the start of the round. They're not eager just yet to peek forward. They've got plenty of time to work in this round. I don't need to rush. A little gift for Sonic as well. Flashbang to re take the control towards the middle. The, the USPs don't stand much of a chance up against the rifle work. We're all tied up. Really nice spray, can spray control from Skulls. Pretty darn clean. Haven't gotten to see all that too often. AWP back out for Slight. This is where I'd love to see Slight maybe find an aggressive swing at A. Something we haven't seen an adjustment, a little extra wrinkle. And he's heading that direction. A more influence on this B side. Yeah, kids are flying up. Banana again, taking a lot of damage, but sending it back at return and it skulls. Over towards the A side, punishing the op and diving through another smoke twist. He looks to hold the line, but Skulls disrespects it completely. Skulls taking this round into the palm of his hands, building even more confidence. He does miss the op shot. Not known for his opping prowess, but it does the trick. The rifle work will do just fine, and Liquid scream to a 10. Not even holding the rotation of Stanislaw out from small on towards B. Yekendar is here to shut him down on the B side as well. Team Liquid are staying alive for the moment. Sonic, last living member of Wildcard. And as much as I wanted to see Slight get aggressive there, man, he got absolutely dumpstered by Skulls. He's made his way up to an 18-7 scoreline at the moment. Resurgent as ever. Oh, and it's needed the most right now. He's had an impactful couple of rounds. Big lurks coming through for them. Some with, with little impact, but recently, I think having just that right mix of, uh, you know, passive and aggressive, where he's been able to thread some needles so far. It's not about the... Or it doesn't have to be about the multi-frags. Well, that certainly can be a round-winning strategy. We saw him take just that one kill based on his position against spawn round was over an imperative turning point at the moment for team liquid is wild card take a timeout and there's a good reason for it look at their money cole it's it's gone it's busted gotta save and that will presumably barring any crazy shenanigans Allow Team Liquid in 11. Despite a fight here, Liquid can storm even further. There's just not a lot of bite to this buy here. You, know, you, you got a 5.7, you got a, two P250s. A lot of smokes. This one used and the chase is already in. This is... Already curtains called upon this round. Look at again, gonna kind of stampede their way forward. 
into a 11th. Hunt the eeks. Hunt the eeks now. If you go and claim them. I guess you could or didn't because he got just one tapped. Yeah. Cleaned up. Doesn't matter. 11 to 9 though and Team Liquid now the ones on the cusp of sending Wild Card away. More expected outcome. I think it would be fair to say but not out, not over. One last chance for Wild Card to really grab back momentum in this game. Muddy is phenomenal for Team Liquid. They're by no means on the cusp of being broken, but wild card round count close, close as ever. This keep it close here by continuing some of the success. Finally, a, a big change in pace here is that it's a lot more settle from Liquid right now. Nothing super flashy, nothing super in your face. By this time, in the last couple of rounds, they've already been on the site planting. So they go back to slowing it down here. See if, if that change of place is going to work for them. Can we talk about how Cadian has 8 deaths? 21. It's a classic Inferno right there for you. You slide on the other end of things. We only get 11, but still a little bit more reasonable. A lot of saving being done here, just in general. Brackets control finally claim 40 seconds left. Feels a bit telegraphed though with the setup. Leaning four players over, Slight lands the first pick quick. And this stabilizes the rest of the defense to ready themselves as they turn the corner. The flashes are so good, so well placed from Kadian. The site executes, still collapse. Despite all the odds, a triple crossfire break apart so quickly. And Infinite and Sonic, again, you don't like their odds of getting back into this round. You might just have to save. No one wants to retake an A-side. We'll see what Sonic can do. And oh, you know, he's oh, realized he's, he's done. And what is it that breaks that, that triple setup that you were just talking about? You mentioned it, the, the flashbangs. Kadian, I mean, he hit... I, felt, I, I mean, he only had two flashes, but it felt like there was three or four flashes thrown, and it hit everybody in the site. Whatever it was, the positions were it found out, and nothing, nothing worked at all. The back of that site even got the opening pick, and it didn't matter. Twelve for Team Liquid. Terrorists win. On map three, it's gone the distance, and wild card. With two saved rifles, have one more shot to close this down. To stay alive. It's overtime or bust. I mean, that was my favorite, like, T-side round that I've seen from them in a little while here. That, that execution, like you said, the flashes were so well placed. But also the entry prowess coming through. I mean, everyone was part of that execution. Everyone committed. There wasn't any hesitation. It was just a little bit of uh, inspiration there for, for Liquid. And again, that, that crucial round puts them with three chances to close out and stay alive here in the lower bracket. Move on to take on uh, Boss, whoever closes this series out. Wildcard doing well in the first 15, 20 seconds, just not losing out on anybody. And I think... A lot of that towards the A site. Don't make a mistake. Infinite getting interested in the B area. Going forward, finding nobody home. And so we'll fall back on top of the oranges boxes. CT side utility still looking strong here. A couple of Molotovs as well. That makes all oh, this regression into the full squad. This triple up. Oh, and a team kill comes through. But it's still a one for one. And that Molly kind of reveals Stanislaw's position on only 16 HP. They're collapsing in. The flash is so well placed. And panic setting in now for Liquid. They got a man disadvantage with 38 seconds. What? Infinite gives Katie in a swing of a lifetime. That's incredible. That shot. They're still going B. They're still testing this B side, those skulls. After that, why would they? Deal. 
all this pressure here. The utility bombarded in there. Infinite able to claim another one in Infinite. Gets him with the 4k right there. Wild card not ready to give up on this one just yet. Here we go. Wild card. They are not out of this one. Not by a long shot. And this is where on this comeback. Eyes back on the slight. Man on the screen right now. On the AWP. We just watched Infinite dominate the B site. Let's see the early three man set up this direction once again with Stanislaw in tow. I'm looking for Slight to start to make the plays that we know available to him. Kadian, he wants this up close and personal. Infinite, he's gone back for more! Says goodbye to Kadian! But Yakendar has something of his own to produce from that. Sonic, last man, comes to position B. He's actually got some support. No, Stanislaw fell away! HP coming low for Twist, but he stays alive. Walks right in by oh, Stanislaw. No. It's too late, though. It's too late. Twist has already passed him. Stan just a second too short on that play. And he gets punished by Twist, who only has 20 HP. Twist looking to put it across the finish line. They know Skulls always lurking about. Always at the one in your side. The concern for him is real. But this retake looks desperate here. JBA. Looking to save the day by swinging forward. HG's in the smoke, but they've got to get to this retake quickly. Bomb half tick. The HG's not finding Twist either. And they still have to wait this utility out. There's another smoke. They just can't get through this right now. They're going to try and find their way through, but Yakindar and Twist to shut it down. And Liquid will just keep Wildcard at bay here, eliminating them from IEM Dallas. But at least, again, the team that we'd expect to make it all the way through is still alive in this tournament. Yeah, it looked like Liquid were starting to evaporate there, especially when we were looking at Nuke. I, I was floored to see what, what went down on that map, but you know what, Inferno, it was a return to form of sorts the first half. I actually think Wildcard really strong showing. That, I think, is where they were at their best, actually, in this entire series. Nu Nuke, I don't know if it was replicable, but the way that Wildcard approached Inferno was incredible. Liquid just stayed in it, stayed strong, and when Yakindar came to play towards the end of that half, it was an entirely different story. Yeah, we finally saw some really coherent executes from Liquid coming through on Inferno as well that, that helped it push it across the finish line. There's some great uh, utility work, great flashes coming through from, from KD, and, and they do finish the job. But like you said, if you're wildcard, you have a whole lot to be proud of here. It was an excellent showing uh, from them, considering how it all started off, right? It started off with a pretty miserable first map. Things did yeah. not go well. Mirage was a, a pretty rough start to the series, but to fight it back as hard as you did, very impressive stuff. So uh, credit where it's due there to Wildcard. Obviously, uh, early elimination for them and, and a tough day at the office. But uh, when you talk about the future for this team here, they've got the RMRs to look forward to and, and the likes. There's a lot to be excited about for this team. Yeah, and and like you say, right? You know, coming into expectations for the qualifier, I think Wildcard and Boss were the... the team it was kind of like a 50 50 between them with team liquid and nouns the, the more expected teams to be heading towards the finals and that's um currently what we're seeing at least with nouns as they make their way through boss with a 2-0 fashion so pretty pretty simple compared to the rest of today we've got all two ones in the upper bracket and then into the lowers as well which is i think a little bit of a surprise I've been, it's been exciting to to see it yeah it's been a competitive affair so far for the North American qualification to IEM Dallas, which you know is such a big deal for these teams. So you understand how hard these rosters are fighting. But of course, I mean, again, first elimination here uh, of the day is going to be wildcard. We're going to be saying goodbye to them. We're going to be saying goodbye to you all. Thank you all so much for tuning in for this excellent day of Counter-Strike. And there will be more tomorrow over on the A stream. Uh, that'll be with Mike and John. But on behalf of myself and Vincent, wish you all a wonderful night and uh, see you tomorrow.
and Ace is the champion of the Intel Extreme Masters World Finals. Storm's still not quite done. MC is going to take this fight, though. Three seconds left. Last two rounds of match. It's going to start in well for ESC. And this is a massive move for Zest, but he's not content with just the Nexus kill. He wants to win. Jesus!